can support us, completed Novel House in link below clip. Thank you for come in and love the sharing story, chapter 1081, what is it that you're afraid of? The neighbor's emotion was being led by Chen Gu. Everyone was afraid that their secret would be discovered, so they all wanted to capture this killer who had escaped through the window as soon as possible. Chen Gu was very satisfied with this turn of events. He was about to say something else, but the middle-aged man with the hidden store of female underwear in his house suddenly chose to speak up again. Wait a minute, I do not disagree with the plan that we go through the houses one by one to search for the killer, but for the sake of security, I think we should go and inform the landlord about this first. And we should definitely get his opinion before we do anything too rash. The middle-aged man had encountered Chin Gu earlier. He knew Chin Gu from the latter's conversation and interaction with Wu Yu, so he had an inherent mistrust toward Chin Gu. No problem, we shall go and find the landlord now. Chin Gu agreed with the man to stop him from continuing to distract from Chin Ji's plan. Chin Gu did not wish to waste time on pointless arguments so as to prevent other accidents from happening. We should hurry as fast as we can. The earlier we capture that ruthless murderer, the more likely we will save another innocent life. This incident had happened too suddenly, and Chen Gu did not give the neighbors too much time to reflect on it. He dragged Wen Qing and Chu Ying directly into the stairwell. Even though he had the crowd on his side for now, once the neighbors calmed down, his situation would not have changed, he would still be in plenty of danger. The only thing he could do was make use of this opportunity and try to turn as many of the tenants against themselves as possible. That was the only way he could ensure his own safety. Chu Yin, why do you think the murderer targeted your family? Has your family made any enemies recently? Why would someone wish to harm your whole family? To direct the thoughts of the neighbors, Chin Gu voluntarily asked Chu Yin some questions. Of course, his questions were all related to the murder case. On the surface, it sounded like Chen Gu was being concerned about Chu Ying, and the questions all struck at the center of the investigation. Of course, Chu Ying knew very well the motive behind the murderer's intention to target his family, but to not expose himself as an accomplice to the murderer, there was nothing he could do but to continue this play acting with Chen Gu. After pretending to give it some serious thought, Chu Yin shook his head. I have no idea why someone would harm my family members. We have always kept a low profile. I do not think we have offended or earned the ire of anyone before. Try to dig deeper. There has to be a reason somewhere. Is there any conflict between your family and the other tenants of this building? Chen Gu continued to push. To deflect the suspicion away from himself, he tossed all the difficult questions to Chu Yin. Technically, he was now forcing a murderer to come up with a reason why someone would murder him. If Chu Yin could not give an answer or gave the name of a random person, that person would instantly become the prime suspect in this case. If this happened at another residential area, being the prime suspect would not be that big a deal. At most, they would be invited to the police station to aid in the investigation, but the situation here was completely different. Almost no one at this residential area was clean, everyone had a secret that they did not wish to be known by others. In other words, no one here wished for their history and past to be exposed and investigated. It did not matter what they did behind closed doors normally, but at times like this, the secret that they had been hiding would become the noose that caused their death. I really cannot figure out anything. Chu Yin did not wish to be manipulated by Chen Gu. The surrounding tenants with secrets in their heart also astutely kept their mouths shut. They all knew very well the smartest choice at this moment was to zip their lips. One wrong word and they would be like moths flying voluntarily into a flame. Xiao Sun sincerely wanted to have the killer captured, so he offered the information that he had. But I remember, a few nights ago, many neighbors were complaining when you argued with your father. The argument was so loud that many of us were not able to rest, probably. In fact, one of the middle-aged uncles from the fifth floor purposely came down to warn you guys to keep the noise down. Oh, right, other than that, 
I believe the electrician on the eighth floor also got into a recent conflict with your father. I believe it had something to do with the electrical wiring. They even got into a fight once in the corridor. At the time, the electrician even threatened your father. What's the problem? Why are you guys looking at me like that? Have I misremembered? Was I wrong? Xiao Sun did not know the other side of his neighbors. He merely recited what he had seen. This also proved indirectly that he was one of the few normal people in this building. He was not afraid of being investigated. The clues that you have given are too important. After we inform the landlord, we will start our investigation at the rooms of those people. Chenga had high praise for Xiao Sunday. It did not matter that Chu Yin refused to cooperate because Xiao Sun had helped Chen Gu tear open a gap between the tenants of the residential area. The few tenants that Xiao Sun mentioned earlier would become the first batch of sacrificial lambs. Xiao Sun had done a great job, but he did not realize how dangerous the situation he had put himself in was. There were ten floors in total at the apartment building. The landlord lived alone on the ninth floor. The tenth floor was left empty, and all the rooms were locked. The crowd reached room 901. Chuin knocked several times, but there was no answer. It appeared like no one was home. The landlord is probably out. Let's go to other places and check first. Perhaps we can return later. Wait a minute. Chen Gu grabbed Chu Yin by his elbow. The tenant of his apartment has just been murdered. That is huge news, and the landlord has not even shown up to investigate. Do you think that's normal? Of course it is not normal, but I believe the landlord is not even in this building at the moment. He's probably gone to the other buildings of the residential area. The landlords of the few buildings in this residential area meet up to have a weekly meeting. So, that is probably where the landlord is now. He is probably meeting up with the other landlords in another building. A weekly meeting? Cheng Gu again gained more important information from what Chu Yin revealed. Yes, the landowners meet up to discuss important issues like the rent price, the environment around the residential area, and so on. You have a point, but you have missed one very important detail. Chen Gu slowed down for the point that he was about to make to sink in. I have been to the first ground. The exit was locked, and the lock is applied from inside the building. What is that able to prove? How does that contradict with what I said? Only the landlord has the key to the exit, and since the lock was applied from the inside, it also means that the landlord must still be inside this building. If the landlord had left, the door would be locked from the outside. Chen Ji's logical argument was flawless. And the words that he said carried a very serious implication to the rest of the neighbors. They instantly noticed the hot water that they could possibly be in. The landlord is still inside the building, but he did not show up when there was a murder inside the apartment. That leads me to the conclusion that perhaps he has been harmed as well. Perhaps the killer got to him before we could. Chu Gui being killed and the landlord being killed were two distinctly different scenarios because the latter had the spare keys to all the doors in the building. Now, even Chu Yin did not look so good. Events had developed far beyond his control. It is fine if you do not believe me. The easiest way to find out whether I am correct or not is to break down the door. Chen Gu carried his backpack and glanced at the door. He did not want to show Dr. Skullcracker's hammer at that moment. Do any of you have any tools at home? Human lives are at stake here. I know this is a serious case of trespassing, but I am sure that the landlord will be able to understand once we explain what is happening to him, provided he is still alive, that is. My house is currently being renovated. There's a whole set of tools. Wait a minute for me. I will go and grab them now. Auntie Ding was the first to speak up. Her tone was urgent and desperate. She volunteered to go and grab the tools, but in reality, she probably wanted to go back home to deal with other things, and the former was just an excuse. I have tools to open lock as well. I will go back home to check. I will be back. 
A few of the other tenants used the same excuse to leave as well. Chen Gug knew what they were up to, but he did not stop any of them. It was not that difficult to cover up and deal with the secret in their own room in a short amount of time. The difficult part was to ensure that no traces were left behind. A few minutes later, the few neighbors returned one after another. They carried various kinds of tools with them. With the cooperation of the whole group, they used almost half an hour to break down the front door of room 901. This is so troublesome. If only all the rooms used a wooden door. Chen Gu pushed Chu In into the room. Chu In was angry, but there was nothing he could do. The room is very neat, and there is no sign of a scuffle or any blood. Looks like we have been worried for no reason. Chu In walked at the front of the group. This was probably his first time entering the landlord's room. He appeared rather cautious, he did not dare get too close to the furniture inside the room. You seem to be quite afraid of the landlord. Am I right? Chen Gu followed behind Chu In like a shadow. His voice drifted into Chu Yin's ears. Of course not, stop talking nonsense. Is that so? Chen Gu gave Chu In a once over. He noticed that the tenants had a very referential attitude toward the landlord. The anomalous attitude of Chu Yin when they were inside the landlord's room was the best proof of that. Chen Gu did not linger on this question. Chen Gu split the neighbors up to investigate the house. They opened the many doors before everyone congregated inside the bathroom. Pulling back the shower curtain, there was no bathroom or shower like one would expect, instead, there was a small television. Chen Gu tried to switch it on. The television was functioning normally, but the screen was only filled with static. Why would there be a television set inside the bathroom? Chu Yin voiced the question on his mind. It is probably used to broadcast some unsightly content. Chen Gu studied the surroundings. The bathroom had no windows. After closing the bathroom door and pulling up the shower curtain, this would become a completely isolated space. Outsiders would have no idea what the landlord was doing there. Moving the television to the side, Chen Gu realized that there was a complicated trail of electrical wiring behind the device. His eyes followed the trail of wires, and he realized that all of them led upstairs. The electrical wiring of room 901 was connected to the wiring of room 1001. The landlord's secret should be hidden somewhere in room 1001. Chen Gu did not share his discovery with other people. He saw the problem from the complicated circuit. A normal television set did not require such complicated wiring. Chen Gu suspected that the landlord had installed surveillance cameras in hidden spots around the apartment, and the landlord probably spent most of his free time inside this bathroom, looking in on other people's lives. Chen Gu had a good guess what the landlord's secret was, but that did not help with the most imminent question, where was the landlord? If the landlord had seen the monster from the cursed hospital through his surveillance, then he would be prepared to handle it. So, was it the monster from the cursed hospital who killed the landlord? If they had done it, they could have gained the apartment keys from the landlord after killing them. They would not have needed to enter a contract with Chu Yin. Thus, the real sequence of events was probably something like this. The monster from the cursed hospital tried to reach out to the landlord first, but they were unable to locate him, so they settled for the second best choice, which was to cooperate with Chu Yin. Then, they planned to slowly gang up with the rest of the tenants. Chin Gu was slowly smoothing out the timeline in his mind. Then, the truth came to him. Someone in the building had found out about the landlord's secret. To ensure that their own secret was not exposed, one of them or even a group of them had gathered together to deal with the landlord. To be able to suspect such a thing, it would have to be someone who was familiar with the electrical wiring and their weird setup. Chen Gu was instantly reminded of the electrician that Xiao Sun had mentioned earlier. The electrician lived on the eighth floor, and he was closest to the landlord's house, which was on the ninth floor, so naturally, he was the prime suspect. Take a look at this. Auntie Ding opened the closet inside the landlord's bedroom. 
After she moved away the clothes, she revealed the many nails that were pinned to the inner wall of the closet. Every nail had a room number written above it. The numbers ranged from 101 to 1006. The key that hangs from the nail should correspond to the room number. The landlord has silently copied each of our house keys without telling us. Auntie Ding appeared to be telling everyone about this on purpose. Her expression was one of shocked, but in Chin Ji's eyes, it appeared too forced and inorganic. The widening of the eyes, the gaping of the jaw, these were surface acting skills. Her performance did not come from the heart at all. After seeing the keys, Chin Gu also subconsciously reacted with appropriate shock. Chin Ji's performance was much more natural. He used all his facial features to express the emotion of surprise. With the aid of body language, he was the embodiment of surprise. Instantly, the difference between amateur acting and professional acting was shown. Looks like the killer has taken all the spare room keys. This is not good news for any of us. Chen Gu soon calmed down. He knew that Auntie Ding herself was hiding something, but he did not say anything to expose her. Then, what should we do now? The killer is on a real rampage now. He has not only killed my family, he is also involved in the landlord's disappearance. Chuin really did not expect things to go this way. He felt like he had been dragged by Chin Gu into a large hole, one that he would not be able to climb out of on his own. The other tenants were also starting to panic. They did not feel that threatened when Chu Gui was killed, but now that the landlord was missing, most of them were feeling anxious. A strange emotion was rippling through the crowd. We should go and check up with the electrician on the eighth floor first. Didn't your father get into an argument with him before he died? Chin Gu and Chu Yin were about to leave room 901 when the middle-aged man with the hidden female underwear in his house stepped forward. He blocked the way to the exit, and his eyes were blazing into Chin Gu. How can I help you? Chen Ji's expression did not change. The man was unfazed. He was standing amid a group of creeps and murderers, but there was not a single trace of fear or uncertainty on his face. Even though the turnover rate of this building is very high, with new people moving in and old people moving out silently, the middle-aged man strode to stand before Chen Gu. I do not think I have seen you before. Did you just move here? If you just moved here, you should have met the landlord, and you are probably the last person to have seen the landlord alive. That person would be the killer, not me. Chen Gu pulled Wen Qing to his side. There is a boy living in room 401, called Xiang Wan. You guys should have heard of him, right? When Chen Gu was speaking, his brain was churning. He rehearsed the spiel that he had come up with earlier in his mind. I do. The boy lives alone in room 401. His father is dead, and his mother is a wily vixen. She is some man's kept mistress. She does not live here and the boy occasionally leaves the apartment to go meet up with his mother. The middle-aged man's accusation caused Wen Qing's whole body to shake with anger. My big sister and I are here to look after Xiang Wan on his mother's behalf. The boy is sick, and there is some problem with his head. I am the psychiatrist his mother hired, and my big sister will look after his living arrangements. Chen Gu mentioned many other details about Xiang Wan before the middle-aged slowly moved away. Looks like the boy's mother had found the boy a good father figure this time. There is no need for them to worry about money anymore. The middle-aged man's gaze lingered on Wen Qing for a long time. Chen Gu stood between Wen Qing and the middle-aged man. With a smile still stuck on his face, he said, For a while now, you have been trying to make trouble for me. What is it that you're afraid of? Chapter 1082, In Fighting, Afraid? What should I be afraid of? The middle-aged man's expression became unnatural. He had no idea where Chin Ji's confidence to accuse him came from. I am trying to help everyone find and investigate the killer, but you have been trying time and time again to change the subject. Could it be that you know something but have decided not to share it with the rest of us? Chen Gun narrowed his eyes. At the time, the murderer escaped from the sixth-floor window. 
he would not have gone far. He should have been hiding on the fifth, sixth, or seventh floors. Those are the three floors that were most probably his hiding place. If we'd started our search on those three levels, there was a very high chance we would have been able to block and apprehend the killer, but you insisted on us coming to find the landlord first. Chen Gu used a manipulative way of phrasing it. At the time, the middle-aged man only suggested they find the landlord, but Chen Gu made it sound like the middle-aged man had given that as an order. It was the middle-aged man who had allowed the killer to escape. The landlord lives on the ninth floor, and this place is very far from the crime scene. I suspect you were purposely trying to lead us away so that you could buy some time for the killer to escape. That is ludicrous. Everyone, do not listen to him. He is lying. I've done no such thing. You led us all to the ninth floor, and somehow, you appeared to know that the landlord has been harmed, and thus, no one would come to open the door for us. To get the front door open, we have wasted yet another half an hour here. The time wasted was more than enough for the killer to remove the blood evidence from his body. Chen Ji's words stuck into the middle-aged man's body like sharp knives. It is not my wish to suspect you, but there are just too many coincidences that do not line up. I for one do not believe in so many coincidences. It feels more like you are purposely trying to buy time for the real killer to escape. The way the neighbors looked at the middle-aged man slowly turned unfriendly and hostile. Listen to me. I really had no idea that the landlord has been harmed. If I knew that, I would not have said the things that I did. Trust me, I am completely innocent. The middle-aged man tried his best to argue his case. Chen Gu stood to the side and watched. He did not care for the middle-aged man's defense. He merely wanted to find an excuse, an excuse that could allow him access into the middle-aged man's house. None of the tenants were clean. As long as Chen Gu was given a chance to enter their room, even if there was no evidence, Chen Gu would try his best to find the evidence. I have known Brother Man for many years already. I know his personality very well. I believe that he would not have done something like that. I believe he is really innocent. Auntie Ding suddenly jumped out to the middle-aged man's rescue. Just as the latter was about to sigh in relief, Auntie Ding suddenly added the following to push him further into the abyss. But like the young man said, everything feels too coincidental. To prove Brother Man's innocence, how about we start the search at Brother Man's place? I believe firmly that he is innocent, and I am sure that a search of his place will clear his name right up. That way, we can move on to the capture of the real killer after dealing with this misunderstanding. Auntie Ding sounded like she was defending the middle-aged man. In fact, she had stated explicitly that she believed in the middle-aged man's innocence, but in reality, she was damning the middle-aged man. As an old tenant of the building, she should know the middle-aged man's secret quite well. She knew that there were things inside Brother Man's home that could not be exposed to the public. After hearing what Auntie Ding had to say, the middle-aged man's expression turned ugly. He did not expect that the final knife that determined his fate at this crucial moment would come from his own neighbor, Auntie Ding. With dark and consuming eyes, the middle-aged man stared at Auntie Ding, his hands clenching into fists. Chen Gu did not step in and say anything, his gaze merely wandered between the middle-aged man and Auntie Ding. Auntie Ding was the first to discover that the spare keys inside the closet had been stolen. Her reaction was extremely unnatural. For Chen Gu, Auntie Ding was likely related to the landlord's death. She was probably one of the killers that took the landlord's life. This would explain why she had chosen to speak up at this moment. She wanted to push the blame for the landlord's death onto the middle-aged man. Of course, this would only work if the middle-aged man had something to hide. And honestly, he deserved it for his big mouth. If he did not bring up anything about the landlord, no one would have come up to the ninth floor and found out about the landlord's disappearance and possible death. Now, those people who had harmed the landlord naturally would not let him go. Since he had volunteered as a scapegoat, the best possible way was to push the blame onto him. 
Chingu understood that psychology very well, and that was what he had been doing when he accosted the middle-aged man. He was not looking for an argument for no reason, he was trying to push the middle-aged man into the position of the suspect who might have killed the landlord. He understood that once he had done that, there would be someone would jump out to support him. They would pin the middle-aged man down and deliver his death sentence. The tenants who were cleared of their suspicion started to gang up against those who had not had their suspicion cleared, and now even the tenants who were not suspected started to have cracks in their camaraderie. If this continued, without doing anything, Chen Gu would be able to get closer to his goal. This is not the time for infighting. The most important thing that we need to do now is find the killer who murdered Chu Guo. Seeing the altercation between the tenants, Chen Gu could not have been more overjoyed in his heart, but the words that came out from his lips hoped that they would put aside their differences and work together. We should all calm down. Let's return to the initial hypothesis. Xiao Sun told us that the electrician on the eighth floor got into an argument with Chu Gue and threatened his life. The electrician has motive, so we should start our investigation with him. Chen Gu did not let Auntie Ding gather the crowd against the middle-aged man. He wanted to retain the middle-aged to create more cracks in the future. After leaving room 901, Chen Gu walked at the front with a smile on his face. Behind him trailed the tenants from the building, this was truly an astounding sight. Is anyone home? With Xiao Sun's direction, the crowd reached the house of the electrician. The knocking echoed down the corridor, shattering the silence of the eighth floor. Everyone had their eyes on the door before them. The tenants were curious about the electrician's secret as well. They were eager to expose his secret, this kind of rush was something that was hard to describe. After several knocks, footsteps finally came from inside the room, and the front door was pulled open slightly. How can I help you? A man with long beard appeared at the door. He appeared to be quite reticent. His eyes were bloodshot like he had not had a good night's sleep in a long time. There's been a murder. We just came to warn you about it. We wish for you to be careful. Noted, the electrician said and was about to close the door but Chen Gu reached out to grab the door and stop him. What are you doing? This is not what I wish to do, but a consensus that has been reached by everyone in the building. Chen Gu pointed to the tenants behind him. This is for everyone's personal safety. I hope you will understand and cooperate. We now suspect that you are somehow involved in the murder. If you are innocent, then please step out of the way. We will not mess up your house. We just wish to confirm some things. Xiao Sun was not a cunning person. He shared their purpose for being there directly. I am suspected to be involved in the murder? The electrician lifted his head. His bloodshot eyes swept to the left and right of Chen Gu as if using his eyes to communicate with someone. Chen Gu knew that Anti Ding was standing on his left side behind him. Things were getting more and more interesting. When the electrician knew that he was in trouble, he turned to Anti Ding immediately. This proved that they were both in on something. Combined with the earlier speculation that Anti Ding was related to the landlord's death, did this not prove that the electrician was also related to the landlord's death? When Chin Gu discovered the complicated wiring in room 901, Chin Gu had already suspected that the killer was the electrician. This was because the electrician was probably the first person to discover the landlord's secret. Chen Gu was facing away from Auntie Ding, so he had no idea what kind of hint Auntie Ding had provided to the electrician, but he saw that after the brief eye contact, the electrician's expression turned uglier. I've been inside my room alone throughout the night. I have not left my house at all. You've got the wrong person. The electrician refused to step aside and got into a stalemate with the people at the corridor. Chinga felt like they had wasted too much time there. If the electrician refused to budge, then the rest of the plan would halt there. The tenants there were all incredibly cunning. Other than Xiao Sun, no one was willing to stick their neck out. Chinga had no choice but to do this on his own. The killer has threatened everyone's safety. Your refusal to let us go in proves that you surely have something to hide. 
Chen Ji's attitude turned firmer. We are not asking for your opinion, we are merely here to inform you of that. Inform me? We are all tenants here. Who gave any of you the right to enter my private home? Preposterous. We have already patiently explained the situation to you, but you still refuse to let us through. Looks like you are really related to Chu Gui's death. You have something to hide. Chen Ji's patience was wearing thin. His hand that gripped the door pulled with strength. Let us in. There must be some clues inside his room. With Chen Gu leading the way, the other tenants that did not have much interaction with the electrician normally started to help. Against the strength of so many people, the electrician was unable to keep his door shut. What the hell? Stop this nonsense. The front door was yanked open. Chen Gu was the first to charge in. His nostrils flared. Chen Gu sniffed a burnt smell in the air. What is being burnt? The room was very messy, and trash littered every corner. There was barely a space for people to stand. The neighbor squeezed into the room and trampled over the stuff on the ground. The electrician appeared to have given up. He turned to face the door and kept his head lowered. He kept his expression from the sight of everyone else. Chu Gui was stabbed to death, so the killer would have been covered in a copious amount of blood. There is another thing that we need to pay attention to. The killer planned everything out before they committed the crime, so that means that they probably have been planning this for a long time. Therefore, there might be something related to the murder inside his notebooks. The tenants that followed behind Chen Gu started to ransack the room. Throughout the whole process, the electrician stood at the door with his head lowered, and not a peep came out of the man. His whole body is incredibly tense. He is afraid. The tenants searched for a long time, but they could find any evidence that tied the electrician to the murder. Auntie Ding walked toward Chen Gu. Perhaps we have misjudged him. As messy as this place is, there is no sign of blood. He does not have the habit of reading or taking notes. There are no reading or writing materials anywhere in this place. Looks like he is really not the killer. Xiao Sun walked out from the bedroom with a frown. He was still an innocent child. He had not gone through the harsh reality of the society yet. After knowing that he was wrong, he ran to the electrician's side. I am so sorry. We only hope to capture the killer as soon as possible. I will treat you a dinner in the future and consider that an apology for this transgression. Now, can you please leave me alone? The electrician growled. It was clear that he was very angry. Of course, Auntie Ding said on everyone's behalf. The rest also slowly shuffled to the front door. Wait a minute. Chen Gu stood inside the room and suddenly said, Do you guys smell something burning? The place is so messy. It is probably something that has gone moldy. Auntie Ding was obviously trying to defend the electrician. Let's not waste time here anymore. We should go and check the other suspects. A moldy food wouldn't give off a burnt smell. Chin Gu followed the trail of stench and came to the bedroom on the right. Do you live alone? The electrician lifted his head to look at Chin Gu. His voice was hoarse. Yes, I do live alone. You live alone, but both of the bedrooms have king-sized beds. You sure live in the lap of luxury. What does that have to do with anything? I am just curious. Chen Gu looked at the beds that had recently been changed. The covers looked washed and clean. It was a bright contrast to the mess that was the rest of the house. Which bedroom do you normally sleep in? This is my house. I can sleep in whichever room that I want. Why should I answer that? Does that have to do with the murder that you are talking about? The electrician glared with his bloodshot eyes. He had been suppressing anger. The man probably had anger management issues, and he had been trying to rein it in before the public. My guess is that you normally sleep in the bedroom on the left because of the array of everyday objects that are placed there. In contrast, the bedroom on the right is much simpler in nature. In fact, it does not look occupied. 
It feels more like this is your workshop. Chen Guk kicked away some of the wiring on the ground. A few of them, he noticed, were connected to the space under the bed. But why would a workshop need such a big bed? Chen Guk grabbed the newly changed covers and pulled them off without warning and tossed them to the ground. The electrician's face blanched immediately, and he took a subconscious step back. Underneath the cover was a thick mattress. There were many burnt spots on the mattress, and that was where the smell came from. After taking a glance at the mattress, Auntie Ding quickly moved her gaze away. We should go to the other rooms. There is nothing to see here. Everything looks normal to me. The bed is of good quality, and it is incredibly soundproof and can resist shaking, Chin Gu said as he yanked off the mattress. He pulled the whole mattress away. A stingy burnt smell rushed out and assaulted the nose of everyone present. Underneath the mattress was a wooden bed frame. Chin Gu did not hesitate and pushed the bed frame to the side. The scene that was exposed was revolting. Underneath the bed frame was the body of a boy. Many electrical clamps were connected to his body. His skin was seriously charred, but the real fatal wound could be found around his neck. He had been strangled to his death, the signs of strangling were quite obvious. Jia Qi Auntie Ding dropped to the ground once the boy was exposed. She crawled to the bedside and wanted to hug the boy's dead body. Auntie Ding wailed like a traumatized mother, but Chen Gu saw very clearly that the woman could not even fake a single crocodile tear. Capture that electrician! Xiao Sun shouted loudly. When Chen Gu pulled back the mattress, the electrician had already sneaked out from the room. He killed Jia Qi. How could he torture such a sweet boy? I will kill him. I will kill him. Auntie Ding seemed to have gone berserk from the trauma. She grabbed the fruit knife on the nearby coffee table and charged out. She was quite largely built and was as large as a man. She ran quite fast as well. Quick! The murderer has been found. We should follow and captured him. Xiao Sun ran out with passion. The other neighbors also mobilized. Only Chin Gu and Wen Qing stayed in the bedroom. Aren't we going to follow them? Wen Qing asked softly. The electrician is not going to survive. Auntie Ding will do everything within her power to kill him. You're right. Auntie Ding has been defending the man. To find out that her trust has been betrayed, she must be in great pain. The reason she needs to kill the electrician is not out of pain, but fear. This boy should be Auntie Ding's present to the electrician. They are both responsible for the landlord's death. The electrician knows Auntie Ding's many secrets. Auntie Ding is afraid that once the electrician is captured, he will sell her out as well so she will definitely kill him before he is given a chance to speak. Chen Gu looked at the young boy that was propped up like a grotesque exhibit, and the smile slowly disappeared from his face. He hissed through gritted teeth. This bunch of animals. When Qing churned Chen Ji's words in her mind. She had been following Chen Gu and experienced the same thing, but she had no idea how Chen Gu managed to come up with the hypotheses for so many things. Chapter 1083, Who Will Be Next? Standing next to Chen Gu, Wen Qing did not know what to say or ask. She was afraid that she might accidentally expose some important information. After all, by now, she at least understood that there was no one in this building that could truly be trusted. One wrong step and she could put them in extreme danger. Why don't you go and accompany Granny Lee in the living room? I will stay to investigate what happened here. Wen Qing nodded and left. Chen Gu stayed in the bedroom alone. He closed the bedroom door and knelt by the bed to inspect the boy's dead body. The burning from electrocution, the bruises from heavy beatings, Chen Ji's eyes finally landed around the boy's neck. He was strangled to death by electrical wires. There are wooden chips lodged in the boy's fingernails. Before he perished, his arms were tied to the bed frame. Chen Gu undid the rope around the body. He placed the clean cover over the boy. The electrician looked like a reticent and harmless worker on the surface, 
but in reality, he has a flaming temper. Yet, he has a knack for reining it in around others. And then he vents it through torturing others who are weaker than him. The man is rotten through and through. The scary thing was that the electrician was not an exception to the rule at this apartment building. Chin Goat started to think deeper into other consequences. Under the limitation of law and morality, their actual nature was hidden and closed away, but in the world behind Xiang Wan's door, the most disgusting and horrid facet of their personality is exposed. This door appears to purposely highlight the sin in human nature, and it twists everyone into monstrous beings. Chin Gu tried to analyze the ghost fetus thoughts, but with the meager number of clues that he had so far, he was unable to come to any concrete conclusion. Rummaging through the backpack, Chin Gu noticed that blood vessels had started to surface on the comic. He tried to summon his workers, but unfortunately, he still got no response. Chen Gu. Wen Qing's voice came from outside the bedroom, and then the door was pushed open. Something seems to have happened downstairs. The sound of screaming, running, wailing, and crying were mixed together as they drifted up from downstairs. It sounded like a battlefield down there. Do not worry. Let them deal with this among themselves for now. Chen Gu slowly walked out from the room. The faces of the tenants that were in the room earlier flashed across his mind. Who will be next? Chen Ji's group soon arrived at the second floor. The smell of blood lingered in the air. There were even fresh blood stains that were noticeable on the staircase. What is going on here? Before Chen Gu got near, he was able to hear Auntie Ding crying. The rest of the tenants blocked the corridor. They formed a wall that did not allow anyone to pass. The electrician is dead. Xiao Sun leaned against the wall, and his face was pale as a sheet. He's dead? Chen Gu looked very surprised. He picked up his pace and crossed through the crowd. Move out of the way please. Standing at the corner between the first floor and the second floor, Chen Gu appeared to have frozen. He could see the auntie Ding kneeling on the ground, her lips mumbling Jia Qi's name again and again. Both of her arms and her upper body were covered in fresh blood. Auntie Ding appeared to have lost her grasp on reality due to overwhelming sadness. Others had trouble getting close to her, or to be more precise, no one was willing to get close to Auntie Ding in her current state. You, have killed him? Chen Ji's pupils were shivering. But he was our only clue. Jia Qi was the first child that I adopted. He went missing in this residential area. I have been looking so hard for him. Auntie Ding's hair was disheveled as she pressed her hands into the pool of blood on the ground. That was my child. Can you understand how that would have affected a mother like myself? Do you know how I felt when I saw that child in that state in his room? Auntie Ding's words petered off into a blubbering mess. All the energy in her body seemed to have drained from her as she collapsed in the pool of blood. Actually, it would wrong to say that Sister Ding has killed him. I saw with my own eyes that there was an altercation between Sister Ding and the electrician. Both of them slipped down the stairs, and the fruit knife just so happened to get stuck in the electrician's neck. I suppose, in a way, this is karma working her magic. No one is to blame but the man himself. The one who spoke was a tenant from the fifth floor. He was very tall, and he always stood together beside Auntie Ding. This was the first time he had spoken with Chen Gu. An accident you say? Chen Ji's gaze moved past Auntie Ding as he looked down the first floor corridor. The electrician had already run out of the stairwell and was racing to get out of the building. His body was lying near the entrance and the locked front door even had the man's bloody handprints on it. With a knife puncturing through his neck, even if he was not dead, I doubt he wouldn't be able to speak anymore. This is so unfortunate. The trail of clues that we found with such difficulty has been wiped away just like that. Chen Ji's tone was quite helpless. He then turned to the tall guy. And who are you? I do not think we have met before. My surname is Lee. I am sorry if this is a forward question, 
but why do you reek of medicine? I am a practicing pediatrician. Isn't the medicine meant for children supposed to have as diluted a smell as possible to prevent them from gagging on the taste? Before waiting for the man to answer, Chin Guk changed the subject. I was not here when the electrician died. Did anyone hear what he said before he died? He called out Auntie Ding's full name. Xiao Sun started to say something, but he was rudely interrupted by Dr. Li. The electrician is already dead. What we need to do now is confirm as soon as possible whether he is the murderer behind Chu Gui's death. But. Xiao Sun insisted on saying something, but this time, Chin Guk cut him off. Indeed, the most important thing that we needed to do now is capture the culprit. If the electrician is Chu Gui's murderer, of course, that would be best, but I am afraid that he is just an accomplice, and the real murderer is still hiding among us. A living human being was murdered, just like that, before their eyes. The atmosphere inside the apartment building became more suffocating. I will take Auntie Ding back to her room for now. She must have been greatly traumatized to have seen her adopted child in such a state. Dr. Lee tried to pick up Auntie Ding from the pool of blood, but he failed even after several tries. He turned to the crowd and waved at a short guy. Big head, would you mind coming over to help me? The short man was bald, and a large part of his face was swollen, giving him the look of a monster. Big Head and Dr. Lee carried Auntie Ding back to the fourth floor while Chen Gu watched them walk away quietly. Dr. Lee is tall and well-built. He looks quite strong. As large as Auntie Ding is, it is impossible for him to be incapable of carrying her on his own. He was merely looking for an excuse to get Big Head to leave this place with them. The three of them should know each other, and they operate as a group. Dr. Lee, Big Head, Auntie Ding, and the electrician, Chin Gun now suspected that it was the four of them who cooperated to kill the landlord and then stole the spare keys to all the rooms. With regards to their motive, Chin Gun had a fairly good guess. The landlord had found out about their secrets, so he needed to die. Air. So, how shall we deal with the electrician's body? Chu In felt a headache coming. Chu Gui's dead body was still lying in his living room, and now they had another dead body in the building. Their initial intention was to find the killer, but somehow, things had started to get out of control as if there was a pair of hands that had been pushing them around for the tenants to turn on each other. Let's just ignore that for now. I just discovered something very scary. Xiao Sun only dared to speak after he saw Dr. Li walk further away. The electrician was pushed down the stairs. The person who dealt the final blow was not Auntie Ding, but Dr. Li. At the time, they were the ones who were chasing after the electrician the most passionately. They were the most desperate to hunt him down. Jia Qi is Auntie Ding's adopted son. Why would Dr. Li react so brashly? He does not look like a vindictive person to me. Chen Gu was slowly laying the trail for the tenants to consider. He could not be as direct as Xiao Sun because he still had no idea how many people in the building were involved in the murder of the landlord. But there was one thing that was for certain, the number of people involved would not that be high, or else they would not need to be afraid of Chen Gu at this moment, and they did not to sacrifice the electrician. I also think that is quite weird. The middle-aged man who had the female underwear stored away in his home stood in the corner alone. Now he had decided not to trust anyone, which honestly was a bright decision. That Ding woman has been acting very strangely today. She treats her adopted children so badly normally. Compared to human beings, she treats them more like pets. She beats and scolds them for the smallest transgression or when she is in a bad mood. So, it is your opinion that Auntie Ding did not kill the electrician out of revenge, but to cover up something else, right? I did not say anything like that. The middle-aged man looked at Chen Gu and quickly waved his hands. He was an old tenant here, he knew how dangerous it was to run his mouth. Then, should we go and ask Wu Yu? He is the child who lives in room 301. The tenants of the building all say that the boy likes to lie, but I personally think that the child is quite an obedient kid, Xiao Sun suddenly said and what he said caused the middle-aged man to break out in cold sweat. 
He is probably this way because he has been left alone for a long time and lacks human company. Well, we have a psychiatrist among us now. Perhaps this is the best opportunity for us to approach him. The middle-aged man shook his head while trying to calm himself down. The kid, will you spews out nothing but lies. Not a single word out of his mouth can be trusted. Plus, he is just a small child. What does he know? If you expose him to a dead body, you might worsen his condition. All right, I was just giving a suggestion. After all, the child is seen running all over the building sometimes. Perhaps he might know something. Xiao Sun was analyzing the situation rationally. He had no idea that he had made himself a target in most people's eyes. Chinga also wiped away the sweat from his forehead. As a normal person amid a group of crazed murderers, the first thing one needed to learn to do was not mimic a detective to solve the case, but learn how to properly protect oneself. Chingu understood that Xiao Sun was just trying to help, but he did not approve of his dangerous method. I also do not think we should bring this to a child, but with a murderer on the loose, it is too dangerous for Wu Yu to stay at home alone. We should get him to stay with us. When Chin Gu started with his sentence, the middle-aged man was nodding vehemently, but when Chin Gu finished the rest of the sentence, the man's head froze in midair. Wouldn't it be very inconvenient to bring a child with us in a situation like this? It will be fine. I will look after him. We shall go to room 301 to get Wu Yu now. Chen Gu headed toward the third floor. He just arrived at the third floor corridor when he saw a boy's head poke out from the door of the room at the end of the corridor. It was quite scary seeing that in the middle of the night. Wu Yu, there is a murderer among us in the building. It is too dangerous for you to stay alone. Why don't you come with us for now? Chinga reached out to grab Wu Yu's hand, but the latter skipped away from him. Murderer? Wu Yu looked at Chinga and the rest of the tenants. He used his very juvenile voice to ask, But aren't all you murderers? See, all the boy does is lie. The middle aged man shrugged, looking as helpless as he could. Since you know we are all murderers, why do you still live here? Aren't you afraid of us? Chingo looked at the boy before him. I am waiting for my parents. If something happens to you, your parents won't be able to find you, so you'd better come with us. This is, for your own good. Chingu was quite forceful when he was negotiating with this boy. Grabbing Wu Yu by his hand, Chingu had the boy stick close to him. Realizing how firm Chin Gu was with his decision, the middle-aged man suddenly professed that he had a stomachache and needed to go home for a while. Chin Gu did not say anything to stop him and allowed him to go. Actually, Chin Gu knew that the middle-aged man was only making an excuse. He was worried that Wu would accidentally sell him out, so he quickly hurried home to destroy any incriminating evidence. After the middle-aged man left, the rest of them moved to Auntie Ding's room on the fourth floor. Dr. Lee called after Big Head and Auntie Ding naturally because they had something to discuss. Chen Gu did not wish to give them too much time to come up with a solution or an excuse. When they came to the fourth floor, before they reached Auntie Ding's place, Chen Gu saw Big Head guarding outside Auntie Ding's room. Is Sister Ding feeling better? With Dr. Lee looking after her, I'm sure she will be fine. Big Head might look scary, but his tone was friendly. He gave off the feeling of those honest floor mats that were easily bullied by others. After you guys left, something else happened. There is a question that I need to ask Auntie Ding in person. But she still needs to rest. You'd better step out of the way. This matter is very serious. Chu Yin, Xiao Sun, Wen Qing, and Granny Li were following behind Chen Go. They had the numerical advantage. I will enter the room alone so that we won't disturb Sister Ding's rest. Okay then. Big Head knocked on the door. More than ten seconds later, the door opened, and Chen Gu walked in alone. Even though Auntie Ding could not be called young anymore, the home decoration was extremely pink and fluffy. It felt more like the room of a teenage girl. Once Chen Gu entered the room, he was assaulted by the heavy mist of perfume and air freshener that hung in the air. 
he coughed lightly and closed the door behind him. Auntie Dean was lying on the couch, and Dr. Lee stood beside her. They did not look happy to see Chen Gu walk in. How can we help you? Do any of you know the salacious-looking middle-aged man that lives on the third floor? What about him? Just now, he said that the electrician did not trip on the stairs and fell, but was pushed down the stairs, and then he sneaked in a suggestion to tell us to go and ask Wu Yu about it, Chen Gu said with a stone-cold expression. Did you find anything out from the boy? Auntie Ding's face was pale, and her voice was involuntarily shaking. The child was seriously traumatized. We cannot understand what is he trying to express. He kept saying things like seeing Auntie Ding carrying children up and down the stairs and seeing the children's ghost appearing around him. As if he was unable to see Auntie Ding's paling face, Chin Gu continued to speak. But the key is not the boy but that strange man living on the third floor. He stays the opposite of Wu Yu. I suspect that it might be him who fed these words to Wu Yu. After all, even if a child likes to lie, why would he choose these things to lie about? You have a point there. Both Dr. Lee and Auntie Ding nodded at the same time. Other than that, I realized something else. The middle-aged man appeared to be purposely hindering us from finding out the truth. I suspect. Chen Gu raised his head, and his eyes were shining. Could he be the culprit behind the landlord's death? That is very possible. There are many strange things about that man. Color returned to Auntie Ding's face, and even her words flowed more naturally. There's a lot of female underwear hidden in that man's room. Who knows where he got it all? In any case, that is a very disgusting man. You guys suspect him, and he has been trying to throw the suspicion onto you. Chen Gu appeared conflicted. I also do not know who to believe. How about this? In a bit, we will pretend to check one of the rooms on the third floor, but before he knows what's happening, we will barge into his house for a spot check and see if we can come up with any evidence. If there is anything related to the landlord that can be discovered at his house, we can confirm for sure that he is the landlord's killer. Chen Gu was making a very brave move. The real purpose of his plan was for the real murderer to produce the evidence themselves. It was a trap within a trap. Chapter 1084, Black Fog Chen Gu was not going to waste any more time with the tenants. He wanted to get this over with as soon as possible, and that was why he came up with this rather incendiary suggestion. Once Dr. Lee and Auntie Ding calmed down, regained their senses, and found out the truth, they would surely realize that it was Chen Gu who had been pulling the strings and the person that they needed to get rid of was Chen Gu all along. Dancing on the tip of the knife, Chen Gu had known his condition from the very beginning, but this was the only chance he had. There was no other choice for him. He needed to remove as many tenants inside the building before Dr. Lee and Auntie Ding came to. When there were too few of them to form an alliance to threaten him, he could openly take over the building already. Sister Ding, you'd better get a good rest inside the house. Shut your windows and doors and take care of yourself. Big head and I will go and take a look. Dr. Lee's expression had not changed. Chen Gu had no idea what the man was thinking. However, there was one thing that was clear, Dr. Lee was highly interested in Chen Ji's suggestion. This was an opportunity for them to deflect the suspicion that would have landed on them. Naturally, they would not give up this chance. Seeing Dr. Lee take the bait, Chen Gu stood up and turned to Auntie Ding with concern. I cannot be sure that the person who killed the landlord and the person who killed Chu Gue are the same person, so you have to be careful when you are staying at home all by yourself. I will be careful. Auntie Ding did not seem to key into the deeper layer of meaning behind Chen Ji's words. She lay on the couch and appeared as weak as possible. Let's go. Sister Ding needs her rest. Dr. Lee was the first to open the front door and leave. He then proceeded to whisper a few words in Big Head's ear. Using ghost ear, Chin Gu managed to pick up the words letter of commitment. With no change to his expression, he followed Dr. Lee slowly out of the room. In terms of cunningness and slyness, 
Dr. Li was a pretty good player, but he had greatly underestimated Chen Gu. Perhaps he had subconsciously placed himself in the role of a predator, and the rest of them were only the prey. The multiple kills that they had committed fed into the devil inside their heart, and normal people were merely prey to be had in their eyes. If he could successfully push the blame onto the others, that was the best, but if that failed, they would simply kill everyone who knew about their secret. This kind of twisted psychology blinded him to Chen Ji's suspicion toward him, and he had not been paying this outsider much attention. Then again, this was not entirely his fault. Who would have thought an outsider could manage to reconstruct most of the truth within such a short period of time? Of course, as time moved on, his suspicion toward Chen Gu would only continue to grow, and the thought of murdering Chen Gu would only get stronger. Auntie Ding lived on the fourth floor. Big Head was Auntie Ding's neighbor. After Dr. Lee whispered to him, Big Head offered a flimsy excuse to return to his own house. Half a minute later, Big Head came out of his house and looked perfectly normal. Sister Ding needs to rest, so we should leave her at home. Chen Gu scanned the group. Has the uncle from the third floor not returned? We should go and find him ourselves. That will save us some precious time, Dr. Lee said directly. He probably did not even realize that every single word that Chen Gu said was measured to purposely lead him to do certain things. He did not realize that he was being controlled. He merely thought that it was comfortable to work with Chen Gu. It was like when he wanted to go for a nap, someone was there to hand him a pillow. The group came to the door of the house of the middle-aged man on the third floor. Chen Gu knocked for quite some time before the middle-aged man came to open the door. I am so sorry. My stomach is not feeling too good. I was on the toilet. Come on, which room should we go and inspect next? Beads of sweat slithered down the middle-aged man's face, and he was catching his breath while speaking. Honestly, he did not look like he had just come from the toilet. We plan to inspect the rooms one by one. Since we are already now, why don't we start with your place? Without waiting for the middle-aged man to agree, Dr. Lee pushed his way into the room. Big Head followed closely behind him. You can do that, of course, but please do not mess with my stuff. I have many valuable collections here. The middle-aged man appeared to have dealt with his secret already, so he was not worried that Dr. Lee would be able to find anything to expose him. Looking at the incredibly confident middle-aged man, Chin Gu shook his head. If there was no secret to be found, a secret could be planted. Since both of the parties in this twisted game were unrelated to him, Chin Gu felt more like an observer. The group of people entered the room. The middle-aged man's room was very messy. Many beer cans and everyday trash littered the ground. The cleanest spot inside the house was the wall filled with posters of beautiful girls in skimpy clothing. There are so many pairs of eyes staring at you at all times. Don't you feel uncomfortable sleeping at night? Chen Ji's attitude was completely different from when they were searching the electrician's room. He kept staring at the posters on the wall and engaging the middle-aged man in conversation, creating opportunities for Dr. Li and Big Head to plant the evidence. Why would I be afraid looking at them at night? In fact, wouldn't that be a source of joy? What is so joyful about staring at a bunch of posters? Chin Gu glanced at the sofa and realized that the female underwear was still haphazardly tossed on the sofa. They had not been cleaned away, so it meant that the middle-aged man did not mind others noticing them. The underwear was not part of his real secret. Initially, Chinga thought that the middle-aged man was a fetishist, but now he realized that things were not that simple. This salacious middle-aged man collected more than just female underwear, his secret went deeper than that. Hey! Guys, come and take a look! Dr. Lee's voice came out from the middle-aged man's bedroom. He attracted everyone's attention, and they were squeezed outside the bedroom door. Peeling back the black cloth that covered the cupboard, Dr. Lee opened the cupboard door. It was filled with various porn videos and books that had incredibly suggestive covers on them. This is my personal collection. 
I keep them to myself and have not shared or sold them to any underage kids. That is not against the law, is it? The middle-aged man argued confidently as he leaned against the door. Is it possible that there are some other recordings that are mixed among these? If you do not trust me, feel free to peruse them on your own, but it will probably take month to look through all of them, right? The middle-aged man walked over to close the cupboard door, but suddenly, Dr. Lee reached out to grab his hand. Open this locked chest under the bed for us to see. We want to know what is inside. Don't push it. How is that any of your business? You do not wish to be mistaken for the killer, do you? Just open it up. If it has nothing to do with the murders, we will naturally leave you be, Dr. Lee said with an expressionless face. His tone was cold and caused the middle-aged man's spine to tingle with fear. Fine, I will cooperate with you for now. When we reach your place, I will also remember to give it a good search. The middle-aged man retorted with an empty threat. He took out the key from his pocket and opened the wooden box that was previously hidden under the bed. A female body model was placed inside the box. It was very well made. From afar, it looked no different from the body of an actual female. This is my wife. She has accompanied me for many years. The middle-aged stood next to the wooden box and refused to let anyone touch the model. For those amateurs who were not familiar with the making of mannequins, they would only be impressed by the technical beauty of this model, but unfortunately, Chen Gu was a master of mannequin production. He was familiar with all the materials that were involved in the making of a mannequin. There was no material in the world that could mimic human skin so perfectly, expect the person who was using human skin as his material. Compared to a factory-made mannequin, this model was more like a reproduction of a human female body. It had more than ten different parts. The head, the face, and the skin could be changed at will. The middle-aged man showcased the mannequin in the box, but he only allowed the tenants to see but not touch it. Other than the mannequin, there was nothing else inside the box, and as promised, the other tenants did not comment on the man's private interest. Are you done now? Can I put her away now? The middle-aged man was about to close the box when Big Head's voice suddenly came from the bathroom. What is this? The group rushed out from the room. The middle-aged man slowly and evenly locked up the wooden box. The expression on his face was one of ease, like he had survived a big ordeal. The middle-aged man was the last to leave his bedroom. When he came to the living room, he realized everyone was looking at him. What are you guys looking at me like that? What is going on? That should be our question. How do you explain this? Big Head opened his palm, and inside it sat a seriously worn down tooth. I found this inside your bathroom's underwater pipe. Impossible. Such thing couldn't exist in my house. The middle-aged man stared at the tooth in Big Head's palm, and a very bad feeling started to bloom in his heart. This was discovered inside your bathroom. You'd better give us an excuse that we can believe, Big Head said in a soft tone, but combined with his strange voice, it was a chilling effect. I will repeat again. Such thing couldn't exist in my house. The middle-aged man got into a stalemate with Big Head, neither willing to back off. Seeing the atmosphere chilled, Chingu walked over. Let's not jump to conclusions. Finding a tooth is no big deal. You are a fan of mannequins. Perhaps this tooth is meant for your mannequin. A mannequin's mouth does not need teeth, the middle-aged man explained to Chen Gu, the amateur. So, you tossed their tooth down the drain? Is that mannequin really just a mannequin? Big Head used this opportunity to take another shot at the middle-aged man. What are you going on about this time? The middle-aged man glared at Big Head. He tried his best to explain, but no one was willing to pay him any real attention. A single tooth is not enough to prove anything. We should all calm down for now. Chen Gu turned to Big Head with a question. Did you find anything else other than this tooth? Well, if a single tooth is not enough, what about a whole slew of teeth? Big Head pointed at the drain in the bathroom. A whole slew of teeth? 
everyone, including the middle-aged man, turned to look at the drain. The iron cover had been lifted open, and the spot where the drain curved had a few human teeth stuck in them. Some of them even had decayed flesh stuck to them. Why would these things be here? The middle-aged man sensed the unfriendly gazes that were directed his way, and his forehead broke out in cold sweat. I really have no idea why there are so many teeth in the drain. Perhaps some other people's things have gotten stuck in my drain while they were going down the pipe. You guys have to trust me. The teeth were all found stuck in the U-bend. If they came from another house, they would have been washed away by the main pipe. Dr. Lee's voice came from the other bedroom. His cold and icy eyes stared right at the middle-aged man. I suggest all of us stay away from this man. I have found something else. Dr. Lee raised a mannequin production direction manual in his hand. It was filled with the middle-aged man's writing on every page. He flipped through the book and took out a piece of paper with splotches of dried blood on it. Take a look at what is this. Xiao Sun and Chu Yin were the first to walk over. When they saw the content of the paper, their expressions both shifted. A letter of commitment? I swear I will not. The whole paper was filled with blood. This proved that the person who wrote this letter was not in a good physical state when he penned this. He appeared to be heavily injured. The handwriting was very uneven, like the W.R. Itair's fingers had been broken and snapped when he was forced to write this letter. Some of the content was too blurred out by the blood to be seen clearly. They could only see the beginning of the letter of the commitment and the signature of the landlord at the bottom. Why would you have a letter of commitment that is signed by the landlord? What did he promise you? How would I know? This does not belong to me at all. The middle-aged man by then realized what was up. Two people had just died in this building, and the culprit was on the loose. Evidence related to the crime had been found in his room, it was clear that someone was trying to frame him. A deep feeling of fear engulfed the man. He leaned against the wall. His pupils were shaking as he scanned everyone in the room. That was purposely planted in my room. It is just like the teeth in the drain. They were the doing of the real killer. Someone is trying to frame me. There are so many of us, but the killer chose to frame you. Why is that? Dr. Lee held the letter of commitment in both hands, just in case the middle-aged man darted forward to snatch it away from him. You have to believe me. These things really do not belong to me. The middle-aged man was so desperate that his forehead was covered in sweat. Earlier, he had been desperate to hide his own secret that he did not imagine that someone would plant evidence to frame him. I suggest we apprehend him for now. This man is too dangerous. Big Head looked around. The bed in the electrician's house can be used to secure his body, and there are electrical devices in his room. I believe they will be helpful in making the man speak the truth. What do the rest of you think? Dr. Lee turned to the other tenants. Chengu was stunned and did not speak like he was still caught in shock. Xiao Sun shook his head. How does that make us any different from the killer? I still think we can talk this out peacefully. Perhaps there is really a misunderstanding. I agree with Big Head's suggestion. The person who killed the landlord is in possession of all the room keys. We have to find out the key's location, or else we would not be able to sleep peacefully at night. Chu Yin and his girlfriend did not care whether the middle-aged man was framed or not. They did not care about the torture and pain they would put the man through. They only cared about themselves. Me, Big Head, and the couple, the four of us have voted us. The majority wins, so that is what we shall do. Dr. Lee carefully put the letter of commitment away. He, Big Head, and Chu Yin slowly surrounded the middle-aged man. The latter knew that someone wanted him to die on the stake as the scapegoat. Listen to me. I am really not related to the landlord's death. If you do not believe me, you can go and ask Wu Yu. The boy knows who the real killer is. He has seen people wandering outside the landlord's room at midnight. The middle-aged man was truly desperate. 
he knew how unhinged these tenants were. Once he was strapped to the bed, even if he was not the killer, he would be tortured until he died. Wiyu has a habit of lying to get the adult's attention. That is what you told us yourself. Why did you suddenly change your story? I realize that you are as big of a liar as that boy, but no worry, in a minute, we will get you to speak the truth. Dr. Lee took one step forward. He did not need the man to tell the truth, he only needed the middle-aged man to say the things that he wanted to hear. If the middle-aged refused to do so, he would be slowly tortured until he surrendered. Why are you pushing this on me? The middle-aged man's eyes wandered between Dr. Lee and Big Head. It was Big Head who found the teeth and you who found the letter of commitment. His eyes suddenly sharpened, and the middle-aged man shouted, It is you two who are framing me. Big Head has been your patient since he was young. He listens to your every word. You two are the real killers of the landlord. The middle-aged man shouted from the core of his heart. He turned to Chin Gu and Wen Qing, who had not stated their stance. You have to believe me. I am telling the truth. These two are the real murderers. At that moment, Chin Gu and Wen Qing were the middle-aged man's only hope. He had forgotten not too long ago, he was the one who had been giving Chin Gu all sorts of problem. I personally want to believe you, but with so much damning evidence, I'd suggest you stop resisting. Chen Gu raised his head. His words became the last straw that broke the middle-aged man. Ever since Chu Gui was discovered, you have been affecting my train of thought. Can you tell me honestly why you have been trying to derail my thoughts? Stop wasting time. We'd better apprehend him. Dr. Lee and Big Head pounced at the middle-aged man at the same time. The latter struggled literally for his life. You will all regret this. You will all be killed by the real murderer. Being strapped to the bed equaled death. It was not safe inside the building anymore. After the man shook Big Head and Dr. Lee off, he did something that no one expected. He rushed to the living room window and whipped it open. Just as he prepared to jump, the shape of a jaw materialized from the black fog. Ah! The middle-aged wailed for mercy. Fresh blood splashed on the windowsill. The mouth crunched and snapped his neck. The black fog pulsed and moments later, the middle-aged man disappeared into the fog. The rest of the tenants were frozen inside the room. What was that? Chin Gu had in Yang vision, so he had the best sight, but even so, he failed to see the thing clearly. Is there a man-eating monster inside the black fog? Chapter 1085 The Lonely Island of Humanity An unknown monster hid inside the black fog, but probably due to the limitation of the rules behind the door, the fog did not spread into the apartment, so the tenants were relatively safe as long as they stayed inside the building. The space outside of the apartment appeared to be a completely different world in contrast to the safety of the space inside the apartment. Their entire lives were within the apartment, as if something bad would happen to them once they tried to leave the apartment. Dr. Lee walked over to close the window like the tragedy that had just happened before their eyes was not registered in his mind. He did not appear to even notice the blood stains that still lingered on the windowsill. Only the landlord is free to leave the building. If any tenant wishes to leave at night, they have to be accompanied by the landlord. Dr. Lee looked at the thick black fog outside the window. He must have been feeling extremely guilty to be desperate enough to break the rules and leave through the window. What Dr. Lee said attracted Chin Ji's attention. This place was far stranger and more dangerous than he had previously thought. As Dr. Lee had said, if one needed the landlord's accompaniment to leave the building at night, then what would happen after the landlord died? What if the space was stuck in nighttime forever? What if this was just a recurring nightmare that would never welcome the first ray of dawn? After all, many worlds behind the door stopped at a specific moment in time because it was that period in time that caused the mark of despair within the door pusher. We have already confirmed the landlord's murderer. Now we only need to focus our attention on capturing the killer who murdered Chu Gue, and then we can call it a day. Dr. Lee's words were cold and calm, carrying an undercurrent of threat. 
he seemed to be treating the whole building as his hunting field. Now that a new hunter had entered his territory, it was his natural reaction to find this trespasser and then deal with them. I suggest we search this place further. If he is really the killer that killed the landlord, there must be other clues inside his house. For example, the spare keys that had been taken from the landlord's home. Chuin could not care less about the lives of other people. He only wanted the key to his own home. From his perspective, that was the only safe place within the whole building. If the spare key was not recovered, it meant that even his only sanctuary was not as safe as he thought. How would one expect him to sleep peacefully at night? Air. Xiao Sun appeared to have something to say. He looked at the people around him before his eyes landed on the blood stain on the windowsill. Are we being a bit too brash with our speculation? We determined the man as the murderer through a letter and some teeth, huh? Plus, I just feel that there is something not so right about this. I went into the bathroom before, and I also looked down the drain, but at the time. We only wanted him to tell us the truth. It was the man who made his own choice. He had a guilty conscience, so he chose to run. Dr. Lee glanced at Xiao Sun before his eyes quickly flitted away to address Jin Go. What do you think? Of everyone there, the only person that Dr. Lee could not read was Chen Go. He picked up an uncomfortable feeling from Chen Go. It was like he had encountered a kindred spirit. He knew that Chen Go was an extremely dangerous person. That thought had occurred to Dr. Lee when he first laid eyes on Chen Go. I agree with your opinion. The most important thing that we need to do now is focus on our capture of Chu Gui's murderer. All of us here have perfect alibis, so the murderer must be someone other than ourselves. If we start to question ourselves, it will only benefit the true murderer. Everything was falling into place according to Chen Ji's plan. He was making use of these small group of tenants to go investigate the other tenants inside the apartment. When the latter's secret was at the threat of being exposed, they would naturally turn hostile against each other. When they were busy attacking each other, things would slowly turn for the better for Chen Gu. When the number of tenants lowered to a certain amount, Chen Gu would expose his own fangs. Chen Gu held the same opinion as Dr. Li, they both believed that they would end up as the final victor. The difference between them was that Chen Gu knew that Chu Gui's killer was an outsider, but Dr. Li had no clue about anything that happened outside the building. One of them was constricted by the rules behind the door, and the other was setting up the trap using a combination of the knowledge from both inside and outside the door. This imbalance in information had already decided Dr. Lee's defeat from the very beginning. On the surface, everyone appeared to be peaceful and cooperative. But in reality, everyone was hiding a secret, with the only exception being Xiao Sunday. This naive and honest young man was still playing his detective game. He wanted to find the truth and was indeed trying his best to do so. He did not understand that truth could be found only when the sun was shining. When night fell and he was surrounded by crazed criminals, no one could care less about the truth. The thing that everyone focused on was how survive on their own. The group failed to find the landlord's spare keys in his room. They turned his room upside down but came up with nothing. In the end, they had no choice but to give up. After leaving the middle-aged man's room, they searched every room one by one, starting from the third floor. If the tenants refused to open the door, they would try their best to break the door down to gain entry. Many dirty corruptions were hidden inside the building. Years of darkness were spliced open by a sharp knife that was even darker. A cross-dressing maniac, extramarital affairs, crimes of passion, fugitives in hiding, a mental patient. Every single door was home to many twisted souls. They guarded their dirtiest secrets with their lives. As Chin Ji's group pushed further, they slowly shed their human skin to reveal the monsters that they were. Chin Gu saw the bottom line of humanity in the world behind Xiang Wan's door. These monsters were hiding among regular people. Perhaps he had even brushed past them every day on his way to school in the past. As they moved from the third floor to the eighth floor, in the name of searching for the murderer, 
Chin Ji's group was met with great resistance. When their secrets were exposed, many of the twisted tenants resorted to the most extreme method to resist. Most of them did not care about the murders, they only wanted to safeguard their own secret. Dr. Lee himself did not expect such resistance. During the process of investigation, Big Head was stabbed by one of the hiding fugitives, and the doctor himself suffered from light injuries. A trapped beast was a dangerous beast. To prevent their human disguise from being peeled away, these tenants had used everything that they had at their disposal. Some used flowery words to trick and misdirect, others used brute force to chase them away, some wanted to lie to escape the investigation, some even wanted to kill everyone prevent so that their own secret would not be exposed. Of the whole group, other than Wen Qing and Granny Li, who stayed at the back of the group, only Chen Gu remained uninjured. He stood to observe detachedly. His yin yang vision was trained on the darker side of humanity being exposed. They soon arrived at the ninth floor, where the landlord's room was. They gathered at the door to room 901 again. The murderer was not found, the spare keys that belonged to the landlord were still missing, and everyone looked worse for wear. When the front door is open, I swear to move away from this place. Xiao Sun's face was pale and devoid of color. His view of the world was inverted within one single night. The scary and gory scenes that he had encountered in the past hour were more intense and numerous than the gory scenes that he had seen from horror movies in the past 20 years of his life. The high intensity and high frequency trauma left a deep scar in him. He seemed to have gained a new type of phobia, the phobia of opening doors. He lacked the courage to open any more doors. If the keys are not found, the lock on the front door cannot be opened, none of us will be able to leave. Chen Go held his backpack in one hand. He had been reserving his energy. He kept calling the names of his employees, and he did nothing beyond that. But we have already searched most of the rooms. There are so many keys. What could the killer that murdered the landlord have done with them? Chu Yin and his girlfriend were given quite a fright as well. Compared to the other monsters that were exposed that night, they were only on the level of a beginner. We have been to most of the room, but there is a portion of the rooms in this building that we have not been to. It was about time to face the music. Chen Gu was in very good condition. After all, all he had done so far was follow along with everyone else. You mean the other rooms below the third floor? Chuin nodded. He could only place his hope on the first and second floor. No, I mean our own rooms. The rooms of the people among us. When Chinga said that, Dr. Lee and Big Head's expressions changed instantly. The murderer knew that it would be dangerous to carry the evidence with them, so there is a high chance they would plant the evidence on each of us. For example, they might have placed some unimportant evidence inside our homes. What Chinga described was exactly what Dr. Lee and Big Head had done to the middle-aged man. Of the tenants inside the building, some were dead, others were injured, and the remaining ones were tied up and detained. They had lost the power to resist. Chen Gu did not need to be afraid around them anymore. Many criminals and monsters lived inside this building. If they ganged up, Chen Gu, whose physical condition was not at its best, would not be their match, but their own selfishness and darkness had provided Chen Gu with an opportunity. It allowed Chen Gu to find a path that practically should not exist within the gap. Dr. Li was lightly injured, Big Head was seriously injured, Auntie Ding was hiding in her own room, and Chu Yin was too selfish and shameless to help others, so the only real threat to Chen Gu at this moment was Dr. Li, laying the cards on the table had become one of the best choices for Chen Gu. But he still had not torn down the walls between him and the tenants. After all, if he could stand and watch as the tenants bit into each other, why should he even lift a finger? If a normal person entered a building such as this, the first thing they would consider was how to safeguard themselves and then look for the keys through various clues, escaping from the building as soon as possible. That was how most horror games on the market would have set up the plot. But Chen Ji's method was completely different. He wanted to kill all the monsters and creeps inside the building. 
since everyone had lost the ability to resist, even if he did not escape from the building, in a way, he had gained victory. The few of us are not the murderers, but your suspicion is valid. We should check each of our homes to be sure. If we find anything in our houses, we should share them with the rest. Dr. Lee's eyes were still sharp, but fatigue had started to appear on his face. The water at this building ran too deep. Many of the tenants even managed to surprise him with the depravity of their secrets. The killer is very cunning, and they might do what you suggested. We must be careful not to fall for it and remember to have trust in each other, no matter what. Dr. Lee and Big Head knew full well that even though they had killed the landlord, they were not responsible for Chu Gui's death. There was a real unknown murderer that was lurking inside the building. That was why they had chosen to cooperate with Chen Ji's investigation. They had killed the landlord and were in possession of all the spare keys, but the murderer could enter other people's rooms freely through the window. This was a very big hidden threat to them. What if the secret in their own rooms was found out by this mysterious third party? To protect their darkest side, humans would do many things, and Chen Ge made use of this psychology to slowly edge this group of crazy people into the darkness of the abyss. We should check the ninth and tenth floor first. If we fail to find anything here, we shall start by investigating our own homes, we have to take care of our own safety. Chen Ji's initial plan was to borrow the tenant's power to deal with the monster from the cursed hospital, but he did not expect the monster to be so clever. They did not present him with a chance at all. By then, almost all the tenants had been incapacitated already, but the monster from the cursed hospital still had not shown themselves. Without the key, Chen Ji's group had to use a lot of energy to break down the doors. After a long effort, they finally got all the rooms on the ninth floor to open. The six rooms on the ninth floor had the same interior design and furniture placement. From appearance alone, it appeared like the same room had been copied six different times. Why would the landlord have six completely identical rooms made on this floor? The appearance might be the same, but the inside might not be. Chen Ji's memory was very good. He remembered the details in room 901. After some comparison, he noticed many problems. One of the rooms had a mirror in the bathroom that could be removed, and there is a hidden compartment behind it. The other had the wall behind the fridge hollowed out. Some had a hidden space under the bed. It was large enough to hide a person. But why would the landlord do something like that? He is the only occupant of the rooms on the ninth floor, isn't he? Why would he do these adjustments to all of the six rooms? Xiao Sun still had not realized the scary details in the observation that Chen Ge proffered. Perhaps it was to observe someone and slowly torture them to the edge of madness. How do you come to that conclusion? Have you guys noticed that all of the windows in all the rooms on the ninth floor are sealed up by cement? The whole room is an isolated space, and there is no way to escape other than through the front door. Chen Gu stood next to the window. This makes these rooms perfect prisons. Assuming you stayed in one of the rooms here, after you were knocked out and transported to another similar-looking room, would you even realize that you'd been moved? But why would someone do something like that? Chen Gu pointed at the bed and the mirror in the bedroom that had been tempered with. Imagine a person woke up in the middle of the night. He went to the toilet, and when he walked past the mirror, he realized that the reflection that looked at him was not his. Would he be afraid? The culprit wanted to force his prisoner to go mad? It goes far deeper than that. Have you noticed there are unlabeled medicine bottles littered all over the six rooms? Chingu initially did not want to waste too much time on the landlord since he was already dead, but he was surprised that the landlord himself was hiding such a big secret. These bottles are the clues? Xiao Sun picked up one of the bottles and opened it to look. If the imprisoned person took the drug and went to sleep, when he woke up and realized that everything had returned to normal, wouldn't he be given the impression that he was mentally ill? Wouldn't that increase his reliance on these drugs? At this point, Chen Gu turned to look at the coffee table and the dining table. Basically, all six rooms had these unlabeled bottles placed everywhere. 
This is a kind of powerful mental suggestion, and the purpose is for the prisoner to get hooked on them. The person might initially suspect the use of these drugs, but as the situation around him became stranger and stranger, he would slowly accept the fact that the drugs were useful for his condition. And the cruelest thing was that these drugs were not helping him at all. If anything, they were the source of his problem. They were the reason he was slowly spiraling down a rabbit hole of madness. Chinga went and collected a large number of unlabeled medicine bottles from all six rooms. None of them were named. Dr. Lee, can you identify them? Are they all the same kind of drug? Some appear to be common sleeping pills, but I can't identify the others. They should be used for mental illness treatment. I cannot be sure. Only you can help us identify these drugs, but since even you can't be sure, this clue is not that important to us. Chen Gu was about to put the bottles away when Wen Qing, who had not said a word, poked him on his back. Chen Gu definitely noticed that, so he said, there should be other clues hidden in these six rooms. Why don't we split up to look for them? If there's nothing else, we will meet up at the tenth floor. After everyone filed away, Wen Qing finally spoke. Chen Gu, these are drugs for manic psychosis. I have bought them many times for Xiang Wan. Before the landlord moved away from Jin Hua Apartments, he had a lot of similar drugs at his place as well. Wait a minute, so these drugs belong to the landlord? Yes. When he first saw the drugs, Chen Gu had come up with two speculations. First, the drugs belonged to Dr. Li. After all, he was a doctor and he was related to the landlord's death. But the timeline did not match up. One would need a lot of planning to build six near-identical rooms on the same floor. The second speculation was that the drugs belonged to the landlord, and the B** starred who had been imprisoning others was the landlord himself. He was the one who built the six mirroring rooms, and the intention was to push a person mad. In your mind, what kind of person is the landlord? The landlord is the old CEO for Jean Wah Company. He was an unlucky old man. His whole family died in a fire, and after that, it was like something switched off in him. However, he would brighten up around children, and he was one of the few people who did not hate Xiong Wan. So, you have a good impression of him. When I was very busy, he would offer to help me look after Xiong Wan. You had a person with a clinical manic disorder look after your son? Even Chen Gu was surprised by that revelation. The drugs were for the landlord's son. His youngest son suffered from this illness. He was not able to shake it off. His illness came and went, and he's been using this drug since as far back as I can remember. Do you believe everything the man tells you? The chance of inheritance for mental illness is as high as 12 to 15 percent within family members. That is a number far higher than a normal person. Chinga really did learn a lot from his time with Dr. Gao. Through the psychiatrist, he had learned many things related to psychology. But the old man has always been kind. He is friendly with everyone. Everyone who knows him respects him sincerely. You can still believe something like that after what we have been through tonight? The kinder they are on the surface, the darker the secret they are hiding. Chinga suddenly became urgent with his words. Did you let him look after Xiang Wan often? Not really that often. It only happened once or twice. Color drained from Wen Qing's face. Suddenly, a very horrible realization dawned on her. Chinga. Are you trying to say that these six similar rooms were specifically built to imprison Xiang Wan? I cannot tell for sure, but there is one thing that I have understood. Chen Gu stood at the corner and lowered his voice. The world behind the door is built according to the memory of the door pusher. When I first got here, I was confused. How did Xiang Wan manage to learn the secrets of all these tenants? Initially, I thought it was because Xiang Wan had the exceptional ability to see through one's disguise and into a person's heart. But now, after hearing what you've said, I know the truth is much crueler than I predicted. The truth? Do you remember the television set in the bathroom and the convoluted wiring behind it? I do. 
Lin Qing had a very bad feeling about this. The landlord had been spying on the tenants' lives with it. He saw the ugliest and darkest side of humanity, and he could have shared that experience with Xiang Wan, who was as pure as a sheet of white paper. Before everyone else, he told him how beautiful the world was, how bright the flowers were, and how blue the sky was, but behind closed doors, he kept feeding Xiang Wan this information. The things shown on the television are the real appearance of the world that he lives in. Chen Gu voiced his own speculation. He tried to make it sound as comforting as he could, but it still almost caused Wen Qing to faint. She had not dared imagine that Xiang Yuan was in the state that he was now due to her own negligence and trust in the landlord. Chapter 1086 My patients respect me patting Wen Qing lightly on her shoulder, Chen Gu whispered softly, pull yourself together. Now is not yet the time for regret and sadness. It took Wen Qing a long time before she slowly returned to normal. She took a few deep breaths and gave Chen Gu some affirmative nods. After this, we will go to the tenth floor. I believe then we will find out what the landlord's real secret is. After everything is revealed, it will be about time we leave this building. Xiang Yuan and the monster from the cursed hospital had all disappeared. Chen Gu did not wish to stay there for too long. He was worried that he might miss out on some things. Ten minutes later, the group met at the entrance to the stairwell that connected the ninth and tenth floors. They had searched through all six rooms but come up with nothing. The last secret of this apartment should be hidden on the tenth floor. We should be ready. Who knows what we'll face? When Chinga said that, his eyes scanned over Dr. Lee and Big Head. Dr. Lee and Big Head carried black, opaque bags that contained lockpicking items. The two of them stood close together. Their eyes darted about, and they did not dare look Chen Gu in the eye. They seemed to have formulated a plan of their own behind Chen Ji's back. Are they finally going to make their move? As if he did not notice anything, Chen Ji's tone and expression did not change much. However, he no longer walked at the front of the group and made sure that Dr. Lee and Big Head always stayed in his sight. He walked together with Xiao Sun and Wen Qing. As they went up the stairs, Chen Gu even purposely held back Chu Ying to ask him some unimportant questions. During the temporarily break, these few tenants were supposed to search different rooms on the ninth floor, but when they returned, Dr. Lee and Big Head returned alongside Chu Ying and his wife. These four's patients toward Chen Gu appeared to have reached its limit. When they came to the tenth floor, the group did not take that long to pry open the door to room 1006. They had gotten quite good at this after repeating it so many times that night. After the front door fell open, a light scent of decay floated out from inside the room. It smelled like something had been out in the open for too long and had gotten spoilt. Normally, only the landlord will come to this floor. The tenth floor is not open for tenants. Chu Yin held his nose. For Chin Gu, this was no smellier than the other scents in the apartment. The tenants, though, found the smell revolting. Strangely enough, the tenants did not seem to be able to smell the actual stench that Chin Gu found revolting. The furnishing of room 1006 was at the bare minimum. The floor was filled with puddles of water and dirty stains. Following that trail of the stench, the group entered the room. They noticed that other than a ton of big freezers, there was basically nothing else inside room 1006. There won't be a dead body kept inside a freezer, will there? Wen Qing tried to hide behind Chen Gu but was pulled out to stand before him. Do not wander away from my sight. Even though dead bodies are scary, at least you know for sure that they pose no threat to you. I cannot say the same for the others in our company. Chen Gu walked to open a random freezer. It was filled to the brim with rotten vegetables and meat and a big bucket of ice. Why did the landlord need to prepare so many food items? The group split up to open the rest of the freezers. There was nothing scary. The first few freezers were all stocked with food. The last freezer had various rotten meat and produce littered around it. Inside the freezer were several bags of medicine. Chinga took one of the bags out from the freezer. 
He opened one of them, took out a bottle, and studied it closer. This kind of drugs will spoil easily after being exposed to the freezing agent inside the freezer. The medicinal effect will be greatly affected. The landlord possesses a lot of these medicine bottles, so it means that he knew this medicine very well. He would not have made the rookie mistake of using the freezer to store them. Other than that, take a look at the meat that's littered around this freezer. The person who did this probably just wanted to find a space to deposit these extra drugs. After the landlord died, it must be the killer who possesses the keys. Do you mean that the killer has been to this place already? Dr. Leek carried a black, opaque bag and sidled up to Chen Gu. I did not say that. Chen Gu gave Dr. Lee a side glance. By the way, you have such a lucrative career, and compared to the rest of the society, a doctor's income should be quite high. Why would you stay in a place like this? I have gotten used to living here, Dr. Lee replied lightly. What is it that you have gotten used to? The dirtiness, the horrid nature of the building, or the lack of management around this place? I have gotten used to the air here. I feel comfortable living here, and I am too lazy to find a new place to move to. Dr. Leek closed the freezer. Come on, let's go to the next room, to take a look. He held the black bag away from Chen Gu, but purposely walked past the latter. Chen Gu carried his backpack, but his eyes did not stay on Dr. Lee. Instead, he tilted his head to study Chu Yin, who looked surprisingly nervous. And what are you looking at? Nothing. Chu Yin held his hand over his stomach. He then followed Dr. Lee and Big Head out of the room. Xiao Sun was about to follow them, but he was given a tug by Chen Gu. I want to ask you a question. Go ahead. Xiao Sun was still analyzing who the killer was. His brows were creased in deep contemplation. When the electrician was killed, did you hear something that he said before he died? I did not hear much, but I have a feeling the electrician seemed to know Auntie Ding and Dr. Ding. They appeared to share a relationship that is deeper than mere neighbors. Xiao Sun was honestly quite an observant young man, but unfortunately, his way of thinking was too narrow. They had a close relationship, but Auntie Ding and Dr. Lee insisted on killing him. Why do you think that's the case? Because they wanted to silence him? Indeed. The electrician is a crazy man that likes to torture those weaker than him, Auntie Ding is a human trafficker that is mentally ill, but the biggest problem here is Dr. Lee because he is the one who is the mastermind behind everything. Chinga suddenly re revealed all the information. It required some time for the poor young man to digest. When did you find out about all this, and why did you only tell me about them now? What is it that you are up to? He had been following the real killers, to search for the killer. They had gone through the entire building. Just the thought of it caused Xiao Sun to shiver. Now he truly had trust issues. He was not going to trust anyone anymore. Everyone has their own secret, and you are no exception, but some people's secrets will not harm others, while other people's secrets are built on the basis of harming other people. Chen Gu patted Xiao Sun lightly on his shoulder. Humanity is the most complicated concept in the world. As an individual with your own unique ability to think and freedom to choose, I am not going to force you into making any decision, but I hope that you will sincerely consider what you should do next. Xiao Sun's appearance behind Xiang Yuan's world behind the door proved that there was something wrong with the young man, but he was not assimilated by the darkness of the world. The darkness did not corrupt him. It was probably due to his incorruptibility that he had mysteriously disappeared outside the door. Chen Gu believed that Xiao Sun was someone that he could have on his side, so along the way, he had been observing Xiao Sunday. It was difficult to gain Chen Ji's confidence behind the door because Chen Gu was someone who had difficulty trusting others in nature, but there was something good about him, and that was once he had truly placed his trust in someone, the trust would not be so easily shaken. No matter what happens next, the thing that you need to do is make sure that you protect yourself and try not to say things that will make yourself a target anymore. Before this, Xiao Sun was just a stranger to Chen Gu. The latter did not mind whether Xiao Sun lived or died. 
At most, he would only come to his rescue verbally if needed. But now that Chen Gu wanted Xiao Sun as a partner, he naturally needed to warn Xiao Sun from running his mouth and getting himself into trouble. After hearing what Chen Gu had to say, Xiao Sun nodded subconsciously even though he still looked as befuddled as ever. Suddenly, Big Head's scream came from the corridor. Chen Gu walked out from room 1006 and saw Big Head sitting in the corridor. He had his hands covering his stomach, and blood was leaking out through his bandage. Big Head's injury was deteriorating. Dr. Lee had suggested that he go back to his room to rest, but Big Head had refused to leave Dr. Lee's side as if he knew what was about to happen. He wanted to stay to help Dr. Lee as much as he could. Soon, the other rooms on the tenth floor were all pushed open. They did not find anything useful from room 1006 to room 1002. They walked all the way to room 1001, the room that was at the end of the corridor on the top floor of this apartment building. Before the front door was even completely open, Chin Ji's group heard a voice coming from inside the room. It sounded like a boy was crying. Is there someone inside the room? Chen Gu did not mind the crying that much. Anything could have happened behind the door. But once he noticed the shock on Dr. Lee's face, he slowly became suspicious of this development. Dr. Lee, who was the landlord's real killer, did not expect the crying to come from the room. This meant that something had changed since the last time he was there. They pushed the front door completely open, and the group saw what was inside the room. Their expressions all shifted. The floor and walls of room 1001 were painted with open eyes. There was no furniture in the living room. Instead, there were several television sets of varying sizes. The television sets were stacked on top of each other. The screen of the set right in the middle was on. The image was that of a boy sitting in front of more than ten televisions. His face was pale, and his pupils shook as he looked at the images on screen with clear anxiety on his face. Xiang Wan When she saw the boy on the screen, Wen Qing was unable to control herself and shouted out the boy's name. Her own child had been exposed to such a nightmarish experience. Wen Qing stood at the door and her eyes reddened immediately. Her shoulders were shaking from guilt and remorse. She did not dare look at the television, but she could not stop her eyes from wandering toward the screen. The boy on the screen was struggling within himself. Sometimes, the expression on his face was normal, but sometimes, it was turned into a horrible grimace, like a monster. The keys had already been taken away by the killer, but the expression on Dr. Lee's face was one of surprise. Obviously, he had no idea who had switched the television on. Naturally, that still did not clear him of the suspicion. It merely meant that the person who switched on the television could freely enter this room without the need of the landlord's key. Instantly, Xiang Wan's image appeared in Chen Ji's mind. The door pusher is Xiang Wan. This is his world. Is he leading us to see the truth? The group froze at the front door. Just as they were considering whether to walk into the room, Xiang Nuan inside the screen suddenly lifted his head. It was as if the boy was looking at those gathered at the door through the television screen. Leave. A very soft voice called out from inside the television. Then, all the screens of the rest of the televisions were switched on at once. The images started to play. The middle-aged man in room 302 caressed a fresh dead body beside him as he worked on the joint of his beloved mannequin. A 50-year-old man in room 205 slammed Granny Lee's black and white photo onto the ground. He grabbed the sacrificial food on the altar and threw it at Granny Lee, and then he lunged at Granny Lee to strangle her. The man in room 701 used the burning end of a cigarette to sear away his fingerprints. He stood next to the mirror while waving a knife. The picture of his warrant was plastered on the mirror. The young woman in room 702 sat before the computer. She was bathed in blood. Behind her lay the dead body of a middle-aged man. She appeared to be searching the internet for information on how to deal with large trash. In room 505, a man put on makeup and then dressed himself up in his wife's clothes. 
He held up his wife's picture and struck the same pose as his wife, who was captured in time. In the kitchen of room 602, a man washed his hands again and again. He used various tools and rubbed until the skin of his hands were bleeding. The water was running red, but he still could not stop himself from scrubbing his hands. In room 301, Wiyu had his eyes and ears covered by an adult whose face could not be seen. His parents, who lay in a pool of blood, were dragged out of the living room by the other tenants of the building. Reels of uncomfortable videos played on the screens. Xiang Nuan was surrounded in the middle. His expression became more and more unhinged. He waved his hands wildly about before he collapsed to the ground and shoveled the pills that were on the ground into his mouth. After some time, all the screens started to flicker. As Xiang Nuan's body collapsed with a thud to the ground, all the images disappeared at the same time. The room sank into silence, the only sound that remained was when Qing's remorseful sobbing that echoed around the room. The images on the screen were very real, and because they were real, they were scary. So, is that the final truth behind this building? Xiao Sun felt like he was about to go crazy soon. You're wrong. That is only just a part of the truth. Chin Gu turned to Dr. Li, why didn't the videos relating to you, Big Head, Auntie Ding, and the electrician show up earlier? What's so strange about that? Doesn't that prove that we are normal, innocent people? Big Head countered to defend himself. Stop lying to yourself. You know full well what the electrician has done. The real reason you killed him was to protect yourself. Chin Gu pulled out the zipper of his backpack. It was the four of you who ganged up together to kill the landlord. The atmosphere in room 1001 froze. After a long time, Dr. Lee's cold face suddenly surfaced with a thrilling smile. You're not wrong. The landlord saw our secret, so he had to die. He was killed by the four of us. Those teeth and the letter were our things, and we planted them on the man. You are very clever, but it is too late now. You will not find any allies in this building anymore. Seeing the scary smile on Dr. Lee's face, Chin Gu also responded with a smile. However, his smile was like a blazing sun, it was radiating with warmth. Yet, in the circumstance, his smile appeared even more absurd and out of place. Do you know why I only understood it now? After hearing what Chin Gu had to say, both Big Head and Dr. Lee laughed. The two of them waved at Chu Yin. The three of them surrounded Chin Gu from all sides. Actually, I have been lying from the beginning. I am no pediatrician, and Big Head is not my patient. Dr. Lee pulled back his sleeves to reveal the horrifying needle holes and scars that ran up his arms. We are both mental patients, serious mental cases who are unable to control ourselves. They searched inside the black bag. The bags not only contained lockpicking tools but also two sharp knives. When we were coming up the stairs, I wanted to take this out several times, but I reined myself in every time, Dr. Lee said as he brandished the knife. In his eyes, Chin Go probably did not even qualify as a human. The doctor looked at Chin Go like a butcher would look at a cow waiting to be slaughtered. I always felt this place was too noisy and crowded. Finally, it has quieted down, and I can officially take over as the new landlord. That sure is a beautiful dream you have. Chin Go also reached his hand into his backpack. Actually, two can play at this game. I am no psychiatrist. In fact, the patients that I have treated refer to me as Dr. Skullcracker. His fingers clamped around the handle that was shaped like a human spine. When Chin Gu said that last word, he lunged forward. He swung the hammer heavily on Chu Yin's body. Chu Yin crumbled to the ground as he coughed out mouthfuls of blood. His expression was frozen in disbelief. His mind was still processing the development, but before he could even say a word, his chest had already caved in. Why me? His body lost its mobility. Chuin looked like he was not long for this world. One left, two to go. Chen Gu stood at the door. The sharp edges of the hammer ground against the wall, creating a harrowing sound. 
Chapter 1087, Does It Not Look Like a Black Sea Chingu Moved Too Fast for Them to Handle? Initially, the three predators had surrounded him, and they had still been threatening him, but the next moment, one of them had collapsed to the ground already. In the blink of an eye, the three hunters had dwindled to two, and the remaining two were injured to various degrees. Dr. Lee and Big Head were originally standing on both sides, trying to corner Chin Go. But after they saw Chuin collapse, they moved subconsciously closer to one another. Two were still better than one supposedly. Holding the sharp knives, the twisted expressions on their faces froze. Their eye wandered between their knives and Chin Ji's hammer. In terms of professionalism, the man before them was like a madman that had no cure anymore, and the two of them were at most people with some mental illness. They were all not right in the head, but there was a difference in essence. Even in movies, one would rarely encounter a character who would carry this kind of horrible-looking hammer at all times. I am sure you too are tired from all the running in one night already. It is time for you to take your well-deserved rest, try not to do any immoral things in your next life. Chin Good dragged the hammer as he walked toward Dr. Lee and Big Head. The duo's eyes twitched. Looking at the heavy blood stains on the head of the hammer, their faces could not have been paler. Chin Gu stood strategically at the door to block any possible escape. Both Big Head and Dr. Lee knew that Chin Gu would not have allowed them the chance to escape anyway, so the only chance they had at survival was fighting back as much as they could. All along, they had thought they had the upper hand, but only then did they realize that it was not Chin Gu who was being led step by step into a trap, it was them. Narrowing his eyes, Chin Gu did not waste any time and charged forward with Dr. Skullcracker's hammer at Dr. Lee. Big Head's stomach was injured, so he would not be able to run. Even if he chose to escape on his own, Chin Gu was confident that he would be able to catch up to an injured man. Therefore, Chin Ji's target was clear from the beginning. He had his eyes locked on Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee, who had a crazy grimace and unhinged personality, gripped the knife in his hand. He had never encountered this situation before. Normally, he was the one in Chin Ji's position. He was the one hunting others. Bang! Dr. Lee tried his best to put up a fight, but the tip of the knife barely had the chance to graze Chin Gu. Chin Gu was masterful at using the one-meter-long hammer. After all, he had gotten a lot of practice. With Dr. Lee and Big Head collapsing, Chin Gu turned his attention to Chu Yin's girlfriend. He was not going to let any possible threats fester in his presence. He tied the few immobilized individuals with the electric wires that could be found in the room. When he was fine, he finally gave a sigh of relief. Dragging the hammer with one hand, Chin Ji's chest rose and fell unevenly. My physique has deteriorated greatly. Even though I have been saving my energy since I entered the door, I am already in such tired state after swinging the hammer a few times. Chin Gu walked past the unconscious Dr. Li and Big Head and turned toward Xiao Sun and Wen Qing, who were stunned beyond words. All that I said earlier was merely to trick them. Facing such crazed murderers, I was afraid for my own safety too. But I know that when facing these people, you need to act tougher and more vicious than them to gain the upper hand. Dragging the hammer that was had pieces of clothing and blood stains stuck to it, Chin Ji's expression was very natural like what he had just done was as simple as a walk through the park. I understand what you mean, but how do you explain the weapon that you have been hiding from us? Have you been keeping it inside your backpack all this time? Xiao Sun's voice was shaking. He felt like he had just been taken out of some dangerous situation to be put into another. It was like the night would never end. You mean this hammer? Chen Gu used the murder's clothes to wipe away the blood stain. Even though it looks scary, it is actually just a prop at a haunted house. A prop at a haunted house? Do you think we will believe something like that? What kind of haunted house would use such a dangerous weapon as a prop? The haunted house at Western Jiujiang's New Century Park. Chen Gu carefully wiped away the blood on Dr. Skullcracker's hammer. He then walked toward Wen Qing. It did not matter that much whether Xiao Sun trusted him or not, the key was Wen Qing. 
I have already told you about this before. You did, but I can't say that it's what I expected. Lin Qing's eyes were bulging. She had always had the impression that Chen Gu was a cultured man, he should be someone in the art industry or someone who earned his living using his brains. It was not until she heard Chu Yin's bones cracking that she realized how wrong she was. From the minute Chen Gu took out Dr. Skullcracker's hammer to the moment the four tenants collapsed in the room, it took less than a minute. This happened so fast that when Qing still had not found enough time to process what kind of motion or expression she should be using when facing Chen Gu. Reality and imagination will always have that degree of difference. There is no need to mind these details. You only need to know that I will not harm you, and I wish to bring Xiang Wan back to real life with you. Chen Gu blinded Wen Qing with a consoling smile. There was a unique presence about the man that allowed him to give off this presence of closeness to those around them. He would easily bring them into his confidence if he wanted to. You followed me into the door, it was me who dragged you in this mess. Honestly, I was quite scared and shocked by what you did, but don't worry, I have complete faith in you. After all, without you, I probably would have been butchered by this gang of people a long time ago much less have the opportunity to go look for Xiang Wan. After Wen Qing calmed down, she came to the realization that Chen Gu was the only trustworthy person in this world behind the door. What is the situation between you two? I can see that you two are not siblings as you claimed earlier. Are you pursuing her? Are you his boyfriend? Xiao Sun's eyes wandered between Wen Qing and Chen Gu. After hearing what he had to say, Wen Qing quickly tried to explain it, but Chen Gu turned to look back at his shadow. He stared at it for as long as a minute, and then he took out Zhang Ye's diary. There was nothing new added to it. So, was I right? You two aren't brother and sister, but a couple? Xiao Sun felt like he had hit the nail on the head again. Do you wish to tempt fate every time? Chen Gu placed the diary back into the backpack's inner compartment. He realized that there might be a reason behind Xiao Sun's mysterious disappearance in real life. From this moment onward, you'd better watch the words that come out from your mouth. The few of us are the only remaining members left of this group. If you attract danger that is beyond my capability to handle, then I will have to abandon you to deal with it yourself. While holding Dr. Skullcracker's hammer, Chinga had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Xiao Sunday. From then, he found out about Xiao Sun's secret. The main reason this university student moved into Jinghua residence was due to poverty. He was taken advantage of by the landlord. The landlord rented him the house for a very low price, the young man thought that he had scored a bargain, but from the very beginning, the landlord had treated him as nothing more than a target. The rent that he had given was not money, but his own life. Xiao Sun's story inspired Chen Ji's greatly. An idea appeared in his mind. If he managed to survive this final door, he could set up the scenario in his haunted house so that the visitors would live the life of Xiao Sun and see how long they could survive. After leaving room 1001, Chen Gu turned to look at the television sets placed in the living room. He thought back to Xiang Wan, who had shown up on the screen. The boy seemed to have said something to the group who had gathered at the door before they came in, leave. That was probably meant for Wen Qing. Closing the front door behind them, Chinga took the keys that he had found from Dr. Li and Big Head and led Wen Qing, Xiao Sun, and Granny Li downstairs. The corridors were awash with blood. The doors had been pried open by force. None of these doors were the one that Chen Gu was looking for but each of them was hiding their own version of despair and ugliness. When a person was pushed to the edge of the abyss, with a slight blow of the wind, they might take the path of no return. And the thing that pushed them over the edge could be an inconspicuous detail in their life, it could be a word from a random stranger, or it could have originated from their own memory. Chinggu used the key to open the door to Dr. Lee's house. Inside it, they found many human bone specimens, the ring of keys left behind by the landlord, and a few bottles of unknown medicine. Finally, we will be able to leave this place. Before they left, Chinggu took a detour to head to Auntie Ding's room. 
he delivered her the same judgment as Big Head and Dr. Lee. At the same time, he rescued the child that was trapped in her home. Under Auntie Ding's torture, the boy's cognitive ability was severely impaired. When asked, he could only answer that his name was Jia Fu. Chin Gu found a family picture on the boy, and the picture painted a scenario that caused Chin Ji's hair to stand on end. The brightly smiling Auntie Ding and Jia Fu stood in the middle of the family photo. Next to them was a row of wooden boxes, and the wooden boxes had pictures attached to them with children's name, Jia Lu, Jia An, Jia Mei. Jia Fu's legs had been amputated, so he could not leave with Chin Gu. In terms of how to deal with Jia Fu, Wen Qing and Xiao Sun had a split of opinion. Xiao Sun wanted to carry Jia Fu and leave while Wen Qing felt they should go and find Xiang Wan first before they come back to get Jia Fu. After all, Jia Fu could not move on his own, and he would only burden them. In the end, it was Chin Gu who made the final decision. He decided to take Jia Ming to Uncle Huang's place at the first floor. As they moved down the stairs, Chin Gu stopped at the third floor. He decided to go to room 301 to take a look. The boy known as Wu Yu was sitting in the living room, looking with interest at the paintings that were stuck to the window. Wu Yu, why don't you come with us? I will bring you to go and find your parents. There were not many good people in the apartment. The fact that Wu Yu could survive for so long was a miracle in and of itself. Even Chen Gu was surprised by this. Therefore, he wanted to bring Wu Yu with them, that way, at least they would have an extra pair of eyes. I will not go with any of you. To Chen Ji's surprise, Wu Yu denied him outright. Why? Haven't you been meaning to see your mother and father? Chen Gu was curious. The reason that he used to convince the boy to follow him was to bring him to find his parents, he did not think that the boy would reject him so easily and firmly without giving it much thought. On the day my parents left, the last thing that they told me was, no matter what, I am not to leave this house. They will soon return. Whenever a person comes to get me with the offer that they will take me to my parents, that person has to be lying to me. Wu Yu lifted his head. You are lying to me, right? Chen Gu was stumped. From Wu Yu's words, he discerned a deeper layer of meaning. When Wu Yu's parents were dragged out of their house, they probably knew that they would die. That was the only reason they would say something like that. After all, no one would be able to help Wu Yu find them anymore, so anyone who came to claim so had to be a liar. That was solid logic. There's plenty of food on the 10th floor and this apartment is now a lot safer. If you run into any trouble, go and find the old man that lives on the first floor. Chinga ruffled Wu Yu's head. This boy was clever beyond his years. Your parents are not wrong. They will return. Before they do, you have to take good care of yourself. Chen Gu turned to leave. Just as he was about to reach the second floor, Wu Yu's voice came from above them. Hey. What? I want to tell you something. Wu Yu was leaning against the door. His eyes were locked on Wen Qing. Xiang Yuan is lost. He also appears to be waiting for his family to come find him. What? The door of room 301 that had never closed was shut by Wu Yu, and the corridor sank into silence. Does the boy know something that he has not told us? Wen Qing was quite agitated. Perhaps he is friends with Xiang Wan. Xiao Sun, who was carrying Jia Fu, started to go into detective mode as per his habit. Give me a moment while I go and deal with this. Chen Gu carried his backpack and returned to the third floor. What are you planning to do? I will just ask him in person. Why is a boy of six or seven years old playing guess that question with me? I hate people who finish half of their stories the most in this world. He is just a child. Wu Yu was surprised to see Chen Gu again within 10 seconds since their last meeting. After some repeated questioning, Chen Gu finally got the information he wanted. The electrician was the first to discover the landlord's secret. The reason behind that was because Xiang Yuan had stuffed a videotape that he stole from the landlord's home into his pigeonhole. 
Xiang Wan left the building that night. But before he left, Wu Yu chanced a glance at Xiang Wan taking a trip to the rooftop. After giving thanks to Xiang Wan, Jin Gu carried the backpack and called after Wen Qin. The two of them rushed to the rooftop. This is it. The iron door on the tenth floor that led to the rooftop was locked. Chen Gu took some time looking through the ring of keys before he managed to locate the correct one. Stay far away from me. Once the door is open, the black fog from outside might rush in, and there are monsters hiding in that black fog. After Wen Qing stepped back, Chen Gu pushed open the iron door ever so slightly. The black fog outside was not as thick as he imagined, but the stench was as horrible as he remembered. Taking out the hammer, Chin Gu slowly pushed the iron door open. When he saw the whole world that opened before him, his eyes slowly widened. Jin Hua Apartment Block A was the tallest building in this neighborhood. So, standing on the rooftop, he could see the entire residential area. The black fog that stretched all the way to the horizon enveloped the twisted buildings. This was like a sea of blackness, and Jin Hua Apartment and Jiu Hong Apartment were like lone islands that were abandoned in the middle of this black sea. Giant shadows slithered through the fog. Chen Ge gulped. His hands that gripped the hammer were slick with sweat. So, this is the real world behind Xiang Wan's door. Xiang Wan's door was completely different from any of the doors that Chen Gu had been to before. It was not covered in red mist, but this black fog. Using his yin yang vision, Chen Gu could capture the flickering shadows that moved in the darkness. He was suddenly reminded of what happened when he conducted the nightmare mission at Jiang Yuan Apartments. When he reached on the rooftop blindfolded, he heard his own voice from 20 years ago. When he was about to be killed by the door, the younger version of Chen Gu said, If I am really forgotten in my nightmare one day, I will paint a window on that black sea and open all the doors in the red city so that all the eyes that have gotten used to the darkness will get a chance to see the light. I know what the red city is. Could the black sea refer to this endless wave of black fog? Looking at the dark sky, compared to the giant shadow in the fog, Chen Gu felt so minuscule. When Xiang Wan left, he came to the rooftop. If I assume that Wu Yu is not purposely trying to trick me, there should be clues left behind by Xiang Wan here. Chen Ge knew about the scary monsters hidden in the black fog. The memory of the sleazy middle-aged man being chomped by one of them was still fresh on Chen Ji's mind. I cannot miss any clues. Since I have already entered this door, I will eventually have to interact with the black fog. Taking a deep breath, Chen Gu carried his backpack, took out his hammer, and stepped carefully into the fog. Using his yin yang vision, Chen Gu started to search around the rooftop. It did not take long for him to find a heavily broken mud statuette. The statuette was poorly made, and it looked similar to the other mud statuettes that Chen Gu had encountered in real life, but unlike the others, this statuette had been beheaded. From the breaking point, it did not appear that the head had broken accidentally, but was forcibly yanked off by someone or something. Chen Ji's eyes wandered to the statuette's chest. Two words were carved there, Xiang Wan. This is Xiang Wan's mud statuette? Why would his own statuette appear behind his door? Was he the one who broke the statuette? Many questions bubbled up in his mind. Before he could give them much thought, harrowing wails drifted into his ears. A monster from the fog? Not daring to test his luck, Chen Gu grabbed the mud statuette, turned, and ran. Chapter 1088 White Rice, Chopsticks, Paper Dolls, Red Candle, Save Me. I am right here. Behind you. Save me. Bring me with you. Bring me away from this place. Help me. Underneath, the constant crying was the sound of a woman. Chin Ge felt that the voice of this woman sounded quite familiar. I believe I heard this voice in Liwan City. In any case, it was not the time to meet some old friends. Chin Ge swore not to turn his head around. He had no idea what was hiding inside the black fog, and the best way to face the unknown was first to find a safe place to observe it from afar and not walk right into it while putting one's life on the line. The voice came closer and closer, and Chen Gu walked faster and faster. 
However, the quicker Chinga moved, the more desperate and urgent the voice became. Just as he was about to reach the iron door, the woman's voice changed. All the words turned into screams, and they shot at Chin Ji's body like sharp arrows shooting through the black fog. Get out of the way. Chin Gu threw caution to the wind and ran as fast as he could. The moment he stepped into the building, the scary voice disappeared without a trace. Chen Gu turned back to look. Everything had returned to normal inside the black fog, it was as if he had imagined everything that had happened to him earlier. Wen Qing, did you hear the voice of a woman when you were standing inside the building? I do not think so. Wen Qing shook her head. I merely saw your body disappear into the black fog. Your movement became very difficult to follow. However, there appeared to be something following behind you that was standing on their toes. I shouted very loudly to warn you, but you did not react at all. This black fog appears to be more dangerous than the Red City. The city will cause one to go insane with despair, but this sea of blackness can make one lose oneself fully and completely. Looking at the shadows lurking in the darkness, Chen Gu held his hand over his heart. For some reason, he felt like he had experienced this some time ago. This was not his first encounter with the Black Sea. Makes one lose oneself? Is that what happened to Xiang Wan? He has lost his way in this black fog? Wen Qing's eyes were overflowing with worry. As long as he still has not left this residential area, we have a chance of finding him. Chen Gu shut the door that led to the roof and shoved the headless mud statuette into his coat pocket. It's time for us to leave. Returning to the first floor, Chen Gu had just reached the door to Uncle Huang's room when the front door opened on its own. Uncle Huang, who had a serious hunchback, was standing at the door. It felt like he had been standing behind the door for some time already, waiting for Chen Gu to come. Did you know I will return to you? Uncle Huang did not answer. Instead, he turned and walked into the room. When he passed the dining table, he picked up the cleaver that was placed on top of it. The old man, who was thin as a stick, grabbed the cleaver and started to hack at the wall next to the bedroom. The blade cut into the wall, and the wall started to bleed. Strangely enough, as more cuts were left on the wall, more cuts also appeared on Uncle Huang's body. As the old man continued to work, the wall W. As cleaved open, and the old man's body was also covered in ghastly wounds. The twig-like hand no longer had the energy to even hold the cleaver anymore. In the end, Uncle Huang collapsed to the ground. What in the world is going on? Xiao Sun put down Jia Fu and ran over to help Uncle Huang, but the latter appeared like he was at the end of his line already. To protect another person's secret, he has to suffer the torment of his conscience. You can say that the wall is practically made from his own flesh and blood. Chen Gu walked into the room while carrying the backpack. Now that the murderers have all been exposed, Uncle Huang has no reason or excuse to help them protect the secrets. Stopping beside the main bedroom, Chen Gu halted for several seconds before he continued moving forward. There were two bedrooms in this house. One was Uncle Huang's bedroom, and the other bedroom was blocked off by flesh and blood. This second bedroom was stuffed with dead bodies. Initially, the room was only occupied by the landlord's family members. The landlord did not wish to be separated from them, so he would occasionally come to visit them. But I did not expect the landlord to bring more and more people to come and stay with his family. Using his literal last breath, Uncle Huang revealed the truth. Perhaps from the very beginning, I should not have promised to help him guard this secret. The scene inside the bedroom was straight out of hell. This was the location where all the sin at Jean Hua Apartments Block A started. It was also the first secret that manifested there. Pushing away Xiao Sun, who was stunned beyond words, Chen Gu entered the bedroom and squeezed into the crowd. I can tell that you believe the landlord is a good person, but have you considered the alternative? What if his family did not die from an accident? Chin Gu managed to find the dead bodies of the landlord's family, but unfortunately, he failed to find anything useful on them. These carcasses were not the source of that horrible stench. 
Just what exactly is the thing that has been radiating this stench that has troubled me for so long? Standing alone amid the crowd, what Chin Gu did next shocked the people around him. He trained his focus by closing his eyes. Chin Gu used the talent gifted to him by the black phone, spirit sniff, and followed his instinct to start to search inside the bedroom. Slowly but surely, he followed the trail that would lead him to the source of the stench in this building. When he opened his eyes, Chin Gu saw the arm of a rag doll. The rag doll's arm was covered in blood and other dirty stains. Chin Gu had a feeling that the arm of this doll was not stuffed with a common material like cotton but probably trash and the carcasses of small animals. What is this? Chin Gu was about to pick up the doll's arm when an extremely sense of danger arose from his mind. Then there was something like a shake, and the whole building shook underneath him. It felt like the trembling of an earthquake. Is this rag doll's broken arm the source of the horrible smell? Before Chin Gu could understand the importance behind it, he heard rapid knocking coming from outside. Dong, dong, dong. It was the apartment's front door. Someone was knocking against it from outside. Chin Gu stood up and stayed away from the broken arm. Instantly, the knocking on the door and the tremors disappeared. This thing is able to affect the entire residential area. When I was about to pick it up, something in my mind warned me of an imminent danger. This does not belong to Xiang Wan. It probably belongs to the ghost fetus. This situation had not happened in any of the other doors that Chen Gu had entered, so he could not afford to be too careful. Back when I was in Liwan City, the shadow used this method to cut open Xiaobu's body and kept them hidden in different buildings, making use of Xiaobu's power to complete his own conspiracy. This is too similar to be a coincidence. This ragdoll's severed arm is probably the same as what happened to Xiaobu. The ghost fetus cut it up and placed different parts in different building as a foundation to steady this residential area. Chen Gu memorized the location of the broken arm. He decided to leave immediately to go and look at the other buildings. Walking out from the crowd, the stench lingered on Chen Ji's body. The smell would probably follow him until he left the door. Moments earlier, there was someone knocking on the front door. Have they noticed the change that has happened inside the building? We will know for sure when we go out. Chin Gu turned to look at Xiao Sunday. Are you going to follow me and leave this place in search of the truth, or are you going to stay to wait for the other tenants from the other buildings to come find you? How come it feels like you have not given me a choice in your statement at all? Xiao Sun carried Uncle Huang to the bed. I will go with you, but someone has to stay to look after them, right? He was talking about Uncle Huang and Jia Fu. Granny Li can stay and do that. Chen Gu placed Granny Li's bowl beside Uncle Huang. Granny, I will leave them in your care. If we can find a way out, we will definitely come back to fetch all of you. He gestured for a long time before Granny Li stopped following him. Is this old lady not really crazy? Xiao Sun whispered softly beside Chen Gu. This whole act is just her way to survive inside the building. What is so surprising about that? There are more scammers and people acting crazy in real life compared to this place behind the door. Chen Gu came to the entrance and found the key that would open it. This stretch of road between the two buildings will be very dangerous, you will need to stay close to me. Grab hold of my elbows and do not let go no matter what. The key entered the keyhole. The spring sprung for a release, and the iron lock on the door was opened. Follow me and stay close. Chen Gu took out Dr. Skullcracker's hammer from his backpack and strode into the black fog without any hesitation. Xiao Sun and Wen Qing stayed close behind him. His extremely good sense came into use here. Before Chen Gu opened the door, he had already confirmed his destination through the window. The closest building to Jin Hua Apartments Block A was a small building that was six stories tall. This building was situated right between Jin Hua Apartments Block A and Block B. The location was strange indeed. The residential area behind the door was different from how it was situated in real life. Even though the number buildings had not changed, the appearance and the overall location of them had shifted. 
A few of the smaller buildings that should be at Jiu Hong Apartments surrounded the two apartment buildings of Jinhua Apartments. They twisted and leaned like the Tower of Pisa. They teetered like dead bodies being arranged in grotesque poses. They had only walked a few meters when Chin Gu saw a human shadow not far away from them. The shadow did not appear to have noticed them. I think I hear someone calling my name, Xiao Sun whispered. Shut up if you do not want to die. Chin Gu answered without turning his head back. Grabbing the handle of the hammer, he walked faster and faster. The front door behind him was slowly swallowed up by the black fog. The buildings around them turned blurry. The world appeared to have been corrupted by the black fog, and everything appeared behind a sheen of blackness. Two different forces were applied on his elbows. Chin Gu could feel from this physical contact that both Wen Qing and Xiao Sun were extremely afraid, they held on to Chin Gu like he was their only hope. The distance between the two buildings was only several dozen meters, but it felt like they had been trekking forever. We are almost there. With his Yang vision, Chin Gu managed to see the outline of the building's front door. It was open and he could look into the building. The building before them appeared much older and tattered than Jin Hua Apartments Block A. This is one of the buildings from Jiu Hong Apartments. Even in real life, it is a much more chaotic and dirty place compared to Jin Hua Apartments. Perhaps when Qing and Xiao Sun had helped distract the things in the black fog, but Chen Gu was not influenced that much by the monsters in the black fog this time. However, after he strode into the building, he noticed something was not right. Are you two okay? Chen Ji's elbow was bleeding slightly because of how hard Wen Qing was holding on to him. The woman's face was blanched, and her eyes were hollowed. It looked like she had seen something incredibly horrible during the small journey earlier, and she was still too shocked to complete a simple sentence. It was even worse for Xiao Sunday. Five new wounds appeared on his back. It looked like a claw had scratched him on his back, but strangely enough, the young man did not feel anything at all. Blood kept leaking. Xiao Sun's shirt was dyed red. The wounds were extremely shallow, but for some reason, no amount of bandaging would help stop the bleeding. When I turned back to look, I saw a person following behind us. He was so close to us, but I was unable to see his face. It was like he was not real, but a coagulation of the black fog itself. Xiao Sun had a very close encounter with the monster inside the black fog, and his words provided Chin Gu with valuable clues. Do you feel anything coming from your back? There is this pain, a pain that drills straight to the heart. Try your best to hold on. Chen Ge had no better ideas. He then turned to Wen Qing. Are you feeling better? Did you see something scary in the fog as well? I saw that above our heads. The fear was palpable in Wen Qing's eyes. Many human heads were floating. They were biting and chomping on a large shadow. A few of the heads spotted us, and they were looking at us through the fog. Human heads? Can you be more specific? I really can't explain it. Just the sight of them caused my heart to roll with revulsion and fear. If not for the fact that I was holding on to your elbow, I probably would have lost the courage to move any further. Wen Qing looked as pale as a sheet of paper. Both of you have seen something in the fog, but I saw nothing. That is strange, because my five senses should be sharper than the two of you. Chen Ge took note of that peculiarity. In any case, we are out of the fog. We should pay attention to this new building. The front door to this building is not locked, so the situation here might be wildly different from Jin Hua Apartments Block A. You two had better be alert and stay close to me. Based on the walls and the corridors, this should be one of the buildings under Jiu Hong Apartments. Wen Qing held on to the wall and started to stand up. She lifted her head to look around her before she finally found the thing she was looking for. Chen Gu, look over there. What is written on that sign? I think it reads Jiu Hong Apartments Block 1? That sign is used to number the buildings of Jiu Hong Apartments. It was nailed there many years ago. Wen Qing was the estate agent for the apartments so she had a clear understanding of these two residential areas in real life. 
let's go in and take a look. Hopefully, this building is different from the one that I currently rent, and there are not that many strange neighbors. Xiao Sun felt like he had been inoculated after experiencing so many things that night. Nothing was able to scare him now. I hope that there are people like that staying here. In the world behind the door, the tenants back there were considered easier to deal with already. Chen Gu walked ahead with Dr. Skullcracker's hammer. Just as he entered the building, he was hit by a familiar smell. The smell was similar to the one radiating from the doll's broken arm. A part of the rag doll's body should be hidden inside this building as well. What does the rag doll represent to the ghost fetus? Could it be that the ghost fetus has once possessed that rag doll? There was no light on the first floor of Jiu Hong Apartments Block 1. It was incredibly quiet. It felt like the building was unoccupied. As they walked down the corridor, Chin Gu stopped suddenly after a few steps. There were four rooms on each floor of this building. Chin Gu saw that in front of all four doors on this floor, there was a bowl of white rice with two chopsticks stuck vertically into each of them. But that was not the strangest discovery. Chinga slowly and carefully moved closer to study them. He realized that the chopsticks that were stuck into the bowls of white rice were similar to the ones from Xiong Wan's home. A bowl of rice represents a family, and a pair of chopsticks represents a dead person? Chinga looked at the four bowls of rice that were arranged neatly in the corridor, and he was instantly reminded of the bag of chopsticks hidden under Xiong Wan's bed. The boy covered the floor of his bedroom with chopsticks, his favorite toy. Hey, don't you think the bowls are very similar to the one Granny Lee was holding the whole time? Xiao San asked. With a wound on his back, he used some time before he squatted down next to Chen Gu. They are quite similar. Chen Gu thought further than Xiao Sunday. He was reminded of the recording that they saw in the landlord's room on the 10th floor. Granny Lee's son, who was in his fifties, had thrown Granny Lee's black and white picture and the sacrificial food on the altar at Granny Lee and then moved to strangle Granny Lee. What is this trying to express? How come I have a very bad feeling about this? Chin Gu avoided the bulls on the ground and stuck his body close to the gap of the door. Chapter 1089 Cemetery Building Chin Gu looked through the gap into the room. Even with the aid of Yin Yang vision, he could not see anything clearly. He trained his ears to listen. There was no sound coming from inside the room. In fact, the whole building was eerily quiet. This feels so weird. An empty apartment building had bowls of white rice placed before every door. That would be an uncomfortable sight for anyone. This building does not appear to be prepared for living tenants. Chen Go pulled back his gaze. He had been through a lot and came to this conclusion based on his previous experience. If it is not meant for living tenants, do you mean it is meant for dead tenants? Xiao Sun held his back with his hands. His sidled between Wen Qing and Chen Gu. His eyes occasionally wandered to other places as if something scary might jump out at him at any moment. If there are places for people to stay, there must be places for ghosts to stay. What is so strange about that? Ghosts need homes like we do. Chen Gu turned to Wen Qing. We are now in Jiu Hong Apartments. In your mind, what is the biggest difference between Jiu Hong Apartments and Jin Hua Apartments? Hmm. There is not much difference between them. If you really insist on one, Jin Hua Apartments was built several years later than Jiu Hong Apartments. That is all. Wen Qing tried to think of anything else. Try to jog your memory and dig deeper. Maybe there is something that you have forgotten. There is no detail that is too small. Jiu Hong Apartments obviously had a bigger problem than Jin Hua Apartments. As dangerous as Jin Hua Apartments was, at least it was occupied by living humans. This building from Jiu Hong Apartments was basically empty and quiet. However, Chin Gu was sure that was only its appearance. Jiu Hong Apartments was one of the earliest residential area to be built at the old city. The buildings here are very old, and the buildings need constant repair. The rooms have many problems. Normally, there aren't any people who are interested in renting a room here, 
so I rarely bring people here for a tour. The rooms have many problems? What do you mean by that? Things like water leaks, bad lighting, sound pollution, and so on. Wait a minute. If there aren't many tenants like you said, why is there a sound pollution? Who is making all that noise? Chen Ji's one question stumped when Qing speechless. Air. Our company did not really give us a clear explanation on that. At the time, our boss did come over to investigate, but he failed to find the source of the commotion, and then the issue was kind of forgotten. Your company sure is a courageous one. Now I suspect whether you guys do business with the dead as well. Chen Gu had been to Jiu Hong Apartments in real life. Even in the morning, the place was uncomfortably eerie and secluded. Don't make that kind of joke. We are serious housing agency. Wen Qing's face paled. She seemed to be reminded of something. The first batch of tenants that lived at Jiu Hong Apartments all moved away. The company did not really know why. Most of them left without saying a word. The company was unable to contact them to get an explanation at all. That is why most of the rooms in Jiu Hong Apartments were left empty, and that was related to the low number of tenants that we currently have. The old tenants that moved away have not returned? Most of them left in the middle of the night and in a hurry. They did not even take their furniture with them. Does that feel like a normal moving away to you? Chen Gu was quite speechless. Once this strange incident was exposed to the public, who would dare come and rent their apartments anymore? At least I would never do so. Xiao Sun covered his back. He was one of the victims. Now, you have piqued my interest regarding your agency's boss. Just what kind of person would be brave enough to take over Jin Hua Apartments and Jiu Hong Apartments? If my memory serves me right, your company's name is Jiu Hong Housing Agency as well. Is your boss somehow related to Jiu Hong Apartments? Chen Gu wanted to get some questions clarified before he started the investigation. Our boss is an impressive businessman. His surname is Jiang, and he has a lot of real estate under his name. They are not only in Jiu Jiang, but there are some in Xi'an High as well. Jiu Hong Housing Agency is one of his earliest projects. But for now, he has basically allowed it to survive on its own. He will only transfer some money to help the agency when the agency is in serious financial trouble. Most of the time, he just let us be. In Wen Qing's mind, their boss was an amazing person. Jiu Hong Housing Apartments is an investment that is leaking money, so why would a sensible businessman keep maintaining a place like this? Is there a reason behind it? Is there something he wants to hide? Chen Ge asked. What is your boss name? Jiang Jiao. He is also one of the biggest shareholders in Eastern Jiao Jiang's futuristic theme park. He is a partner with many big companies. Jiang Jiao? When Chen Ge heard this name, many things started to click. The so-called Jiao Hong housing agency was a plot between Jiang Jiao and the ghost fetus. Over this past decade, they had probably been selecting their tenants and assigned them to fixed rooms. Now that he thought about it, perhaps the boss of Jin Hua Corps was related to the ghost fetus as well. After all, the landlord probably slowly spiraled into insanity due to the influence by the ghost fetus. Boss Jiang is a very nice person. He was the one who offered me a job and provided me with free accommodation. Do you know how difficult it is to find a home in a city like Jiu Jiang? Wen Qing's praise toward Jiang Jiao kept pouring out. The woman was oblivious to the fact that there was a price to all the kindness that she had received in her life. All the clues had started to link together. Jiu Hong Apartments was specially prepared for Xiang Wan. This place was probably the warm bed for the boy who was the most suitable candidate for the ghost fetus to take over. Was it the ghost fetus intention for that old fox to build the futuristic theme park at Jiu Jiang, or has he found some hidden secret through the ghost fetus and thus wanted to build a theme park in Jiu Jiang? Chen Ge had already memorized the name Jiang Jiao in his mind. He did not wish to do anything to Jiang Jiao. He just wanted to go and meet this Jiang Jiao after he left this door. Since the man has the capability to cooperate with the ghost fetus, 
maybe I can persuade him to cooperate with me. No matter what, I will have to go meet the man to hear his side of the story. After uncovering these details, Jinga had a new understanding of the building he was in. Xiang Yuan was different from other children, at least the ghost fetus thought so. We have stayed here long enough. We should prepare to go upstairs. The staircase was not locked. However, strangely enough the black fog outside was unable to roll in. It was as if each building was protected by some kind of unique power. One of the rag doll's broken body parts must be hidden here as well. Chin Gu led Wen Qing and Xiao Sun to the second floor. This floor looked even more dilapidated than the first floor. Paper money littered the ground, and an inverted joy, written calligraphically on white paper, was pasted at the turn of the staircase. It does not look like any of the rooms are conducting a funereal ceremony, but how come there are bowls of white rice placed before every door? Who is the rice for? The pair of chopsticks was placed right in the middle of the white rice. It was unclear whether they were meant for the people inside the room or the people outside the room. Other than the calligraphy, there was not much different between the first and second floor. Even the scratch marks on the doors looked the same. For the sake of security, Jingu still gave each door a slight push. Most of the doors were wooden door. Some of the locks had already loosened, so the gap between the frame and the door could get very wide. From left to right, the numbering for the rooms on the second floor was 201 to 204. When Chingu pushed on the door for room 201, he did not feel anything, but when he reached the door of room 203, he started to sense that something was out of place. He tried to push the door as hard as he could, but the door refused to budge. But when he stopped pushing, the door would slightly vibrate. It was as if when he applied pressure on the door, there was someone on the other side pushing back. But when he stopped, the person inside the room also stopped pushing. Chenga took out Dr. Skullcracker's hammer from his backpack as he slowly found his way to the door of room 204. This door was old and looked like it might break with the slightest touch. The surface of the door was filled with the muddy handprints of children and unclear scratch marks. There was a gap about two centimeters between the bottom of the door and the floor. The door itself was already loose. It looked like it could not close fully. Do not come over here. Keep an eye out on the staircase. We do not want to get surrounded and have our exit cut off. After Chinga said that, he slowly moved to the side of the door. He reached out to slowly push the bowl on the ground aside. When he was halfway through this, he suddenly knelt to the ground and looked through the gap on the ground. A pair of pupil-less eyes flashed by, and then a curtain of black hair disappeared from underneath the gap. There is someone inside. Chen Gu was not sure whether that was a tenant or not, but his instinct told him that it was not a living human. It might not even be something that was created from Xiang Wan's memories. Big brother, can you not scare people like that? Xiao Sun jumped from the scare earlier. It tore open the wounds on his back, causing them to sear with pain. Shush, be quiet. Chen Gu stood up again. He took out the comic from his backpack to take a look, and then his grip on the hammer slowly tightened. His employees still had not awakened, but the ghosts had already started to show their presence in the building. This was the situation that he was most worried about. Ta ta ta. While Chen Gu was contemplating what to do next, a strange sound came from the stairs. It sounded like a child running down the corridor, but the sound soon disappeared. That sounds like it came from the top floor. Shall we go take a look? Xiao Sun looked as unwilling as possible but he still uttered that suggestion. There's no need to hurry. We need to tackle this step by step. If there is extreme danger hiding on the top floor, we will have little to no chance of escaping. Chen Gu did not choose to leave. He gripped the doorknob and gave it a few powerful shakes. After he realized the door was unable to open, he aimed at the door lock and gave it a powerful kick. Bang! The door fell open from the force. The person who had been lurking at the gap had disappeared. I do not mean to disturb you. Please forgive my intrusion. 
Chin Goat slowly entered the room, dragging the hammer. Be careful. Make sure to not touch that bowl of white rice. This was the first time that Chen Gu had entered a room in Jiu Hong Apartments. The room size was much smaller than the room in Jin Hua Apartments, and the place looked rather abandoned. It did not look like it had been occupied for a very long time. Chen Gu, take a look at this. Lin Qing pointed at the calendar that hung on the back of the door. It was marked with crosses using a red marker. It looked quite ghastly. The calendar is not marked with a year, and a large part of it is missing, but a few of the dates are jotted with some reminders. There was no light in the room, so Wen Qing took out her phone to use as a flashlight. When she leaned closer to the calendar, she suddenly let out a scream. What's wrong? There, there's hair. Wen Qing's phone dropped to the group. The flashlight hit Chen Gu and Xiao Sun's faces, turning their faces white. I am so sorry. Wen Qing apologized as she hurried to pick up the phone, but for some reason, the scene from earlier was seared into her mind. Chin Gu and Xiao Sun were staring blankly at her with their pale and white faces. They appeared to be the same kind of person. Xiao Sun did not hear her because he was looking around the room for clues, but Chen Gu heard Wen Qing clearly. He saw Wen Qing's shaking shoulders, but he did not walk over to comfort her. Be careful not to stray too far away from me. The three of us must ensure that none of us leave each other's sight. After giving that reminder, Chen Gu started to search the living room, Xiao Sun entered the kitchen while Wen Qing held the wall and slowly approached the bedroom. The wooden bed had a mattress that was moldy from the years. There appeared to be something hidden under the cover since it was bulging. The bed was close to the wall, and a white mosquito net hung at the four corners. I have a mosquito net at my place as well. When Xiang Wan first saw it, he refused to even get in. He kept crying and making a fuss. The thought of Xiang Wan calmed Wen Qing down. She entered the bedroom and opened the closet in the room. The broken closet had a few articles of clothing that were seriously moth infested. I have not seen this style of clothing before. Are these Chong Sans? She reached into the closet, wishing to take one out for a closer look. When her fingertips touched the fabric of the clothes, Wen Qing was about to take it out, but five fingers suddenly reached out from a corner inside the closet and grabbed her hand. The color drained from her face immediately. Before Wen Qing could scream for help, the hand had already disappeared. Chen. Wen Qing wanted to call for help, but she suddenly realized that she had lost the ability to speak. She slowly lowered her head to look, and she saw a pair of white hands strangling her neck. Strange noises were coming from the closet before her. The clothes that hung together were slowly pushed away, and a head of black hair poked out from the gap. It was followed by a pale face that slowly reached toward Wen Qing. Unable to speak, Wen Qing's body was slowly dragged into the closet by the pair of hands. Wen Qing stared into the pupil-less eyes, and all she could see was the reflection of her own face twisted in a fearful grimace. Bang! Just as her body was about to be dragged into the closet, the closet door was suddenly slammed shut. Wen Qing blinked, and she jumped from the shock. Then she realized that she was still standing before the closet, and her hands were holding the closet doors open. Are you all right? Chen Gu dragged the hammer and entered the bedroom. I. I am fine. Wen Qing shook her head. She could not tell if what had happened earlier was just her mind playing tricks on her, or if it really did happen. After entering the black fog, she felt that there was something wrong with her body. For example, it appeared like she was the only one who was able to see the human heads in the black fog. You do not look fine at all. Chen Gu gave Wen Qing a reassuring squeeze on her shoulder. Do not keep these things to yourself. Tell me everything you know and saw. It might help us. Many horror movies had similar plots. One of the group felt that something was wrong, but when questioned, the character would refuse to say anything. That was a hidden bomb waiting to explode. Chen Gu would not allow something like that to happen to him. 
once there was something off, he would need to get to the bottom of the truth. With Chen Ge pressing her, when Qing finally came out with the truth. I do not know what really happened. I believe, in a daze, I tried to open the closet. There was a pale face, hidden inside. His eyes had no pupils, and he slowly squeezed out from between the clothes. He strangled me with his hands, and I was unable to call for help. The eyes did not have any pupils? Chenga nodded. Do you have any clue of what that was? Not really. I just thought his method of scaring people is worth learning. It is an interesting experience. Chinga looked at the closet next to them. We will call him the closet ghost for now. Is he still inside the closet? I think so. What did you do earlier to make it come out? I only opened the door and reached into the middle of the clothes. Then, it appeared. Just as when Qing finished, Qin Ge opened the closet and reached into the middle of the clothes. Just like that? Yes. How come he is not coming out to meet me? Qin Ge rummaged through the clothes inside the closet. He did not find the closet ghost he was looking for, but he did find other clues in the pockets of these old clothes. He found several bedsheets that were torn apart, and they were covered in words written in blood. Chapter 1090 Again and again it has come again today. It still stood at the door. I have no idea what it wanted to do. It seemed like it wanted to come in. It looks like my dead child. At least from the back, they look the same. My family saw it as well, it was not an illusion, it really exists. But why does it always face away from us? Which family does it come from, and why does it appear at the staircase every time at midnight? My husband said that he would go out to take a look, but he never returned after leaving the house. He has abandoned me and run away on his own. What should I do? It was getting closer and closer to me. It always leaned on the door and window, and eventually, it would come into the house. After I woke up, I saw it appear in our living room. It did not seem to notice me. It was standing in the middle of the living room, facing away from me. I finally saw its face. Why would a rag doll pace around my house? What is it looking for? Why does it come to my house? What is its purpose for coming here? It is too disgusting. I have never seen such a disgusting doll in my life. Its arms are filled with trash and bodies of small birds. Its stomach has a reeking heart, its face is sewn together from different skin, and its legs were bent, stuffed with bones that it picked from who knows where. It was radiating this horrible smell. The pitiable face makes it look that much scarier. I realized there is one thing that is very strange about this doll. Its shadow is not the shadow of a normal doll. When the light hits it, the shadow that is reflected is a boy that is much taller than the doll itself. Everyone hates it. Does the doll not know that? Why does it refuse to go? Why does it appear like it is trying to endear itself to me? This is crazy. It seemed to have treated this place as its own home, this blasted doll. I am not its mother, and I am not its family. I have to chase it away, no matter what. I must. I have torn it into pieces, stuffed it inside the trash bags, and buried them in the ground. I thought that was the end of everything, but when I woke up, it had appeared in my room again. I already do not have a family life, why does this strange creature refuse to leave me be? I have sent it away again and again. But he started to appear at various places at my house. Inside the closet, under the bed, inside the cover, underneath the desk, it could be hiding at any places inside my house. What do I need to do to chase it away? The blood handwriting at the end had become completely twisted and hard to read. The handwriting was mixed with blood vessels and fingernails. It showed that the mental condition of the writer was at the edge of insanity. In fact, Chin Gu could easily imagine a woman with disheveled hair, biting on her nails, tearing at the cover, writing these sentences with her bloody fingers. Chin Gu moved to the last bloody sheet, and the content caused his spine to tingle in discomfort. I've finally understood what it wants. I am not its mother. And it does not want me to be its mother, 
he merely wanted to crawl into my stomach. When I woke up in the middle of the night, dazed, I saw the smiling face in my stomach. It was then that I realized I probably will never be able to send it away anymore. The blood messages on the bedsheet ended there. Just by reading them, Wen Qing beside Qin Ge felt extremely uncomfortable. Probably because they were both women, she could empathize further with the desperation and pain of the owner of the house. Are these bloody messages trying to warn us that the monster inside this building is actually a rag doll? Even though Xiao Sun always found himself with his foot in his mouth, the young man was not dumb. Especially when they were in danger, his brain was able to work exceptionally fast. I believe so. Chen Go looked at the bloody sentences, and his eyes stared at one of the many statements, its shadow is not the shadow of a normal doll. When the light hits it, the shadow that is reflected is a boy that is much taller than the doll itself. When he saw these few words, a speculation arose in Chen Ji's heart. The ghost that possessed the rag doll might be my own shadow. After he escaped from me, he became the shadow of this rag doll. But the rag doll itself had no consciousness. In fact, the rag doll might be the body that he had made for himself. Inside Jean Wah Apartments Block A, the rag doll's broken arm was the source of all the stench that lingered in the building, but it was also possible that it was due to the presence of the broken arm that the building was safe from the infiltration of the black fog. The rag doll should be a body that the ghost fetus had once used in the past. Based on the description on these bloody messages, he had gone through quite a bit of trouble for the sake of this ugly body that he had made for himself. Behind Fang Yu's door, Chen Gu was given a glimpse of a small part of the ghost fetus past. The ghost fetus then was completely different from the ghost fetus now. The shadow took one step after another to become a demon god, but it had now completely lost itself, and the sign of its former self was no longer there. The bloody messages recorded quite clearly that the rag doll did not do anything to harm the tenants inside the building at the beginning. But its presence was in itself a type of sin. It was because the owner kept trying to throw him away that the rag doll took revenge. That seemed the inevitable outcome. Jean Wah Apartments recorded Xiong Wan's life, and the ghost fetus past might be buried among Jiu Hong Apartments. Chen Ji's shadow first made its appearance at Western Jiujiang's haunted house. Some clues as to what happened next to the shadow might be found in these few buildings. Chen Gu did not move to close the closet door, instead, he took out all the clothes from inside the closet. He did not see the monster. It seemed to have left the room. There are children's clothes inside the closet, and there are three pair of shoes on the shoe rack, two large pairs and one small pair. All of these signs point toward a boy once lived inside this apartment. Chen Gu placed the bloody bedsheet on the ground. The tenants at room 204 once had a child. That was quite clear from the messages that were left on the sheet. After their child died, this strange doll started to appear. The rag doll did not appear to wish to harm them initially. If anything, it seemed to hope that it could live together with them. Do you think that was possible? Based on the description, the rag doll was a scary monster who would want to stay with that kind of thing. Xiao Sun could not wrap his head around what Chen Gu was saying. Both you and the owner of the house thought the rag doll was a monster, but have you tried to consider this from the rag doll's perspective? Do you think it will see itself as a monster? Chen Gu pointed at the bloody words on the sheets. Bones in its legs, heart in its stomach and it even has a face albeit one that is sewn together. This proves that the doll has been trying its best to mimic a human with the only resources made available to him. How come it just sounds scarier when you put it that way? The rag doll wants to be a person, it desires to have a life like a normal being. It desires after family and love, but he has greatly underestimated the difficulty of becoming a human. Chen Gu was being very rational. It had no idea what a human being was, and it had even less of an idea what it represented to those around him. Actually, you could see it as a child, but due to the seduction by the demon, it had become a very scary child. No matter what. It is the truth that he eventually killed the owner of this house. I do not care what his intention was. 
If anything, I feel like he has had horrible intentions from the very beginning. I even suspect that the child of the owner's family was killed by this doll. Wen Qing's face had some color returned to it, but she still did not wish to look at the bloody messages any longer. I admit that is one of the possibilities as well. Chin Gu folded the bedsheet and carried it in his hands. We have searched most of this house already. It is time to move on to the other houses. Are you planning to take those tattered bedsheet pieces with you? Wen Qing and Xiao Sun asked at the same time. The thing is such a taboo. Why don't we put it back where we found it? Okay. Chin Gu had limited space in his backpack. He unwillingly placed the bedsheet pieces back into the closet. I cannot use the comic now. When the employees wake up, I'll have time to come back. The ghost inside room 204 did not show itself. The room appeared like it had been abandoned for a very long time. After walking out from room 204, Wen Qing, who was the first to step out from the door halted at the door. What's wrong? There is blood on the ground. The few looked at the spot that was lit up by Wen Qing's flashlight on her phone. A pool of fresh blood was left at the front door of room 204. When they were conducting their search inside the house, it appeared like there was something standing at the door observing them, and the thing had stood there for quite a long time. There are blood traces on the wall as well, look. There are so many handprints. Wen Qing pointed at the wall next to the door. There were many handprints that looked like they were left behind by a baby. It looked like a baby had rapidly crawled along the wall earlier. There sure are a lot of strange things inside this building. Chen Gu used Yin Yang vision to follow the trail of bloody handprints until he reached the mouth of the staircase. It has gone up to the third floor? Should we continue up? How about we return to Jin Hua Apartments Block A, lock the front door so that the people from the outside cannot come in, and wait for the sun to rise? What if the sun will never come up? Chen Gu ignored Xiao Sunday. He moved faster and entered the staircase directly. A faded scent of mildew and some stench started to permeate the air. The building was still immensely quiet, but this quiet was different from the normal quiet. It felt like the spirit of the building had been hollowed out by some unknown object, and the souls of the previous tenants that had stayed at this place had been sucked away. With his sharp five senses, Chin Gu felt this the most intensely. It felt as if the moment he stepped into this building, his soul would involuntarily be trapped forever. It did not take that long to move from the second floor to the third floor, but the temperature around them had suddenly dropped tremendously. Banknotes littered the ground, and every single room had the inverted joy calligraphically written on white paper pasted on their front door. The old doors did not have the traditional picture of Chinese door guardians, but were pasted with two white pieces of paper. The door guardians are used to protect the house from evil spirits, so what's the purpose of these two pieces of white paper? More questions awaited Chen Gu. The lock of room 301 was completely broken, the door could not be closed at all. The door was hanging open slightly. Outside the door was a bowl of white rice with a pair of chopsticks in it, and other than that, there was a copper basin that was filled with gray dust. To enter the house, one had to walk over the copper basin. That in itself was nothing, but Chen Gu managed to see quite clearly with Yin Yang vision that the following was written at the edge of the copper basin. Those who walk over this basin will receive the torment of the mountain of blades and the torture of the sea of fire. They will have their eyes gouged out and their heart punctured. Chen Gu himself did not believe in these things, but now that he was inside the world behind another person's door, that did not matter much. The key was whether the door pusher believed in such things. Is this some kind of curse? The door was left open, but Chen Gu did not dare enter it brashly. He merely pushed open the door and peered inside to look. The interior of the room had signs of being burnt. Banknotes that were half burnt covered the ground. There were four small incense burners placed in the four corners of the room. The pots holding the burners had a very strange appearance. They had the shape of a kneeling man, like they were supplicating themselves for their sin. Do any of you understand what this is supposed to represent? 
Wen Qing asked Xiao Sun and Chen Go. She stood at the door with a nervous expression on her face. It is perhaps some kind of exorcism ritual. Xiao Sun looked at the strange decor of the room and had no intention of entering the place at all. No matter what it was for, they failed in the end. Chen Gu pointed at the lock of the door that had fallen completely off. Look at the spot where the lock is connected to the frame. It was obviously cracked by brute force. Not only did the people inside the house fail to chase away the ghost, they completely angered the ghost. He moved the copper basin to the corner of the wall. This way, we won't need to step over the basin to get into the room. If this thing is any use, we can consider taking it with us. Whether it's placed in the middle of the corridor or at the entrance of any room, it will serve the same purpose. Neither Xiao Sun nor Wen Qing knew how to reply. Both of them thought that did not sound that appropriate, but after they gave it more thought, they realized that what Chen Gu said was quite logical. After they entered room 301, for safety's sake, Chen Gu did not have them split up. They moved as a group into all the rooms. There is a lot of copper money hidden under the sofa, vermilion dust inside the closet, the incense burner pots in the corners, and a trail of salt by the edge of the wall. These are all used to chase away evil spirits. Chen Gu was very familiar with these things. When he first obtained the black phone, he had scrolled through many different kinds of supernatural forums. In the end, he concluded that 90% of these things were not useful, the remaining 10% might be useful, but the setup was so complicated that he had not tested them himself. The three walked through the living room, but they all stopped when they reached the door to the bedroom. The wooden door before them was filled with the handprint of a small child. It felt like a child was standing outside the bedroom door, slamming his palms on the door again and again at midnight. Chin Goat slowly pushed the door open. There was a king-sized bed in the room. The bed was covered in black pills that appeared like some kind of medicine, but they were arranged in a way where the shape of a human was hollowed out in the middle of the bed. A few pieces of yellowed paper were left around the bed. Some words were written unevenly on them. The first time I saw it, it was outside the window. It was leaning on the edge of the window, but I soon remembered that I live on the third floor. The second time I saw it, it was behind my front door. I did not notice it when I opened the door, but when I closed the door, it followed me into the room and just stood there behind the door. The third time I saw it, it was lying in a pile of my baby's toys. It was mimicking the actions of my child. It was also at that moment that I threw the dirty doll away. The fourth time I saw it was the night I threw it away. I heard the sound coming from the living room. When I opened the bedroom door, I saw it sitting in the living room, playing with our child's toy. My husband and I were so afraid. We switched on the light and tried to burn it with fire. We then threw the remains of this cursed doll at the heap of trash. The fifth time I saw it, it was on the staircase. It pushed me from behind me. Then came the sixth time, the seventh time. The monster had decided to haunt me. I did not know what to do to make it go away. The words appeared to be the house owner's call for help, but unfortunately, from the result, she had clearly failed in the end. Chen Gu picked up the yellowed paper and glanced at the cluster of bloody handprints on the bedroom door. The image of the scary rag doll slowly surfaced in his mind. Chapter 1091 Why Are You Crying? Is the killer the rag doll again? Is it possible that everyone in this building was killed by that rag doll? Wen Qing also read the content of the yellowed papers alongside Chen Gu. Why would the monster do something like that? Why, you ask? Chen Gu turned back to look into Wen Qing's eyes. He thought about it and finally decided against revealing the connection between the ghost fetus and Xiang Wan. Wen Qing had no idea that the monster that she was talking about was actually related to Xiang Wan. When the three were congregated inside the bedroom, having these conversations, the bedroom itself started to slowly change. The human shape that was hollowed out on the bed started to sink like someone was lying on top of it. The stains were moving. A child's handprints appeared on the bedsheet, and the handprints were slowly approaching Wen Qing. 
The three of them were all standing equidistant to the bed, but the handprints appeared to be only interested in Wen Qing. No matter what, do not move. The set of handprints finally stopped before Wen Qing. The room was eerily quiet, and everyone held their breath. About ten seconds later, Wen Qing opened her lips to speak. Her eyes were overflowing with fear. I feel like someone is standing in front of me. Really, there is something standing in front of me. Taking out Dr. Skullcracker's hammer, Chin Gu stared at the bedsheet before Wen Qing. The child's handprints had stopped moving. They stopped right before Wen Qing. Ah. Without any warning, Wen Qing suddenly screamed. She staggered backward in a hurry, and her body knocked into the wall. At the same time, the handprints on the bed started to move away. They crawled rapidly toward the window. Just now, someone was touching my face. The hands were very cold. Wen Qing's expression did not look like he was lying. You can sense its presence? Even with the aid of his Yin-Yang vision, Chen Gu could not see anything, so he was surprised that Wen Qing could sense the thing's presence. Yes, I cannot hear it or even see it. I do not smell anything out of place in the air, but I just felt there was something standing before me earlier. This kind of experience was extremely rare, and it was little wonder that Wen Qing was in such a flustered state. Could neither of you sense it? Why would it come after me? Could it be that it has targeted me as its mother? Just like the two women who were brutally murdered? You are a unique existence to it. Chinga also had no idea whether he should reveal the ghost fetus backstory to Wen Qing or not. Ever since we left Jin Hua Apartments Block A, you kept sensing and seeing these strange things, and they include the human heads floating in the black fog, not to mention the owner of the handprint. But Xiao Sun saw those things as well. Didn't he say that there was someone following us along the way when we were moving through the black fog? Wen Qing slowly calmed down. She raised her arm to lightly touch her face, the field a spot where she was caressed by the strange creature. He is an original tenant behind the door, so it is not that unusual for him to see these things. But you come from outside the door, yet you are able to see more of these things than I do. Now, there is something very strange about that. It was not that Chen Gu suspected that Wen Qing had done something bad. There was just this question that had been bugging him ever since he entered this door. Why did Wen Qing not exist in the world behind Xiang Wan's door? The world behind the door was made according to the door pusher's memory. The process of creating the world was not something the door pusher could control, and the deeper the impression the door pusher had of someone, the greater the chance of them appearing behind their door. Basically, all of the tenants in Jin Hua apartments had made their appearance. As Xiang Nuan's mother and caretaker, it made little to no sense that Wen Qing had not appeared behind Xiang Nuan's door. Could it be that Xiang Nuan has sent the Wen Qing from inside the door outside the door, or has the ghost fetus killed or taken control over Wen Qing inside the door to accomplish his own goal? Seeing how Long Chen Gu had not said anything, Wen Qing opened her lips to ask, What are you thinking about? The only person whom she could trust in this place was Chen Gu. If, one day, you realize that your child is different from what you imagined him to be, would you still love him unconditionally? Chen Gu asked with heavy insinuation. Of course, no matter what happens to him, I will still love him because he is my child, Wen Qing answered without hesitation. She did not even need a few seconds to think about it. Even if he turned into the monster that you were so fearful of earlier? When Chen Gu tossed out that question, he kept his eyes on Wen Qing to study the change to the woman's expression. Even if he has turned into a monster, it does not change the fact that he is still my son. Wen Qing was confused. Why would you keep asking me these strange questions? Do you suspect that Xiang Wan is the monster inside this building? Impossible. You have not interacted with him before. He is actually a very nice kid. Yes, I believe that he is a very nice kid. Chen Gu had seen the ghost fetus earliest memory in Fang Yu's world. In Western Zhejiang's haunted house, after the young Chen Gu fell asleep, the shadow was playing alone with the toys inside the bedroom. 
The loneliness that the shadow showcased was gut-wrenching indeed. Initially, the shadow was pure and innocent, but after leaving Chen Gu, it had started to change. Essentially, Chen Ji's shadow had died, and in its place was a ghost that was known as the ghost fetus. Let's move on to the next room. The earlier we can find the remaining body parts of the rag doll, the easier we will be able to mount an escape from this place. Chen Gu did not challenge what Wen Qing said. He did not want to linger on this topic for too long. Hey, don't suddenly change the topic. Why did you ask me all those questions? You have to give me an explanation before we leave. Wen Qing chased after Chen Gu, but the two of them stopped once they stepped out from the bedroom. The incense burner pots in the four corners had all been knocked over, the bronze basin was flipped over and the burnt banknotes fluttered in the air. Someone has been in here, they were following behind us. If you ask me, the chances of that someone being a ghost are much higher. We'd better leave this place as soon as we can. Chen Gu did not explain further. He walked through the living room and looked out at the corridor. There were more bloody handprints on the walls, a sign that the monster had been crawling up and down the corridor. It was a child's handprints that appeared on the bed earlier, and outside the room, there are these bloody handprints. They are markedly different though, so do they belong to two different ghosts? Are there two children's ghosts inside this building, or is there a child's ghost inhabiting each room? Behind the door, Zhou Hong Apartments was occupied by dead people, they were the original tenant of this world behind the door. How many of them were there in total? Probably only the ghost fetus knew the answer to that question. The bloody handprints wandered around the third floor before they led a trail back to the fourth floor. It was as if the monster was playing hide and seek with Chen Gu. Do we still need to go after it? Xiao Sun asked with a bitter face. This time, he was really afraid. Chen Gu used his action to answer Xiao Sunday. With his eyes staring at the bloody handprints, Chen Gu moved toward the fourth floor. On the staircase that led from the third floor to the fourth floor, there were many chopped up toys and the carcasses of an exorbitant number of bugs. Most of the bugs were indiscernible because their bodies had been cut up too small. The banknotes stuck to the bottom of their shoes and the air around them felt heavy. There was the sound of something rolling on the ground echoing in their ears. The three finally arrived at the fourth floor. This floor was not that different from the previous floors, but it looked even more abandoned. The calligraphy on the wall was half torn, but the focal points were the bowls of white rice on the ground. The white rice placed outside the doors of the rooms on the fourth floor had been eaten. The chopsticks stuck out at awkward angles, and the rice littered the ground around the bowls. Someone really ate them? The rice inside the bowls is for the ghosts. The sign that they have been eaten proves that this floor probably has the highest amount of ghost. Chen Gu kept his eyes glued to the bloody handprints, they disappeared into the deepest room at the fourth floor. If anything dangerous happens later, do not panic and run away from me. Staying close to me is the safest option. After giving them the reminder, Chen Gu walked the room at the end of the fourth floor, Room 404. The bowl of white rice placed before this door was almost finished. There were only some bits of moldy white rice left inside the bowl. Holding the door handle, before Chen Gu could apply any force, the door opened on its own. It's not locked? He slowly pulled the door open, but he stopped halfway. There was a child wearing a red dress sitting inside the living room. She was facing away from the door and facing the window. White clothes were wrapped around her body. A red specter? Chen Gu was very sensitive to the color red. When he saw the glimpse of the red dress, he stopped moving immediately. Before his employees woke up, he had no power to deal with a red specter head on. What is a red specter? Xiao Sun tapped Chen Gu on his shoulder. Why are you so stiff? What's happening? Shush, keep quiet. Chen Gu stood for a while at the door, and then he realized that he was merely overthinking it. It was not a red specter, it was just a girl wearing a red dress. After entering the room, Chen Gu looked around. The room was covered in bloody handprints. 
Once he lifted his head, he saw that the whole ceiling colored in red fingerprints as if the monster would crawl all over the room once night fell. Is it okay for me to stay outside and not enter this place? Xiao San resisted entering this horrifying location. Honestly, Wen Qing was feeling the same way. For a normal person, this room was indeed a bit too gory for their taste. It is the safest for you to stick with me. Have you forgotten about the ghost inside the closet in room 204? Remember that they are always watching us. The moment we get separated, they will come after us immediately and make us stay here with them forever. Chenga took out Dr. Skullcracker's hammer and slowly approached the girl who was sitting facing away from the front door. He could not sense any living presence from the girl. The girl was not a living person, and she was not a red specter. If one had to describe her, she was more like a piece of art. Walking to the girl's side, Chen Ji's expression turned severe. He had no idea how to describe this girl. She looked no different from a normal human except that her soul had been sucked out of her body. All that was left of her was an empty shell. The girl's body was fixed to the chair by the bundle of white cloth. Her head lolled back against the chair. Bloody white rice stuck to the corner of her lips. Her eyes were widely open, but there was no spirit at all in her eyes. If anything, they felt like two dark, empty holes. What's your name? Chinga tried talking to the girl, but the latter gave her no response. Compared to a normal person, she was more like a doll that was made from a living person. But this doll was much cuter and livelier than the rag doll that was made by the ghost fetus. Is this child one of the tenants of Jiu Hong Apartments? Wen Qing also walked into the room. Should we untie her? Maybe she can tell us something. We should search the room for other clues first. We can decide whether to do that after ensuring there is no danger lying around this place. Chen Gu found nothing on the girl, so he turned to start to search around the room. The room was very dilapidated. The furniture had seen better days. The room was inhospitable, the condition was even worse than room 301 and room 204. Why is this room filled with bloody handprints? Something must have happened to the ghost fetus inside this room. His gaze scanned the whole room, and Chen Go slowly noticed some problems. So far, of all the rooms they had visited, room 404 was the only room that did not have a sofa. The owner was so poor that there was not much furniture and what they had was just hand-me-downs, probably purchased from flea markets. Strangely enough, though, while the homeowner appeared to have difficulty keeping their everyday life afloat, there was a disproportionate number of toys in the room. There were so many different kinds, and they came in different variations. There is not even an electric fan in this place, but the owner has splurged so much on these toys. Why is that? As he pushed open the bedroom door, a walking stick that was leaning behind the door was knocked off balance and landed on Chen Ji's shoe. Picking up the walking stick, Chen Ge happened to glance at a family photo that was placed on the study table. A man who had only one leg was hugging his own son, and a woman was carefully guarding her son behind her. Next to the man stood a little girl. In the picture, only the girl's face was normal. The faces of the other three had gouges of scratches on them like someone had gone into tearing at them with their fingernails. This is a picture of a family of four, so why is the face of the girl the only one that is spared? Chen Ge picked up the picture, and he saw a sentence that was written on the back, I am your real family. This handwriting is similar to the names that were carved on all of the mud statuettes, so this should have been written by the ghost fetus as well. Putting down the family photo. Chen Ge opened the desk drawer. To his surprise, the drawer was filled with various pictures. Every picture had dates and uneven handwriting on the back. Chen Ge arranged them according to chronological order. The first picture was taken about ten years ago, around the same time the shadow left Chen Ge. The picture was of the girl alone. She looked very cute, but for some reason, she was dressed like a boy. The picture was taken at the front door of the apartment. The sky was darkening. The girl was running into the apartment, dragging a tattered bag that was covered in sand behind her. 
The second picture was probably taken several days later. The girl was still dressed like a tomboy. She stood next to a pile of garbage and carried a battered rag doll in her hands. In the third picture, the girl was standing outside the door of room 404 with a dissatisfied pout on her face. The rag doll was dumped at the corner of the stairs. The girl's parents were lecturing her. In the fourth picture, the girl was hiding under a tree with the rag doll and some new toys. She had a very big smile on her face. She looked so innocent and carefree, as children should at her age. The picture radiated an energy of innocence and joy. In the fifth picture, the younger brother snatched the toys away from the girl. The mother appeared to be interrogating the girl as she kept nodding. The father with the missing leg held a broom in his hands like he was ready to mete out punishment. They appeared to have suspected the girl to have stolen money from the family and used it to buy new toys. In the sixth picture, the little brother was sitting among the pile of toys while the girl was facing away from the door. Half of the rag doll's face was peeking out from behind the door. The previous photos were quite normal, if a little sad. However, starting from the seventh photo, everything started to change. Many different kinds of inexplicable wounds appeared on the little brother's body. The parents did not know what to do. In their desperation, they channeled their fury onto the girl. Perhaps, in their eyes, it was her fault that she did not look after her younger brother, or perhaps they thought that she was the one who did those horrible things to her younger brother. The following pictures only got crueler and crueler. In the eleventh picture, there was a rag doll that was pressing the little brother by his head as it tried to push the young boy out the window. The girl screamed for the rag doll to stop. In the twelfth photo, the boy hid behind his parents, with tears and complaints. The girl was punished severely. She was forced to stand outside the front door. Behind her, she was holding the rag doll, which was hidden from view. In the thirteenth photo, the rag doll was dumped at the trash site. It did not look that much different from the other trash around it, but when the heavy rain fell on its face that was sewn together by different human skin, it looked eerily like a child who was silently crying. Chapter 1092 Misery is a kind of illness the rag doll in the thirteenth picture looked rather pitiful. It was picked up by the girl from a heap of trash and ended up being abandoned in a heap of trash again. There are no other pictures in the drawer. This is the last one. Chinga looked at the collage of pictures on the table. The family portrait that was heavily damaged and the picture of the rag doll being abandoned at the trash heap formed a stark contrast. This should be the first time it was abandoned. Chingu was just speculating. The doll was willing to put its trust in others, so that proved, at least at that time, that it had not started down the path of the ghost fetus. It believed that it could really befriend the girl. Perhaps even at a certain moment, the girl had treated it as her friend, but reality had delivered the doll a heavy slam. The girl's family were probably all murdered by the doll, and the girl herself became the rag doll's own doll. Chinga closed the drawer and returned to the living room. T. He girl was leaning against the chair. She did not appear like she could stand on her own. If not for the white cloth that bound her, she probably would have had trouble sitting up on her own. Can you hear my voice? If you can, please blink or at least nod. Chinga helped remove the white cloth from the girl's body. Throughout the whole process, the girl did not resist or give any response. She allowed Chingu to handle her freely like a toy that did not have her own consciousness. When all the white cloth had been removed, the girl's body tipped to the side. When Chingu reached out to catch her from falling, several bloody pictures fell out from her body. These pictures were different from the ones that Chingu had found earlier in the bedroom drawer. The pictures there were all taken at midnight, and the backdrop was one of blood. The main focus of the pictures were the girl's family members and the horrifying ways that they had died. In a way, they were a macabre collage of a tragedy that befell a family. These are the pictures of its revenge? Chingu studied the pictures closely, and he noticed something very strange. In the bloody pictures, other than the girl's family and the rag doll, 
there was another person that had not shown up before. One of the pictures had a room number in it. It was taken at the door to room 504. The girl's father was lying on the ground, and the rag doll was dragging him along by his remaining leg. Other than these two, inside room 504, there stood a doctor wearing a white doctor's coat. Is he the tenant of room 504? Upon closer inspection, Chinga noticed that this man had shown up inside almost all of the bloody pictures. However, Chingu was unable to recognize him because his face had been scratched out of them all. Nevertheless, the white coat that he wore set him apart. It was filled with small holes burned out from cigarette butts, and it was stained with something that looked like fat. After the rag doll was abandoned, it looked quite pitiful, but it did not turn to revenge at the first given moment. It stayed on its own inside the trash heap. Could its change of nature be related to this doctor? Chinga felt that he had found another key clue. The shadow's first change was probably because it had entered the world behind the door at the haunted house, and the second change might have been caused by its encounter with this doctor. Wen Qing, did a doctor once stay at Jiu Hong Apartments? Yes, I think so, but I do not have a good memory of him. Wen Qing gave it some thought. I cannot be sure whether that person was a doctor or not, but when I first got the job at Jiu Hong Housing Agency, I often saw this man wearing a white doctor's coat walking out from Jiu Hong Apartments. There is such a thing? Yes, but after me and Xiong Yuan moved to Jin Hua Apartments, I rarely saw that man. The doctor in the white coat did not show up that often again. I see. A speculation arose in Chen Ji's heart. He held the several bloody pictures in his hands. We should go to room 504. We should be able to find all the answers there. Ever since he discovered the presence of the cursed hospital, Chen Gu had been very sensitive around those in the medical business. Perhaps it was a force of habit, but whenever he saw someone wearing a doctor's coat, he had an urge to follow them. Xiao Sun, how are you feeling? Are your wounds getting better? Chinga suddenly turned to Xiao Sunday, I feel like the wounds have worsened. The pain is becoming more and more intense, and they do not show any sign of recovering at all. Xiao Sun shook his head. Why would you suddenly care about me? I actually wanted to ask you to carry this girl with us, but since you are still injured, forget about it. Chen Go laid the girl flat on the sofa. We are not bringing her with us? Wen Qing felt quite sorry for the girl. The latter looked like she needed protection and love. She was no different from a doll who had been abandoned by her owner. The pictures that we found have practically reconstructed what happened, but there are too many details in the middle that we're clueless about. It's too dangerous to carry her with us for no reason. Chen Gu gave a very simple example. What if we are in the middle of escaping, but she suddenly wakes up, strangles you, and refuses to let go? Okay then, we will leave her here, for now. After we have explored the whole building and ensured that there is no hidden danger, we can come back to fetch her. Chen Gu took the few bloody pictures and exited room 404. When he stepped out of the front door, he noticed the bloody handprints in the corridor had increased. The handprints appeared to be completely random, but at the same time, it appeared like the thing that left them behind was crawling around Chen Ji's group. I have a bad feeling about this. We'd better speed up and head to the fifth floor. More broken toys appeared out of nowhere. No matter how lightly they tried to move, the toys would squeak and make noise when they were stepped on. These strange noises appeared particularly harrowing in the eerily quiet corridor. With Chen Go leading the way, the group did not stop until they reached the fifth floor. The stench in the air thickened significantly. This floor had an obvious difference compared to the previous floors. The walls were filled with bloody handprints of varying sizes, and scratch marks as well as random doodles could be seen everywhere. The doodles appeared like they were the handiwork of a child. They had very simple lines, but the content was extremely scary. This kind of contrast between innocence and horror left a scarring impact on the adults. Other than that, Chen Gu noticed something that was quite out of the ordinary. The walls of the fifth-floor corridor had the calligraphy of the character Joy as well. 
However, unlike the previous floors, the characters were not inverted on this floor. It is customary during Chinese New Year to have inverted calligraphy of the Chinese character for joy because, in Chinese, it sounds like an invitation for joy. The few floors below us all have inverted calligraphy, but the calligraphy on this fifth floor is not inverted. Is it a way of telling others that joy has already arrived at this floor? After seeing so many inverted joys, the sudden sight of the whole wall of upright joy stunned Xiao Sun quite a bit. They were something that he needed to get adjusted to. Chen Gu ignored him and walked directly to the door of room 504. The bloody handprints of different sizes in the corridor all congregated around this place. Chen Gu used his finger to trail along some of the handprints. He noticed that all the handprints crawled out from this room, and then they would crawl back into this room. The secret of this whole building should be inside room 504. Chen Gu stopped outside the door. He glanced at the half-open door, and his eyes scanned the door number. Xiao Sun and Wen Qing walked over to join him. The three of them stood together, and they were as ready as they could be. Raising his arm, Chen Gu reached out to grab the door handle. Before he could push, however, the door was suddenly pulled open slightly from inside. Something reached out to grab at Chen Ji's wrist. Wen Qing gasped in shock, and Xiao Sun retreated out of the fear. Even Chen Gu was jolted back by surprise. However, the man recovered and reacted as fast as he could. Just as he was about to turn around to grab at the door, a ball of cloth was shoved through the gap. You all saw it, right? The door opened on its own. Xiao Sun pointed at the door. Do we still need to enter it? Xiao Sun and Wen Qing stood behind Chen Gu, and they stayed far away from the door. Chen Gu inspected the spot of his wrist that had been grabbed earlier. He had lost complete sense of that part of his limb, it felt ice cold like it had turned into a block of ice. We're already here. Of course, we are not going to stop here. We are going in to take a look. Chen Gu knelt down to pick up the ball of cloth that had fallen through the gap. It was a bolt of fabric that was rumpled together. It had a bloody message written on it, do not come in. The monster seems to be reminding us not to come in. Is it doing that on purpose? Xiao Sun looked at the message on the cloth. Then we'd better go. Even the ghost inside the building is warning us. Isn't it a bit rude for us to stay and not listen to them? Wait a minute. When she saw the handwriting on the cloth, Wen Qin became quite agitated. Do not move yet. The handwriting on this cloth looks similar to Xiang Wan's handwriting. Wen Qing grabbed the cloth to study it closer. After some time, she said with confidence, Xiang Yuan is still learning his letters, and he always miswrites come as comb. Yes. This is written by him. Holding the cloth tightly, Wen Qing's eyes were reddening from emotion. Xiang Yuan is inside this room. He is behind this door. We have to go get him. Please calm down. Chen Gu tried to make Wen Qing calm down, but the floodgates had already opened, and Chen Gu was unable to do anything to stop her. This whole building is filled with bloody handprints, so the ghost who left them behind will have blood on their hands. But the hand that reached out from inside the door earlier was invisible. Other than the intense chill, there was no stain of even one drop of blood on its hands. Therefore, that is proof that this person is different from all the other ghosts inside this building. That is because it is not a ghost, but Xiang Wan. Wen Qing was desperate to get the door open, but she was held back by Chen Gu. Have you really thought this through? It might not be Xiang Wan behind the door, but something else. Chen Gu wished to clarify himself. When they saw the white handprints on the bedsheet inside room 301, Chen Gu had felt curious about its appearance. Why was the ghost that particular about Wen Qing and only targeted her? If the source of the white handprints was Xiang Yuan, then perhaps it meant that Xiang Yuan had been following Wen Qing, but no one was able to see him. Only when Wen Qing was very close to him would they be able to sense his presence. I am ready. No matter what, I have to open this door and enter this place to take a look. Wen Qing was determined. 
No matter what Chinga said, his words fell on deaf ears. You want to enter this room to find him, but he has already given you the hint that forbids you from entering this room. Chinga sighed heavily. Oh well. The two of you had better stay close behind me. If there is any danger, we will retreat from the room as fast as we can, there shall be no hesitation. Chinga grabbed the doorknob and slowly pushed the door of room 504 open. The door shook, and a horrible stench hit him in the face. Looks like a part of the rag doll is hidden inside this room. Once the door opened, Wen Qing took out her phone and shone the flashlight into the living room. When she saw what was inside the room, the expression on her face froze. The small room was occupied by bloody handprints, but other than the children's handprints, many faces of children were printed on the walls. All the faces were pink red. They did not have any expression, and they all looked different from each other. How come it feels like every face is a representation of a living child? It feels like they are going to open their eyes at any moment. Xiao Sun walked at the back of the group, and he sucked in a cold breath. Xiang Wan. When Qing started to scream inside the room. Can you two be quiet for a moment? Chen Gu pulled on the strap of his backpack and his hands gripped the handle of Dr. Skullcracker's hammer tightly. His nerves were tense. He was on high alert. There were many tables and chairs placed inside room 504. If not for the bloody faces and handprints, this place could easily be mistaken for a tuition center. A smiling mask was placed on each of the chairs. The materials that made the mask were probably the banknotes on the ground, the banknotes had the same yellowed paper quality to them. Chin Gu picked up a random paper mask to take a closer look. This smiling mask that was cut out from paper money had a great contrast to the faces of the children on the wall. One was forever smiling while the other was bound in extreme despair. Chin Gu looked around before he found a stack of document files inside the drawer of the television cupboard. The document files were numbered, and they appeared to be from more than a few decades ago. When he found the first file, Chin Gu stood inside the living room and opened it. The stench inside the room thickened. Chin Gu dumped the content of the file on the coffee table. It contained some documents with pictures attached to them and the dead carcass of a small bird that had been air dried. A patient's list? Chin Gu read the files, and it was a doctor's records. It had no name. I found it among a heap of trash, so I shall call it trash for now. Trash desires to have a life like a normal human being. It is chasing something that even it cannot clearly explain itself. Based on its description, I personally believe it is looking for the feeling of bliss. Trash wishes to obtain bliss, but it does not understand what bliss is. To cure its illness, I will have to first teach it what the meaning of bliss is. Trash does not understand any conversation or words that involve human emotions. I will have to use a different method to teach it. The lack of bliss or misery is a kind of disease, misery is like a cut that was left on one's heart. All the happiness will leak out from this opening, and bliss is the bandage that will close up this wound. Using my perspective to explain bliss, Trash was able to understand the concept very quickly. It started to find wounds on other people's bodies. It really is a good kid. When it first understood bliss, the first thing it wanted to do was not to create misery, but to go in search of bliss. It looked for a long time, but it failed to find bliss. To help it understand the concept further, I persuaded it to create misery and, from the contrast, try to observe what bliss actually is. Trash chose a bird. Under my tutelage, it broke off the bird's wing. The blood splattered all over the bird's feathers. The bird was wailing in despair. That is the sound of misery. Under the watchful care of trash, the bird's wound slowly recovered. But it had lost the ability to fly in the sky. I told trash that was the price of bliss. To obtain bliss, one has to give up something, it is a very fair exchange. That was where the first file ended. Then Chinga opened the second file. Other than the written documents, there was an eyeball that was encased inside a ball of glue. Trash is the most perfect patient I have ever encountered, 
It is so perfect that I do not wish to share my findings with other doctors. I will keep it here with me for now. I will not bring it back to the work. I will conduct the treatment with the trash at the comfort of my own home. Trash is very clever. He has created a beautiful body for himself. He used the materials that he had taken from those with misery around them. Even if I use all the vocabulary within my knowledge, I am unable to describe its beauty. Trash has the same eye for beauty as I do. I did not teach him that that, he picked it up on his own. Now that he possesses a beautiful body, Trash can go and do more things, and I can conduct more intense treatment on him. Chapter 1093, Patient 0004, Putting Down the Second File, Chen Gu picked up the third file and proceeded to read its content. Trash wanted to become a human. Everything it did was to achieve this goal. Thus, from this action, we can surmise that it is not a human being. Then, that begets the question, what is it? As Trash's doctor, I have been puzzled by this question for a very long time. I wish to understand Trash's origin. How did Trash come to be? Using the excuse to help it find bliss as a front, I asked it many questions, but I knew that it did not answer most of my questions honestly. It was hard to imagine that a monster who did not know what bliss was would know how to lie and cheat. Looks like these things are innately imprinted within every living creature. Nothing is an exception, no matter how unique it is. Trash is very clever, so incredibly clever, that it worries me. Its ability to think and formulate thought improved by the days. I'm worried that one day, he will start to suspect me and single-handedly decide to refuse my treatment on his own volition. The first conflict that I had with Trash came far earlier than I expected. Trash was once abandoned by the girl from room 301. I thought it would have nothing but hatred for that girl, but I was surprised that the monster did not even understand the feeling of hatred. It had no idea what feeling that was. I trapped Trash and the girl, whom I'd tied up, inside the same room. I even prepared so many tools that were meant for its revenge for it inside the room, but when I opened the door again, all it had done was remove the rope from around the girl and untie her. Trash is seriously ill but it is still not the patient that I need. There is no separation of good and evil in his heart, or rather, this monster does not have a heart. I passed the knife over to Trash and told him what to do to make the girl forever its possession. I taught Trash the method that I once used myself, but it did not appear like it was too keen on following my example. It started to have its own thoughts. This is incredibly different from its performance during our previous session. It planned to grow a flower that did not belong on this world on the bed of thoughts that I had prepared for him. For the sake of the experiment, I wish to do a test. If I kill the little girl, will it hate me enough to want to kill me? What kind of method will it use to kill me? Will its eyes, when it kills me be filled with pain and despair? Just the thought of it excites me. Nothing's going according to plan, but is that not part of the fun? I am getting more and more curious. When he finished reading the third file, Chingu had already labeled this doctor a mad person. Better be careful. Be sure to close up your mind and have a firm belief in your principles when you read these files. They will try to pull you down to their same level and thus slowly cut through your internal defense line. I do not care about these files. All I want to do is to leave now. Is there anything related to Xiang Wan in those files? Is there any information about him? Seeing Xiao Sun and Wen Qing's reactions, Chen Gu sighed in relief. These two could not care less about what was written inside the files. For them, the truth was not that important. Instead, the most important thing was surviving with their lives and family by their side. Putting away the third file, Chen Gu opened the last file. The surface of this file was soaked in blood. The fourth document file was the thinnest. It only had a few sheets of paper, but every sheet had a bloody handprint on it. The handprint matched the ones in the room perfectly. Trash wanted to become a human, but it did not understand what constitutes a human being. Using dead bodies and living humans as examples, 
I taught it many different things from many different perspectives. I told him about the difference between other living humans, dead bodies, and animals. I explained to him what bliss is, what emotions are, what warmth is, and what love is. Trash had grown. From a moment in time that I could not pinpoint, I was unable to read its thoughts anymore. The pair of eyes that had dug out from another person's face were muddled and filled stench-inducing blood vessels. I could no longer see through them and access what their owner was thinking. Trash was different from all of my other patients. It is real, but it had no body to call its own. What it had instead was an amalgamation of sorts that it had built from many different parts. I was unable to reach into its heart as I normally would to study my patients. Eventually, I even had trouble telling at what stage his illness had advanced to. For a doctor to be unable to read their own patient, that is both very interesting and dangerous. I was unable to predict its next move, and I had no idea when I would be killed. Trash would always mysteriously appear behind me. I could sense its eyes on the back of my heart and the area around my neck and throat. Did it really wish to kill me, or was it also trying to help me cure the illness that I personally have, misery? We imprisoned the girl for a few days. In the end, Trash did not kill her, but the girl was no longer herself. Trash eventually found a compromise. It listened to my advice, but at the same time, it had retained its own uniqueness. It was the first time it had owned something of its own. Yes, it should be a thing. Even though Trash had seen this thing as its friend, but for me, it was just an object that had lost its soul. More and more blood soaked the records. The paper was getting more wrinkled. The handprints on the sheet of paper overlapped each other, like many ghosts had seen this last document before. I desperately wished to know what it would feel like to be killed by Trash, but with just the thought that I would lose such a perfect patient after I died, it felt like something had gone missing from my heart. I have lived for a year behind the door. It felt very uncomfortable to return to the world outside the door. It was not until I met Trash that I suddenly understood the meaning of my existence. Yes, compared to me, Trash met the requirement of the hospital much better. If I sent it over there, all the doctors would be so overjoyed and excited. I really did not wish to share Trash with the others, but unfortunately, I was afraid I would not survive until the moment Trash received the treatment that it desperately needed. I shared my discovery and findings concerning Trash to my teacher. When it heard my story, it personally came to Jiu Hong Apartments. After it assessed Trash, it gave Trash a very unique patient number, patient 0004. When I saw this number, I knew that my days were numbered. All of the patients at the hospital were arranged according to their number, depending on the severity of their illness. The more unique the patient, the further ahead their number would be. Other than patient 0001, which I have not seen before, patient 0002 is left on the other side of the door, and patient 0003 is hidden in Jiujiang. These three are beyond the realm of my comprehension. They are existences that I cannot completely understand. I really did not expect mere trash to become patient 0004. Can it suffer the weight that will be brought by this number? Normal doctors are unable to interact with the 10 first patients. They are instead handed over to their respective teacher and doctor. Regarding the others that know about their presence, they are either sent to the other side of the door or disappear silently and mysteriously. I belong to the later camp. After all, I have instilled my own thoughts into the material that my teacher has considered to be incredibly important. Before I disappear, there is one last thing that I need to do, and that is to hide these records at a place that only me and Trash know about. I have no idea why I would do such a thing. Perhaps human beings are all selfish creatures, especially people like me. The last document ended right there. On first glance, it might appear to be the ravings of a mad doctor, but it actually contained a wealth of information. This crazy doctor was not the scariest entity, he had a teacher, and according to his statement, the hospital that he came from had many scary doctors that were just like him. In Chin Ji's mind, there was only one such hospital in existence, 
and that was the cursed hospital that was built on the border between Xi'an Hai and Zhejiang. This is such troublesome news. From the records, it appears that they started to investigate the doors more than 20 years ago. That's even earlier than Dr. Gao. There's an impossible number of doctors, and I have no clue what they are capable of. Other than that, I need to pay attention to the patients that were mentioned inside these files. The doctor's teacher probably saw something in the rag doll, so it listed it as patient 0004. Several decades later, the rag doll became a demon god, the ghost fetus, but even so, it was only ranked number four. Just how scary are the three before the ghost fetus? Chinga knew that among red specters, there would be a great difference in their ability. For example, Men Nan and Zhang Ya, before she became a demon god. Chinga believed that such a difference would exist between demon gods as well. Looks like I will have to reassess the overall ability of that hospital. The best thing I can do now is try to find as many patients as I can and try to work together with them. We are all patients, so there should be a common language, right? Chen Gu placed all four files into his backpack. These things were very important. The rag doll was taken by the doctor's teacher to the hospital. The experience at Jiu Hong Apartments was the second stage of the change that happened to the ghost fetus. It was at this place that it was given an education in a twisted worldview and moral values. What happened next at the hospital should be the last stage that ultimately propelled it to become the ghost fetus. Chen Gu was reminded of the scenario inside the worlds behind the doors of the few children that he had entered before. When he opened his eyes, there would be a black iron door that gave off a faint scent of disinfectant behind him. The world of every child that was chosen was different, but the doors that were used to leave their worlds were the same. Chinga greatly suspected that the black iron door was the door that was pushed open by the ghost fetus himself. The black door with the smell of disinfectant feels like the door to the zone of the seriously ill at special hospitals. Using this as a basis of speculation, the ghost fetus probably pushed open its own door at that hospital. The four documents tied the ghost fetus to the cursed hospital, but this was just the beginning. From what was happening now, it appeared that it had been some time since the ghost fetus had escaped from that hospital, and due to various reasons, the hospital was not that desperate to recapture the ghost fetus. In Chin Ji's mind, there were several possibilities for this. 1. The cursed hospital was very confident in their ability. They believed that they would be able to recapture the ghost fetus any time they wanted, so they did not care about it and allowed it to grow while they observed it in the dark. 2. They ran into some big trouble. The person who had created trouble could be another patient. After all, if the ghost fetus was able to escape, the patients who were ranked before it would naturally be able to mount their own escape as well. 3. The cursed hospital ran into a huge challenge in Jiujiang. It was not that they did not wish to recapture ghost fetus, but they no longer dared come to Jiujiang so openly like they did in the past. Note that these three situations were not mutually exclusive to one another. After all, with that hospital's scary ability, Chen Gu believed that just one situation would not be enough to prevent them from doing what they wanted to do. Perhaps a collection of deterring factors had contributed to the situation that Chen Gu was faced with. There is a high chance that the ghost fetus was once trapped at that cursed hospital. It appears like I interacted with people from that hospital when I was young. Could all roads eventually lead back to that cursed hospital? And what kind of character do my parents play in this whole incident? Is their disappearance related to the cursed hospital as well? Chen Gu, Chen Gu. His elbow was being tugged on, and Xiao Sun's call echoed in his ears. Look at the faces on the wall. They appear to be looking at you. Looking at me? Chen Gu turned around to scan his environment. The faces of the children on the wall were bleeding. Their eyes appeared to have come alive. Their eyeballs were so lively that it felt like they would pop out from the wall at any moment. Even when he was stared at by so many strange gazes, Chen Gu was as calm as ever. He slowly took the files out from his backpack. He did not believe that he had done anything that crossed the line. 
The only thing that he had done was take the files from the drawer. If these children were targeting him because of that, before his employees woke up, Chen Gu could give up the documents for the time being. He could always come back to fetch them later. A great man knows when to yield and when not to. There was nothing embarrassing about this. Chen Gu placed the documents back into the drawer, but he realized that the children were not looking at the documents, they were all looking at him. The gazes all zeroed in on him. All the children had found him as their target. Why are they looking at me like this? Chen Gu put the document files back into his backpack. He still did not wish to leave this building because he had not found the source of the stench inside this building. Room 504 was the room where the stench was the thickest. If his earliest speculation was not wrong, the remaining body part of the rag doll should be hidden somewhere inside this room. Let's go now. If we do not go soon, I have a feeling that we will not be able to leave. Just give me a moment. Even though Chen Gu did not wish to stay in that room any longer, it had not been easy to make their way to this place. He would feel too much regret if he did not take a good look around the room. According to the doctor's files, their teacher would do their best to make everyone else who knew about their patients disappear silently and mysteriously. The tenants of this building were probably murdered by the doctor's teacher. The dead spirit of every family lingered here, and the faces on the wall probably belonged to the children who had died in that massacre. Even Chen Gu felt uncomfortable being stared at by these multiple faces. He did not want to waste any more time. Grabbing his backpack with one hand and the doctor's skullcracker's hammer with another, he pushed open the door to the bedroom and the kitchen. There is no sign of the rag doll? The stench in the bedroom was more obvious. Chen Gu was about to step into it when Wen Qing screamed behind him. Both Chen Gu and Xiao Sun were given a jolt of fright. They turned to look at Wen Qing at the same time. The color drained from the face of Wen Qing, who was walking at the back of the group. She touched a part of her hand. Some, someone just dragged me back earlier. It felt like they wanted me to leave this place as soon as possible. They are trying to warn you. Looks like this place is indeed very dangerous. It is unwise to stay here for too long. Chen Ge picked up speed. This place was different from Jin Hua apartments. He did not have enough time to give the place a thorough search. He could only search as fast as possible. He could have missed some vital clues but that was something that could not be helped at this moment. The place was simply too dangerous for his group to stay for long. The thing that radiated the heaviest haze of the horrible smell was the bed. Chen Gu lifted the cover of the bed and saw that there was a moldy jacket placed under the cover. He used the handle of the Dr. Skullcracker's hammer to pick up the jacket. A broken leg sewn from tattered fabric fell out from the folds of the jacket. The horrible stench crawled into his nostril. The whole building started to shake like there was an earthquake. Their surroundings started to turn for the worse. The human faces that were painted on the wall appeared to come alive in that moment. The rag doll's left leg was hidden inside Jiu Hong Apartments Block 1. Chen Gu held his hand over his mouth and nose. Without any hesitation, he retreated. We need to leave this building as soon as possible and then we will decide what to do next. Chapter 1094 Where's My Cat? The horrible smell in the building originated from that severed leg. Chen Gu did not quite understand why the rag doll's body would give off such a pungent smell, and it appeared like he was the only one among them who was able to smell it. After the leg was discovered, a startling change started to happen inside the building. The faces of the children on the wall came to life, their eyeballs slowly bulged out from the wall as they moved to follow Chen Gu. The scenario was scary to say the least. Brother, what have you done? How come it feels like all the painted faces have come alive? Xiao Sun followed close behind Chen Gu. His eyes were overflowing with fear and terror. Now is not the time to explain. We need to leave this building as soon as possible. Chen Gu blazed a path forward with Dr. Skullcracker's hammer. He had just run out of room 504 when he heard children's giggling coming from the room behind him. 
Turning back to look, Chen Ji's hair instantly stood on end. That was because he saw the rag doll's severed leg had stood up on its own on the bed. The bloody handprints on the wall became wet with the sound of dripping echoing through the room as droplets of blood dripped down from the ceiling and dyed the whole room red. Hee <laughs> hee. Cute laughter came from above them. The eyeballs that bulged out from the ceiling kept turning. Blood was now flowing freely. Five fingers that were painted in blood splattered all over the walls. A disfigured child slowly crawled out from the bloody painting. Blood was still lingering on his body. His face was demented and twisted. His thin lips were torn open on both sides, and his venomous gaze stared fixatedly at Chin Ji's neck. With cold sweat breaking out on his forehead, Chin Gu soon realized that things were only getting worse. More and more children appeared in the room, and they were all staring at Chen Gu. We need to go. Now. Chen Gu charged ahead. With him leading the way, Xiao Sun and Wen Qing followed close behind him. The floor underneath them was shaking and many strange noises were coming from all sides of the building. The sound of marbles bouncing against each other came from the ceiling, the consistent tapping of footsteps echoed in the corridor, and more and more bloody handprints appeared on the windows that they rushed by. Chen Gu, the words on the note were written by Xiang Wan. That proves that Xiang Wan was inside that room. Is it okay for us to escape now and leave him alone back there? Wen Qing was unable to be sure of her own safety, but even at that moment, the person that she cared about the most was Xiang Wan. Perhaps that was what motherhood was like. Do not worry about him. If I am not wrong, the boy probably left this place a long time ago. Chen Gu was being very rational. Do you still remember the tug that you experienced earlier? That was him warning you to leave this place. As long as you are not in danger, he will not do anything stupid for the sake of saving you. Do you understand that? Wen Qing nodded. In those circumstances, the best and most logical solution was to escape as fast as they could. As long as they were still alive, they always had a second chance. Xiang Wan. Without stopping, when Wen Qing was about to leave the fifth floor, she could not resist the urge to turn back to look. Many disfigured children crawled out from room 504. They were all missing something from their bodies. It looked as if a part of their bodies had been forcibly taken away from them. Some had their skin removed, and others had their facial features taken away. These children crawled on the walls, corridor, and ceiling as well as over each other, like they were crazy. However, they seemed to have locked onto Chen Gu and were rapidly closing in on him. Just the sight of this caused Wen Qing's legs to go weak. But she gritted her teeth, picked up her pace, and continued to run down the stairs. Chen Gu also saw the children behind them. However, unlike Wen Qing, he did not feel that much fear. If anything, a piece of information from the doctor's document files floated up in his mind. The rag doll had created a new body for itself, it was a body that matched the doctor's expectation of beauty. At the time, Chen Gu did not give the sentence much thought, but now that he saw the group of disfigured children behind him, he understood the depth of cruelty that could exist within that simple sentence. The four files appeared to be very simple and concise, and reading them would give the reader a slight feeling of discomfort. However, upon closer inspection, one would realize that it was no different from the diary of a demon. Chen Gu tried to focus as he cut his way out of the building. As he ran down the stairs, Chen Gu encountered some strange things, but he did not stop to pay them much attention. If the thing did not actively block Chen Ji's way, he would continue past them. If they intended on stopping him or made any hostile movement toward him, then they would be given a treat of Dr. Skullcracker's hammer. Chen Ge had no choice. Once he stopped, all three of them, Wen Qing, Xiao Sun, and himself, would be caught by the group of children. Then they would be turned into sacrificial objects for the groups of vengeful spirits to exact their vengeance. Racing all the way nonstop, the trio finally returned to the first floor. Keep up with me. Don't fall back now. The location of the several buildings appeared in his mind. Chenga had no time for hesitation. 
He ran out of Jiu Hong Apartments, Block 1, immediately. After leaving the building, he instantly slowed down. Grab hold of my shoulders. Quick. The black fog was more dangerous than the building, one could not afford to be too careful. After making sure that Wen Qing and Xiao Sun had grabbed his shoulders, Chin Go made a beeline in a specific direction. Chin Go, why would those ghost children congregate inside room 504? The note that Xiang Wan gave me was also tossed out from room 504. Why is that? Do you think he was also trapped alongside those ghost children? Wen Qing was bothered by many worrying questions. At the end of the day, she was just a normal mother. Being able to catch up to Chen Ji's rhythm was already quite impressive. The situation is very complicated. After we reach a safe place, I will slowly explain it to you. For now, you can just treat this place as Xiang Wan's nightmare, and the boy has lost himself in it. We need to try our best to help him find himself. Chen Gu was speaking at a very fast pace. That was not his fault. Once he entered the black fog, his body would shake involuntarily, as if he would be taken out at any moment. His body was alert with the sense of danger that was so close to them. Just as Chinga finished, before Wen Qing could say anything, the three of them heard a giant boom at the same time. One of the buildings in the black fog was trembling, and the giant sound came from inside that building. Someone else has found the part of the ragdoll's body. Chen Gun narrowed his eyes. That should be the doing of the monsters from the cursed hospital. Are they also searching for the ragdoll's body? Other than himself, there were other people searching for the remainder of the ragdoll's body. In a way, this told Chen Gu that his general direction was not wrong. For now, I already know the location of the ragdoll's left arm and left leg. Once my employees wake up, I will come back to these places immediately to snatch these things. The building shook for a very long time and did not stop. After the ragdoll's body part was discovered, the whole residential area started to change. More activity started to appear inside the black fog, and more unknown shadows appeared in the darkness. They stuck to the building like they were trying to enter them. Every building should have a part of the ragdoll's body inside. It's using its former body to ensure that this residential area is not swallowed up by the black fog. At this point, confusion appeared in his mind. I have been inside so many doors before, but how come this door is so distinct from everyone else's? It is not only isolated from the Red City, but it is also swallowed amid a sea of black fog. A possibility crossed his mind, and it caused Chin Gu to frown. Could this be the real world behind the door? The worlds that I have visited before were all very close and thus in reliance of the Red City. In other words, the door pushers pushed open their blood door at the fringe of the Blood City, and their scenarios were extremely close to the Red City, like the school of the afterlife. And some of them were enveloped right inside the Red City, like Dr. Gao's underground morgue. He assimilated the whole scenario and carried all the sin on his back. But after the scenario crumbled, one would realize that the Red City was literally right outside the scenario. A speculation arose in Chen Ji's heart. If this endless black fog can be seen as a horizonless sea of despair, then this residential area is a lonely island of humanity within the Black Sea. Then, is it possible that the Red City is also another island among the Black Sea? But because too many people opened their doors there, it caused multiple scenarios and nightmares to join together making the island continuously expand until it reached such a size that even the Black Sea could not do anything to affect it anymore? Following this train of thought further, Chin Go slowly narrowed his eyes. The ghost fetus once entered the door at my haunted house. It has always wanted to become a human being, and it has always desired bliss, so it was mimicking and chasing the things that it wanted. Then, is it possible that the ghost fetus is trying to build its own version of the Red City? Whether or not the ghost fetus wanted to create another red city was not that important, the key was that the individual whom the ghost fetus was the most envious of was Chingu himself. But after entering the door at the haunted house, the ghost fetus saw something, and it was those things that caused it to leave and abandon Chingu. 
The whole sentence just sounded impossible and absurd. After his own shadow saw the other side of his persona, it escaped in the middle of the night. That in itself was something worth considering and contemplating. If I manage to survive this ghost fetus mission and if Zhangya has woken up from her hibernation, I will have to go and take a look behind the door at the haunted house. Chen Gu still had quite an impression of the hint given to him by the black phone about the ghost fetus mission. The most important clue had always been beside him. The trio continued a few meters ahead. Chen Gu felt the grip on his shoulders tighten so much that it had start to cut into his thought. Wen Qi? Looking back from the corner of his eyes, Chen Ji's eyes widened in shock. Wen Qing and Xiao Sun had disappeared. The hands that grabbed his shoulders were two pale arms that were covered in liver mortis. Sucking in a cold breath, Chen Gu did not do anything too brash. He continued to lead the two dead arms forward as if he did not notice anything out of place. Things had already happened, being afraid was not going to make things better after all. Whisperings kept drifting into his ears. The black fog was roiling. Giant shadows sluiced through the fog. These monsters were beyond Chen Ji's comprehension. Just the sight of them caused his heart to wrench with fear. A giant shadow that had the shape of a spider was crawling on the outside wall of the building. Not far away from him were several headless sticks that were several meters tall that walked past. Occasionally, big holes appeared around him. Through the fog, Chen Gu was unable to tell how deep the holes were. Perhaps, with a careless trip, he would fall straight into another dimension. The many different monsters in the black fog have come alive compared to before. The ghost fetus probably used the remains of its past body to guard these few buildings. The monsters in the fog sensed that someone had touched the ragdoll's body and realized that this was their chance. It was impossible to stop moving in the black fog. Chen Gu looked at the shadows around him, and he lowered in his head again and continued to pick up his speed. Behind this door, he not only had to be careful of the door pusher and the outsider, he also had to be cautious of the monsters in the black fog. In a way, enemies were everywhere. He would not know how he had died if he did not pay attention to his surroundings. The outline of the building before him became clearer and clearer. Based on his memory, Chen Gu had successfully arrived at the next building. The layout of the two residential areas behind the door were different from the layout outside the door. The two tallest buildings from Jin Hua Apartments stood in the middle of the fog, like two hands that reached up high into the air. The smaller buildings from Jiu Hong Apartments were scattered around these two buildings, they formed the foundation to strengthen the base. Even with the arms of two dead people hanging on his shoulders, Chen Gu did not turn around. He led them toward the building like that was the plan all along. The monsters from the black fog should not be able to get inside the building. Once I run into the entrance, I should be able to shake them loose. That was a very good plan, but the closer Chen Gu got to the building, the tighter the grip on his shoulders. Just as he was about to enter the building, he even felt the two arms actively trying to pull him back. They were trying to drag him into the black fog. Chen Gu, who had never resisted, who had allowed the two hands to hang on him obediently, chose to show his other side at that moment. He took aim behind him and swung the hammer as hard as he could. Chen Gu had been preparing for this moment for a long time, but when Dr. Skullcracker's hammer fell on the arms, he did not hear the sound of bones breaking. Nonetheless, he did feel the grip on his shoulders lightened. Using this opportunity, Chen Gu darted right into the building. Running out of the black fog, Chen Gu gasped greedily for air. He felt faint and tired. Fatigue overwhelmed him like a wave, and his physical energy was heavily drained. With his back against the wall, Chen Gu used his yin-yang vision to study his own body. The black fog stuck to his body. Some of it dissipated immediately once he stepped through the entrance, but a part of it appeared to have crawled right into his body. Chen Gu. A familiar voice rang out. Chen Gu lifted his head in shock. He noticed two human figures running toward him through the black fog outside the building. Holding the hammer, Chen Gu stared at the black fog before he eventually sighed in relief. 
when Qing dragged Xiao Sun as they ran into the building. They appeared to have been following Chen Go all along. What happened to you? You suddenly picked up your speed and did not tell us about it. We almost lost you in the fog. Xiao Sun looked very much worse for wear. His whole body was covered in scratches made from nails. He looked like a doll that had been cut. Chen Ge, did you encounter something bad? Wen Qing, in comparison, looked much better. Her body was unscathed. The only difference was that she looked rather pale in the face. With the two of them standing together, it gave off an impression that there was a mysterious force protecting Wen Qing. I saw two hands of the dead hanging on my shoulders, and they wanted to drag me into the black fog. Chinga made use of this downtime to recover as much energy as he could. If possible, he did not want to speak to conserve energy. This black fog appears to have the ability to twist one's memory and then use a very scary method to show them back to the person. Wen Qing hesitated for a moment. The invisible hand returned. Originally, I was heading your way, but as the distance between us grew, it was that invisible hand that patted me at the crucial moment to point me in the right direction. That's the only reason Xiao Sun and I did not get lost in the black fog. When we were at Jean Hua Apartments Block A, the hands never appeared. Does he only appear when Wen Qing is in danger? Is he really Xiang Wan? Chen Gu looked around and asked in a whisper, Wen Qing, can you feel his presence now? Yes. If I am not mistaken, I felt his presence since the first time you entered the black fog. Since the first time I entered the black fog? Yes, it was on the rooftop of Jean Hua Apartments. After you came back from the black fog, I felt like he was accompanying me, when Qing explained. Could it be because of this thing? Chen Ge took out the headless statuette that had Xiang Wan's name on it from his pocket. This was something that I picked up from the rooftop. It should be related to Xiang Wan. Perhaps. Wen Qing could not tell for sure. Other than this mud statuette, I also found this in the black fog. Wait a minute. Chen Gu looked around and then pulled his backpack open. What the f asterisk ck? Where is my cat? Chapter 1095 Memory of the Hospital Chen Gu had not been so flustered ever since he entered the door. He rummaged through his backpack to look for White Tiger, but the cat was nowhere to be seen. When he was at Jean Hua Apartments Block A, he had been in a gamble of life and death with a bunch of crazy murderers. The main concern on his mind was how to survive. After leaving Jean Hua Apartments, his concern had shifted to the discovery and unearthing of the truth. This world behind the door had given him a lot of pressure, and it demanded his full attention. He knew that he would not be able to split his attention elsewhere, lest he missed some important details, but who would have thought that meant that he would lose White Tiger, who was supposed to be following him? Honestly, it was not until this moment that Chen Ge realized that the white cat had gone missing. The poor kitty, Xiao Sun, grumbled softly beside him. By the way, why would you carry a cat with you? I have heard that black cats can be used to bring good luck, but I do not think a white cat has the same effect as its black counterpart. You know that it is a white cat? That means that when you saw me, the white cat was still around me? Chen Gu turned to look at Xiao Sunday, the cat was quite obedient. It stuck close to you at pretty much every moment, as if the rest of us would try to harm it or something. Xiao Sun had no idea that the white cat disliked them because they were dead people from behind the door. He continued to sigh. Actually, I am envious of you. I also want to have such an obedient cat as a pet. He looks so cute all curled up around you. That is just an illusion. The cat only sticks close to me when we are behind the door. Chen Ge shook his head. Can you still remember the last time you saw that white cat? It was when you and your big sister went onto the rooftop. At the time, Granny Lee and I were waiting for you to return on the third floor. The white cat was following you when you went onto the roof, but when you returned. My memory is a bit fuzzy at the moment but I believe it was then that it went missing. Xiao Sun's revelation provided a huge hint for Chen Gu. 
As I expected, I separated from the white cat when I first entered the black fog. Does that mean it went missing inside the black fog, or did it not follow me into the black fog at all? With White Tiger's courage, Chinga felt that the chance of it being the latter was much higher, but if that was the case, why did the white cat not follow Chinga back and stick close to him when he returned from the black fog? Chinga was hung up on that question. The white cat was very clever. It knew that in the world behind the door where danger was everywhere and one could die with any wrong step, staying close to Chingu was the safest bet. But it had chosen to leave Chingu at a certain moment. Did that mean that it had sensed something that would pose a danger to it around Chingu? Was it no longer safe for it to stay around Chingu? With his brows slowly creasing together, Chingu was reminded of the encounters that happened to him at Jiu Hong Apartments, Block 1's Room 504. The ghost children on the walls were all staring at him. It was as if Xiao Sun and Wen Qing did not exist in their eyes. Now that he thought about it, that was something that was very strange as well. Why would I be so targeted? Chen Gu still had not recovered from his overwhelming fatigue. If anything, he felt weaker and weaker by the moment. Is it really possible that something has possessed me? Has it been feasting on my body? Most of the ghost children in the room 504 were disfigured physically. So many years ago, the rag doll had stripped parts of their body to make a new clothes for itself. The thing that these ghost children hated the most should be the rag doll. Is it possible that the rag doll has found a way to possess my body? Using his yin-yang vision, Chin Gu scanned his whole body again. Other than his back, which he was unable to twist his neck around to see, he checked every other inch of his body, and he did not discover anything out of place. Xiao Sun, can you check if there is anything weird on my back? There is nothing on your back. If such a large cat was hanging on your back, wouldn't you think you would be able to feel its presence? Xiao Sun did not quite understand the meaning of Qin Ji's instruction. I am not talking about the cat. There might be something else possessing my body. In any case, if we run across any mirrors later, please remind me. Chen Good dragged Dr. Skullcracker's hammer along the ground. The ghastly looking hammer felt like it had increased in weight. It drained Chen Gu to drag it along. Okay. Xiao Sun pouted. Seeing how nervous you were, and I thought you were worried about that cat of yours. It should still be hiding at Jin Hua Apartments Block A. It has probably found a safe corner to hide. In terms of the ability to protect itself, I still have quite the confidence in it. White Tiger did not have much going for it, but taking care of itself and staying away from danger were its top talents. It should be able to hang around until we return to fetch it. Even though the white cat was very cowardly, it could prove to be quite useful at times. Its sense of danger was much stronger than Chen Ji's. It would provide Chen Gu with a warning even from the smallest twitch in their surroundings. After the white cat got separated from us, it was also the same time the invisible hand showed itself more often. Did it not do so before because it was afraid of being discovered by the white cat? But why would it be afraid of being discovered? Chen Gu Wen Qing, who stood at the door, moved to lightly pull on Chen Ji's shirt sleeve. What is it? This building looks rather different from the other buildings that we visited so far. Chen Gu was so concerned about the white cat that he did not give the building that they were in a good look. After he heard what Wen Qing had to say, he used Yin Yang vision to scan the surroundings. A plaque hung on the wall of the entrance. The words Jiu Hong Apartments Block 2 could barely be made out from it. For some reason, the words had been carved out from the plaque using some kind of blade. After entering the corridor, the difference between this building and Block 1 became more obvious. The walls were painted with a layer of incredibly white paint. A strange smell lingered in the air. Yellowed white paper was scattered on the ground. Jin Hua Apartments Block A was made from Xiang Wan's memory, and Jiu Hong Apartments Block 1 was the ghost fetus first memory. So, whose memory is this building modeled after? Based on Chen Ji's previous speculation, 
He believed that the entirety of Jio Hong Apartments was made up from the ghost fetus memory, but from the look of it, that might not be the case. This block is even cleaner than Jin Hua Apartments, and it does not look that old. There is not even a speck of dust on the banister. This proves that this building is occupied. Some tenants are living here. Xiao Sun contributed a useful observation for once. When we were still in Jin Hua Apartments Block A, the tenants once said that the landlord would occasionally leave the building to go to the other blocks to have a meeting with the other landlords. That proves that there should be living tenants occupying the other blocks, not all the buildings are like Jiu Hong Apartments Block 1. Xiang Wan's world behind the door is very different from all the other doors that I have entered in the past. It is shrouded in black fog. Only these few buildings are not infiltrated by the black fog, so does that mean that his memory is split into multiple parts and preserved in different buildings? Chen Gu was feeling rather faint. He wondered if it was because he had been using Yin Yang vision for so long. Then again, he had no other choice. He had to keep using this power of sight. Xiao Sun thought for a while and earnestly replied, I do not quite understand what you are talking about. There is no need for you to understand. I only need you to help me find a mirror as soon as possible. Chen Gu leaned against the wall. He knew very well that the ghost fetus memory was hidden among these few buildings. Exploring these buildings was equivalent to exploring the ghost fetus past. He wanted to know what had happened in the past, what had transpired to cause the origin of the ghost fetus, this was a chance that he would not allow himself to miss. You do not look well, Wen Qin commented as she stood beside Chen Gu. She was quite worried about him. We should find a safe room and take a good rest for now. I'm fine. We should keep moving. Chen Gu dragged the hammer and moved up the steps. The layout of Jiu Hong Apartments Block 2 was completely different from Block 1. There was a palm-sized window on the top part of every door, so one could look into the rooms by standing outside the door. How come this place give me the feel of a hospital's intensive care unit? Chen Gu walked to the window and looked into the room. The interior of the room was very strange as well. The walls were all painted white. The floor tiles, furniture, and the ceiling were all white in color. The room is so white. How obvious the blood would look if blood was to splatter inside the room. Big brother, perhaps the owner has a taste for the color white, or maybe they like to see everything neat and clean. Xiao Sun sometimes felt scared being around Chen Gu, because the latter would often casually drop such statements that would make people overthink and shiver with fear. They are both buildings at Jiu Hong Apartments, so how come this building is much neater and cleaner? In my memory, there is no such building at Jiu Hong Apartments. Wen Qing was the estate agent responsible for these two residential areas. She had no memory at all of this place, so it meant that this building that they were in probably had nothing to do with Jiu Hong Apartments in real life. Pushing lightly on the door, Chen Gu walked right into it after he realized that the door was not locked. All the things in the room were arranged neatly. The floor was plainly tiled. There was barely any dust. There was not even a black stain on the snowy white walls. Is it possible that the owner has an obsession with cleanliness? Xiao Sun sighed in relief. After leaving Jin Hua Apartments, he had finally entered a room that appeared relatively normal. Do not move anything in the room. Someone probably died in this room before. Chen Gu stood next to the wall in the living room and used his finger to scratch at the wall surface. How do you know that? The coat of paint on the wall is too thick. That means that it has been applied many times. Normally, a homeowner will only choose to repaint a whole wall in such a way when they encounter a large stain that is hard to remove by hand. Chen Gu could not have been clearer if he tried. The room might look white to you now, but in reality, the room might be blood red in color. Pointing his finger upward, Chen Gu looked at the debris that was stuck in his fingernail. The innermost layer of the paint has already turned black. Chen Gu, come and take a look at this. Wen Qing found a diary on the couch. It did not have a name on it, just a number, 
0097 is probably the patient's number, just like how the rag doll was numbered 0004 at the beginning. Chin Gu flipped through the diary. Initially, he just wanted to give it a quick read, but after looking through some of the content, he realized that he was unable to move his gaze away. X month X day, today is a day worth remembering. The doctor told me that my condition has gotten much better. I will probably be able to leave the hospital soon. How I have missed the outside world. I cannot wait to see it again. X month X day, today a new patient arrived at the hospital. His patient number was blocked off. The doctor had it temporarily stay with me. I was not expecting to one day have a roommate again. This new patient is very weird. It does not appear to be afraid of me at all. This is the first time I have encountered such a patient. Perhaps there is a chance for us to be friends, unlike my previous roommate. I tried to talk to it, but unfortunately, it is very stupid. It cannot even communicate normally. Such a poor little child. I like ugly people and things. No, it is more like ugliness is normal people's eyes is seen as beauty by me. The doctor said that I suffer from an obsession with ugliness, and it is a very common form of fetish. X month X day, today will be the third day the new patient has lived in the room. The doctor comes to see it every day. They seem to anticipate something happening? What is it that they are waiting for? X month X day, the new patient's body has started to reek of this horrible smell. It is like a movable body. I suggested for it to go and take a shower. This poor thing does not even know what a shower is. It does not know that one needs to take off the clothes before taking a shower. I took a long time trying to explain to him before he finally got it. Hmm, how shall I put this? I told the new patient he would need to remove his clothes to take the shower, so why did he go into the kitchen to grab a knife? Does one need a knife to remove one's clothing? The sound of water was mixed together with the sound of bones being peeled off. I feel like my condition might have gotten worse. The new patient has finished its shower, and the whole bathroom was dyed red. It even left one of its arms in my bathroom. I feel very disrespected. Perhaps because it has not taken any shower before, the new patient and I have gotten closer due to this small incident. In the end, I found myself enjoying spending time with it because it has become uglier and uglier. X month X day, today is our seventh day living together. No one was able to stay with me for so long because those people could not understand my perspective. Then again, I helped them become more beautiful when they were sleeping at night. Every patient at this hospital has their own number. Normally, we refer to each other by our numbers, but the new patient's number is covered up, so I will have to ask him for its name. I know this is a great taboo at this hospital, but as long as neither of us tell, the doctors will never know. The new patient was initially reluctant to tell me its name, but after much persuasion, it finally told me its name was Trash. Or rather, people called him Trash. I could not believe my own ears. Even though it is as ugly as one possibly can be, no one should be called Trash. Why would someone expose their deficit like that? I told it that a person's name is very important to a person, it carries with it many beautiful wishes. I told it that it should try to give itself a new name. Make one up X year X month X day, the new patient finally figured out a name for itself. It said that the name was Chin Gu. It likes the name very much. X month X day, I started to refer to the new patient as Chin Gu. We spent quite an enjoyable time together until the adjacent room started to complain about the stench that reeks out from our room. The new patient's clothes cannot be worn anymore. It will need a new set of clothes but the doctors do not seem to be doing anything to help it. They merely come every day to do their records and then turn their expectant eyes on me. Honestly, I do not know what they are expecting. X year X month X day, the fact that I told the new patient to come up with its own name was exposed. Initially, I did not think that was such a bad thing until I saw the new patient's patient number. 0004 
It was just a normal child, why would its number be ranked so high? X year X month X day, I finally understood why his number was ranked fourth. The reason was that name, but unfortunately, I cannot tell it the truth anymore, because I will be made into its new clothes, by the doctor soon. After reading the whole diary, Chin Ji's emotions were extremely complicated. For one, he did not expect to see his own name in the diary, and he did not expect the fact that his own name was the reason the ghost fetus was placed at number four. No, the Chin Gum mentioned in the diary is probably not me, but that child that cannot be killed, no matter what. Holding the diary in his hands, Chin Gu stared at the dates that had been crossed out, and his eyes suddenly narrowed. His instinct told him to open his backpack to take out Zhang Ye's bedtime stories. The formatting is rather similar, but that is where the similarity ends. I am probably overthinking this. Placing both the bedtime stories and the diary inside his backpack, Chin Gu gave the room a quick inspection. After coming up with nothing, he prepared to leave. Chapter 1096 The Ghost Fetus Special Power After walking out from the first room of Jiu Hong Apartments Block 2, Chin Gu turned back to look. The door had the number 0097 on it. The number on the door was identical to the patient's number jotted down inside the diary entry. There is no fixed arrangement of the numbering of the rooms in this building. From my observation, they do not appear to be arranged according to the floors that they are on. But it should be the case where every room here corresponds to one of the patients from the cursed hospital. Chin Gu turned to look at the second room on the first floor. The number for this room was 0049. At the cursed hospital, the lower your number, the more serious your illness is deemed to be. That means that the room that I just visited belonged to a patient who suffered from a mild illness. Chin Gu walked to the door of the second room on the first floor. Once again, he leaned on the window and looked through it. The interior of room 0049 was also mainly white. The furniture and wallpaper were all white, giving it a very clean finish. The door was not locked, so Chin Gu walked in directly. Hey! I don't think we should wander into people's rooms. We might get chased out by people again, like how in Block 1. For now, Xiao Sun just wanted to survive safely until dawn. What had happened that night was indeed a bit hard to swallow for a normal person like himself. Chen Gu ignored Xiao Sunday. As he entered the room, he was ready to use Yin Yang vision when he suddenly felt lightheaded. It felt like the world had suddenly given way underneath his feet. My body seems to be weakening due to the multiple uses of Yin Yang vision. Every time Chin Gu used Yin Yang vision, it would cause a certain amount of pressure on his body. Chin Gu had never noticed this before, but in this world behind the door, he could feel the damage brought upon by the Yin Yang vision very clearly. Every time he used Yin Yang vision, his body temperature would experience a very slight change. Chin Gu, are you okay? He felt someone hold him by his elbow. Chin Gu turned back to look and realized that when Qing had moved to stand beside him. This mother was a good caretaker. Don't worry about me, I'll be fine. To give himself a break, Chin Gu stopped using his talents like Yin Yang Vision, Spirit Sniff, and Ghost Ear. This meant that the world around them was soon enveloped in darkness, and the only source of light in the room came from Wen Qing's phone. After closing the door behind them, Chin Gu dragged Dr. Skullcracker's hammer as he walked around the room. Out of his expectations, he found nine diaries inside room 0049. The material for each diary and their cover looked identical, and the patient's number for all nine diaries was 0049. With unbridled curiosity, Chin Gu flipped through the diaries one by one, and he realized that the content of all the diaries had little variation to them they were practically the same. Why would the patient inside room 0049 record the same thing nine times? After Chin Gu gave them a closer read, he slowly understood the reasoning behind it. Even though the content of these nine diaries was the same, the tone and angle of description for the events that transpired were wildly different. 
In other words, the diaries gave the impression that there were nine different people inside this room, describing the same thing that occurred from nine different perspectives. None of the nine diaries had the date written down anywhere. If he just read one of them, he would have been utterly confused by its entries. But when he placed all of the diaries together and read them at the same time, he made a startling discovery. These nine diaries should be written by one single person. Chingo laid all nine diaries on the ground and turned them all to the first page. The first diary, a new patient just arrived at the hospital. Its patient's number was blocked off. Its body was wrapped in bandages used for dead bodies, so you could not see its face at all. This is all so mysterious. I stood at the window and looked for half an hour. The doctors appeared to be hesitating which sick room to place the new patient in. The second diary, it has been so long since this floor has welcomed a new patient. My big brother told me to mind my own business. He has gotten so old that he has become afraid of even the smallest thing. I swear I will never become someone like him when I grow up. The third diary, there are practically no empty rooms from room 1 to room 50. Which room do you think they will deposit the new patient in? The fourth diary, I personally hope that it will move in together with us. Do you know how nauseous I feel, because I have to face the eight of you day in and day out? What can I do to get away from you people? How about each of us pick a body part and then we can go our separate ways from there? That sounds like a good idea, right? The fifth diary, every one of you wants to claim the head. Obviously, that is unrealistic. I suggest we separate and split the body parts according to their weight. That is the fairest method. The sixth diary, stop arguing. You be asterisk stars that have taken over my home. I am the real patient 0049. You bunch thieves. Madmen. Idiots. Crazies. Get out of my home. The seventh diary, Sister Six has started her mad ravings again. Can any of you kindly make her shut up? The eighth diary, calm down now. Stop arguing. In terms of pathology, all nine of us are split personalities. There is no difference in superiority among the nine of us. We should see each other as an equal. The ninth diary, so tell me again, why did the nine of us agree to consume and tear up the main persona again? If we continue to split mentally like this, this room will only get more and more crowded. Nine diaries represented nine different personalities. Just a skim through them caused Xiao Sun's skull to go numb, but Chen Gu appeared to have quite the blast reading through them. I feel like these nine diaries are random ramblings by a mad person. It is filled with crazy words. None of the content can be trusted. Xiao Sun had placed all his hope on Chen Gu. He was worried that Chen Gu might be influenced by these diaries. You think they are crazy, but they will mock you for being an idiot. Chen Gu knelt on the ground. By reading through the nine diaries again, he had a new discovery. Patient 0049 suffers from schizophrenia but his situation is rather unique because the personalities that he has created have somehow murdered the main persona, or to quote their own words, they have consumed the main persona. A persona can be consumed? Well, I am no expert on that. Who knows? This might be a case where their main psychiatrist purposely planted this impression in their mind. Chen Gu shook his head. The cursed hospital had no bottom line. Instead of treating their patients, they would often exacerbate the smallest psychological disorder into full-on mental illness in their patients. All nine personas have their own background and experience. In fact, they have their own occupations and personalities. The eldest brother is the most cowardly and is a middle-aged man. The second brother is a lawyer. The third brother is a plumber. The fourth sister is a night club bartender with a horrible temper. The fifth brother is a murderer with an obsession for cleanliness. The sixth sister is a celebrity. The seventh sister is a piano teacher. The eighth brother is a psychiatrist. The ninth persona is the youngest and has the closest personality to the main persona. Are you reading these diaries as a storybook? 
brother, I do not need a narration of their lives. We'd better find a safe place to hide for now. Xiao Sun had a very bad feeling about this place. He felt like this place was far more dangerous than Block 1. There is no place that is 100% safe behind the door. The only thing we can do is keep on moving, chasing after the weakest light we can find. Chenga sat on the sofa. Even after resting for so long, his physique had not only not recovered, he only felt much more tired. The new patient stayed with them for nine days, and every day a persona of patient 0049 would die. The further in the diary I read, the more despairing the entries became. On the ninth day, only one of the nine diaries was updated. Chen Gu held the last diary. The owner of this diary is the ninth persona, the youngest persona, and the persona who is closest to the main persona. He wrote the last diary entry. X year X month X day, I do not know whether the heaven the doctors speak of exists or not, but I know that there is definitely hell on earth, because I have witnessed a living demon with my own two eyes. Yes, a demon has a face, just like it. Its heart is completely demented, and it cannot express its emotions like a normal person. Or rather, it has no idea what an emotion is. To this demon, love is equal to death, and hope is no different from despair. It desires all the goodness in the world, but it will not stop throwing curses at everything. It will find some other ways to destroy those that it cannot obtain, and after it has obtained them, it will personally destroy them itself. Madness is too weak of a term to describe it. None of the vocabulary that the human race currently has is evil enough to describe someone like it. Now I finally understand why the doctors arranged for it to share a room with us inside room 0049. The doctors wanted to see what kind of reaction they could get out of it after it murdered people with different identities. Before I met it, I always thought I was different from everyone else. There were nine family members living inside me. No matter how harsh the situation outside got, we would figure out a way to deal with it. We had a lawyer, a psychiatrist, a celebrity, and even a murderer among us. With our collective power, we were able to deal with most of the hardships that life could possibly throw at us. It was not until the new patient moved in with us that we realized how laughably weak we were. The new patient appears to have a superpower that is invincible. It burns the hatred, resentment, and pain inside its heart to create a curse. No matter how harmless this curse is, it will slowly turn into reality after a period of time. Once the seed of the curse is sown, it will never be broken. My big brothers and sisters died one after another. I saw them disappear in the agony of pain and despair like they were never a part of me to begin with. Today is the ninth day, and I know it will be my turn soon. The content of the nine diaries was quite a lot to go through, but in reality, they were all interconnected, and they were all pieces of the same puzzle. On the afternoon of the day the new patient moved in room 0049, patient 0049 attempted to kill the new patient. It was the latent murderer personality that put this plan into action. The reason was merely because he could not stand the horrible stench that reeked from the new patient. After he made his move though, he realized that the new patient was not even a person but a monster wearing the coat of a dead body. He tried many methods, but failed to kill the new patient until the doctors rushed in to stop him. Normally, when a patient attempted something as dangerous as murder, they would be severely punished, but this time, there was an exception. The doctors merely came to question them about the whole process, before they left in a hurry. That night, the nine personas gathered together to have a discussion. Just as they were at the height of their argument, the murderer's persona started to self-mutilate. It was as if some kind of madness had taken hold of the man. He repeated the things that he had done to the new patient on himself. The other eight personas had no idea what had come over him. However, they knew that they had to stop the murderer from harming the physical body that they shared, so they had no choice but to bond together to consume the murderer's persona. After the murderer was killed, the remaining eight personas started to look for the reasoning behind this. In the end, they realized that all the problems originated from the new patient. 
To protect the physical body from actual harm, the psychiatrist and the lawyer used the oldest persona among them, the middle-aged man, as bait to conduct an experiment. They discovered, to their surprise, the new patient's scary power, the power of curses. As long as it was something that was uttered by the new patient, there was a chance of it becoming a part of the reality. After multiple experiments that they had done on the new patient, they became more and more afraid for their own lives, and there was a good reason behind it. This was because they discovered, the more despairing, cruel, and vicious the curse that the new patient said, the easier it would turn into reality. In contrast, the happy, beautiful words that it said had never once been realized. The remaining personas decided not to associate themselves with the new patient anymore, but alas, it was already too late. From the moment the murderer made his move, the new patient had started to curse all of them. With the death of each persona, the stench on the new patient would heighten slightly. That appeared to be the sacrifice that he had to pay for using this power. After reading all nine diaries, the biggest reward that Chen Good gained was that he managed to discover the ghost fetus power. All of the curses that came out from his lips had the chance to become reality, and the more vicious the curses, the greater the chance of it becoming real. This power could be said to be the scariest that Chen Gu had ever encountered. It was not something that could be evaded, and nothing could be done to prevent it. At least, that appeared to be the case. Everything has a balance to it. Won't the ghost fetus need to give up something every time it curses someone? After reading all the diaries, other than the increasing stench on the new patient, it did not appear to have received any other negative influence. Looks like the best solution is to kill the ghost fetus, because it has the chance to speak. That was easier said than done. The ghost fetus was a demon god. It would be difficult to even harm it, much less to attempt to kill it before it was given a chance to speak. Furthermore, if he made a move and failed to deliver the fatal blow, then he would suffer the monster's vicious revenge. Chingu replaced all nine diaries that he had found. He picked up his backpack again and prepared to go to the third room on the first floor to take a look. Chingu, why don't you take a longer rest? You do not look so good. Wen Qing was quite worried about Chen Gu. She held the phone and stayed close to Chen Gu as if worried that the latter might faint at any moment. I'm fine. Since the building still has not acted up, it is the perfect chance for us to conduct our investigation. When the place becomes chaotic, it will be too late to do anything. Chen Ji's senses had become much duller compared to before. In fact, even his voice carried the lethargy of an ailing man. The third room of the first floor was number 0011. Chinga hesitated when he saw the number, but in the end, he chose to push open the room door. Room 0011 was rather different from the previous two rooms he had visited. Even though the walls were also painted white, one could see the dark red splotches of blood that the white coat of paint was trying to cover up. The first ten patients at the cursed hospital had special doctors to look over them. From the patient's number, patient 0011 could be considered the patient with the most serious illness among the ranks of normal patients. Three different rooms had recorded the experience that had happened to the rag doll after it was sent to the hospital. The last trace of humanity that it had was wiped out from its body, and it became a complete monster. The cursed hospital appeared to be doing this on purpose, they were purposely pushing the rag doll to become some kind of monster and who knew what kind of goal they were trying to achieve out of this. The cursed hospital appeared in Jiaojiang about 20 years ago. They wasted so much energy on the rag doll. Could it be because they knew that it was my shadow and the real person that they were trying to target is me? The thought crossed Chin Ji's mind, but he soon shook his head. I am just a person who owns a haunted house. There is no reason for anyone to target me. The real target that they are after is probably the version of myself that cannot be killed no matter what. My parents' disappearance probably has something to do with them as well. Ever since he obtained the black phone, everything that Chen Gu had done was to find his own parents. At that moment, he felt like he had never been closer to the truth. 
Chapter 1097 Monster With all the sin, after entering room 0011, Chin Good noticed this room was rather different from the previous two rooms he had visited. The interior design and the placement of the furniture was pretty much the same, but the place had a very suffocating presence to it. Just standing in the living room would give one the feeling that one was running out of air. The sense of pressure came from all sides, as if something extremely dangerous was left on every single piece of furniture in the room. Xiao Sun and Wen Qing, don't touch any of the furniture in this room. Something is very wrong about this place. Many coats of paint covered the walls, but they were still not enough to cover up the large blood stains. The tiles were arranged neatly on the ground, but the gap between the tiles was black and red in color. From these small details, it seemed to suggest that something extremely scary had happened inside this room, and there had probably been more than one such incident. Three different sick rooms, and the patient inside each room is scarier than the one preceding it. The cursed hospital appears to be cultivating some kind of monster by moving the rag doll into different sick rooms, using the other patients to unleash its full potential by completely and utterly destroying and twisting its worldview. Chengu wandered about inside room 0011. He looked through many drawers, but he was unable to find a diary. Strange, did the patient inside this room not leave behind any clues? For the most part, the world behind the door was made up from the door pusher's memory, but Xiong Yuan's door was quite unique. His memory had overlapped with the ghost fetus memory, just like how the few buildings from Jin Hua Apartments and Jiu Hong Apartments had mixed together. They intertwined and intercepted one another's existence peacefully, and it created this unique situation where two worlds were coexisting at the same time. These few sick rooms should be a part of the rag doll's memory. As long as it has seen the patient's diary, then the diary should show up inside the room somewhere, unless of course patient 0011 did not have the habit of keeping a diary. Chen Ji's condition was getting worse. His vision was getting blurry, and his body was slowly being assimilated by the darkness. Thankfully, though, he had Wen Qing accompanying him. This world behind the door appeared to have no effect on Wen Qing. Whenever Qin Ji's mind was fraying, Wen Qing was the first to remind him of it. She was extremely worried about Qin Gu. It took almost half an hour for Qin Gu to find the diary of patient 0011 inside a hollowed out space underneath a tile. The diary was old and used. Every page was soaked in blood, and it had signs of being burnt. Weirdly enough, it looked rather similar to Zhang Ye's bedtime stories. It appears like the owner of the diary wanted to destroy this diary many times, but after realizing that was impossible, they chose to find a very secluded spot to hide it inside the room. Chin Gu sat on the sofa inside the room, placed Dr. Skullcracker's hammer next to his legs, and flipped open the diary. Many people said I have the natural talent needed to become a psychiatrist. They say I have endless so-called qualities that would make a good psychologist, but only I know that those are the things that I showed the world because I wanted to become a psychiatrist to begin with. I chose this career not because I wanted to help those who were lost, but because I wished to cure myself. From the very beginning, I knew that I am sick, and as I furthered my studies, my conviction of that truth has only became more affirmative. X year X month X date was a very important date to me. I was forced to remove my white doctor's coat and put on the patient's garb. The hospital has imprisoned me together with a monster who reeks of this horrible stench. I hate to write in a diary, but writing diary is one of the most effective and forced methods of treatment enforced by the hospital. I do not know whether I should write down the truth or insert some lies. How about I mix both of them together and see whether it will be able to force the doctors that they have assigned me to go crazy. Chin Gu looked at the handwriting on the diary and felt that it was oddly familiar. He felt like he had seen them somewhere before, but when he put his mind to try to remember it, the name eluded him. It was just out of his touch. Everyone has a part of their memory that is the most precious. For me, my daughter, who is just learning how to speak, and my wife are my everything. My story is very common. To provide them with a better future, 
I have chosen to work at this private hospital that is built at the border of Jiujiang and Xianhai. Honestly, before I received their invitation, I did not even know such a hospital existed on the edge of Jiujiang. Initially, I wanted to reject the offer because the location was too far from my home, but the salary that they offered was too high for me to refuse. The income would have done wonders to improve my family's living condition. Skipping over my years of internship, the first day I arrived at work, I noticed how different this hospital was from a normal hospital. There were only a few doctors that worked in the day, and there were barely any patients in sight. However, strangely enough, there were many night doctors. The hospital was built at an isolated location. It was incredibly difficult to even find transport to and from this place. The closest bus stop would require a 40-minute walk. On the third morning of my posting, the leader asked whether I was willing to stay at the hospital at the staff dormitory. I adamantly rejected the offer. Two days ago, I discovered many problems about this place. This hospital has many doctors and pictures of many doctors hung on the walls. But for the two days that I have worked here, I have only met a few of them, and they were all new doctors that had just been hired like myself. The one that had worked there, the longest had worked there, for only a month. The salary was insanely high, but there was practically nothing to do in the morning. The ratio of payment to workload was seriously imbalanced. If this was not a charitable institution, then it could only mean that they were after something else from the doctors. Actually, it was at this moment that I prepared to hand in my resignation letter. The leader saw my intention to leave, and he arranged for me to work the night shift for one day. Then, he would have the accountant calculate and hand me the salary that I was owed for my few days of working there. He did not say anything to get me to stay, and that made me feel very unsettled. There were already so many doctors on night duty. They were not in need of an extra pair of hands, so why did he want me to work a night shift before I left? Anything that was illogical had a hidden danger. I would not risk such danger for some money. Perhaps it would look idiotic to others for me to forfeit three days' salary, but I do not wish to explain my own action to anyone. I did not report to work that night. In fact, I did not even finish my shift in the morning that day and returned home after leaving the leader's office. My wife thought I was being paranoid, and I hoped that she was right, but what happened later proved that I was far from wrong. No matter who you are, be it a patient or a doctor, if you are reading this, I have some advice for you. Try everything you can to leave this place. If there is a place on earth that is closest to hell, then this place will be it. After I escaped the hospital to come home, a series of unfortunate events trailed behind me. Many tragedies started to befall me and my family. None of these events could be explained using scientific theories. I used everything within my capability to protect myself, but I was unable to ensure the safety of my family. I knew what the hospital wanted, so on one of the nights, I had returned to the hospital. This time, I reported as a night doctor. And it was then that I understood the meaning of those pictures on the wall. So far, my story could be considered normal, but be warned, things are going to get real absurd in a minute. Common sense will not help you to understand them. But strangely enough, I started to have this feeling that perhaps at this hospital, I will be able to cure this illness that I have. At this point of the diary entry, a few pages were torn out. The missing pages were probably a description of the doctor's working situation at the hospital during the night. The detailed information about the hospital has been removed. Is it the work of the rag doll, or did someone enter this building before me? Chen Gu continued to read. I have successfully assimilated into this hospital and become a well-respected night doctor. To seek the treatment that would cure my own illness, I started to conduct some interesting experiments on the patients. Of course, I was probably the only doctor at the whole hospital who was sincerely trying to rescue the patients. The other doctors at this hospital were trying to lead them deeper and deeper into a despairing abyss. As time went on, my ability gained the approval of everyone around me. One night, I finally met the director of this hospital. He was a very serious-looking man, 
but he had a very common face, the type that you would forget after you had met him. I had a very weak impression of the man, but with regards to why, even I could not explain it to myself. He seemed to have tempered with my memory somehow. The director had a very long chat with me, and it was all because of one task that he wished to bequeath on to me. He wanted me to take care of patient 0010. This would be the first time I would gain contact with patients in the first ten numbers. Before this, I'd only heard rumors about these patients at the hospital, but never met them in person. It was like God often mentioned paradise, but not one living individual had seen paradise before. It was the same thing. I was thankful for the director's trust in me, but I shall not die. I still have my family that needs me. That was the first time I entered the door, and it was also the first time I saw hell. The patients numbered 1 to 10 were all kept behind that door, and the hospital behind the door was at least 10 times larger than the hospital outside the door. At this point, the diary had a few more pages torn out of it. Chen Gu could do nothing to help this. All he could do was continue reading. I have cured the illness of patient 0010, but in the process, I have exposed my own illness. It was on that day that they removed my doctor's coat, I was no longer the Dr. Gao among the patients, but patient 0011 among the doctors. I have lost my name, but I will never forget my past. At this point, Chen Ji's heart skipped a beat. He stared at the name on the entry, and his eyes did not blink for a long time. Dr. Gao? The same Dr. Gao that I know? Chen Gu envisioned the timeline in his mind. The shadow left Chen Gu when Chen Gu was six years old, and it was locked inside the hospital in the shape of a rag doll. The diary mentioned that this Dr. Gao's wife was still alive then, and his daughter was just learning how to talk. Then it later mentioned that Dr. Gao worked for some time as a night doctor before he was exposed, turned into a patient, and locked together with the ghost fetus. Chen Gu was about to be 27, and Gao Rushua was 22. In terms of age, everything made sense. Could patient 0011 really be Dr. Gao? Chin Gu focused his attention on the handwriting in the diary. The sense of familiarity hit him again. This does look familiar to Dr. Gao's handwriting. X year X month X day, the patients that the doctors at this hospital hate the most are patient like myself because if they let their guard down, they will slowly be convinced by our argument and then gradually lose themselves, joining us. I know that I am hated. Many people at the hospital wish me dead. That's probably why they locked me up with this monster. They want me to die in here. Perhaps, in their eyes, I am just a tool to incite this monster. They all believe that I will die by its hand, but in reality, they have all underestimated me. The monsters were called monsters because we were looking at them from the perspective of humans. Perhaps in the eyes of a monster, what differentiates us humans from a twisted and pitiable monster? To prevent myself from getting killed by my roommate, I started a systematic treatment on him. I have never tried my best to cure someone in my life before. Of course, the aim was not to cure him. I just wanted to try everything I could to turn him into my helper to aid me in escaping from this godforsaken place. Everyone called him a monster, but I was willing to refer to him by his name. I needed a whole night to uncover his name. The monster gave himself the name Chen Gu. Whether I escaped this place or not, I probably would remember this name for life. The entries that followed were sporadic, and many pages were missing. Chen Gu had no clue what exactly happened inside this room but he was certain of one thing. The ghost fetus collapsed and twisted worldview was slowly being rectified with Dr. Gao's help. He was no longer a monster possessed by curse and hatred but an anomaly who had a way of thinking that was different from normal. The doctors at the hospital hoped that Dr. Gao would be killed but several weeks had passed and Dr. Gao was still alive. In fact, he managed to gain contact with the other patients under the watchful gaze of the doctors. In the later part of Dr. Gao's diary, patient 0005 and patient 0006 were mentioned several times. With the cooperation of most of the patients and a small number of doctors, 
the preparation was long and tedious, but they finally found the chance that they were waiting for. The diary did not go into detail about what that chance was, but from side notes and allusions in the diary, Dr. Gao's chance was related to patient 0002. Something happened in the hospital behind the door. Dr. Gao latched onto this opportunity that rarely presented itself and prepared to escape with the rag doll. They almost succeeded, but ultimately, they had underestimated the hospital's horror. Dr. Gao's diary did not mention how he was recaptured, it merely detailed the consequences of being captured. The rag doll was imprisoned behind a black iron door while curses were applied to Dr. Gao until he almost died from it. A normal person would have summoned at this point, but Dr. Gao was not a normal person. He chose to lie low for a while. To survive, nothing was beyond the man. Time was meaningless behind the door. He had started to accept the illness that he had, the one that he was born with and the one they gave him. Many unfortunate events were happening to him, but from the entries in the diary, the words were all uplifting and inspirational. This was more than a simple change of the mind, he had completely accepted the illness as part of his own making. He no longer sought ways to cure it but chose to accept it. The diary did not mention the illness in detail. Chinga believed that was Dr. Gao's greatest secret. After all, he had encountered the maddened Dr. Gao in Liwan City before. He was entwined by chains and was impossibly strong. The dates in the diary had all been crossed off. Who knew how long passed before Dr. Gao got his second chance? Similarly, the details of this second chance were not mentioned. It merely alluded to patient 0001 and the Red City. After learning the lesson from before, Dr. Gao and the ghost fetus, who had been preparing for a long time, managed to escape from that hospital with most of the patients. That was where the diary ended, but it had left a lasting impression on Chen Gu. Many pieces had started to fall into place. If his prediction was not wrong, many questions would be answered. When Dr. Gao first heard my name from Gao Ru Shui, he became interested in me. When I was doing the mission at Muyang High School, he even personally called to give me guidance in the middle of the night. Other than that, I found a lot of information about the haunted house that Dr. Gao had collected at his house. He probably started the investigation into my haunted house a long time ago. Now that I think about it, perhaps the death of Dr. Gao's wife was related to this hospital. The whole thing that he had set from when he was still alive to after his death was not only to revive his wife, but perhaps to seek revenge as well. Closing the diary, the question that Dr. Gao asked when they were at the underground morgue appeared in Chen Ji's mind. Good versus evil and sin versus punishment there is a dichotomy to everything in this world. The man held up the head in his palm. Then, what is the opposite of human? Now that he had gotten a better sense of Dr. Gao's past, Chin Gu had a renewed understanding of this statement. Chapter 1098 The Black Phone's Real Purpose? The diary in room 0011 was missing a lot of pages, so it was all Chin Gu could do to fill in the blanks with his own educated guesses as he flipped through the pages. It took him half an hour to finish reading the diary and put it down. What do you think? Did you find anything? Wen Qing noticed how strange Chen Gu was acting, which in itself was a strange event. So far, Chen Gu had not been faced by anything that they had encountered in this world behind the door, while when he was perusing the pages of the diary, the man's expression had changed many a time. I have understood some very crucial things. Everything that we see now is the consequence of an action that was committed a long time ago. Chen Gu placed Dr. Gao's doctor inside his backpack, alongside Zhang Ye's bedtime story. The man's physical condition was worsening, and he found it very difficult to keep his emotions from running wild. From the Ghost Stories Society to Eastern Zhejiang's Liwan City, there had been some kind of connection between the ghost fetus and Dr. Gao. Chen Gu did not quite understand it then but now he finally apprised himself of the reason behind it. Perhaps, from the very beginning, the members of the Ghost Stories Society were made up from the patients that have escaped from the cursed hospital. They knew that they were sick, 
and they were using their own method to cure their own illness. None of the patients at the hospital have their own name, they are referred to by their patient's number. It was the same for the Ghost Stories Society. Every member had their own number that they corresponded to. There are many more similarities, so from the very beginning, some of the clues have been right before my eyes. Chinga sat on the sofa and held his chin in thought. Dr. Gao knew the ghost fetus name as Chingu. So, when I first came to the Ghost Stories Society, he did not make things difficult for me. In fact, he had helped me join the society successfully. That was probably the only chance he had to kill me, even with Zhang Ye's aid, I would not have been able to handle so many society members at the same time. Is it possible that Dr. Gao still knew some other secrets, like the background information of patients 0001 to 0010? Would his interest in me be related to these 10 patients as well? Chen Gu was contemplating the many questions in his mind when the building started to shake like it had been hit by an earthquake. The aftershock of this occurrence was much more intense than the three times before it, and it lasted even longer. Yet another body part of the rag doll has been found in a different building? Things started to change inside the building. The stench in the air became more intense. Everyone's breathing became more difficult, like there was a chain that had started to wrap around everyone's neck. Many strange noises started to come from outside the building. It sounded like some kind of monster ramming continuously into the walls of the building. Harrowing screams filtered into their ears. Even if they covered up their ears, they could still them clearly. It was as if the screams were coming from inside them. After the building stopped shaking, the first thing Chen Good did was take out his own comic. The body parts of the rag doll are the foundation of this world behind the door. Now that the foundation has been shaken, it means that the world itself will be unstable, and thus, the limitation on my employees will become smaller. Throughout the comic, the pages were bleeding. Every page was crawling with blood vessels, and if one looked closer, one could see many ghastly faces that were trying to surface on the pages. Seeing such a grotesque sight, Chinga finally revealed a rare smile. It won't be long now. They are going to arrive soon. His tone had an undercurrent of madness to it. Holding the bloody comic, Chinga mumbled empathically to himself. A grin that only he would understand hung on his face. Both Wen Qing and Xiao Sun moved subconsciously away from the sofa. They thought that Chen Gu at that moment was rather scary. The presence that radiated off him was no weaker than the monsters behind the door. The fourth earthquake was probably the result of the other outsiders. They now know the locations of two of the rag doll's body parts. Looks like I will have to pick up my pace. Standing up, Chingu carried his backpack and dragged Dr. Skullcracker's hammer toward the door. Chingu, why don't you take a few minutes of rest? You can't even stand steadily on your feet. Wen Qing walked over to try to support Chingu, but she was rejected by the latter. It's okay. I am fine. Walking out from room 0011, Chingu came to the last room on the first floor. The number on the door said 0005. Patient 0005? Chinga thought that patient 0011 would be the limitation of the rag doll's memory. He was surprised to find the room for patient 0005 in this building. Based on the description on the multiple diaries that I have found, the patients numbered 1 to 10 are categorically different from the other patients. But since the room for patient 0005 has appeared at this place, will the room of patient 0001 be upstairs? His heart started to race like it was going to jump out from his heart. For reasons unknown to Chen Gu, when his mind focused on patient 0001, the blood in his body would start to boil. Pushing open the door to room 0005, Chen Gu entered the room. Every object inside room 0005 was covered in a layer of blood. The furniture was heavily damaged. There was nothing that was usable or intact inside the room. The person who stayed here must have had a tendency to destroy. Wen Qing carefully stepped around the trash on the ground and walked toward Chen Go. Do not stay too far away from me. 
the three of us should look around the room to see if we can find any important clues. The previous three sick rooms that they had visited had a layer of paint over the walls. Even though there were traces of blood in the rooms, at least someone had attempted to cover them up, but it was completely different for room 0005. No one tried to cover up the travesty that had happened here. The whole room was black and red in color. Chen Gu took a careful look around. He did not find any diary in the room, but he did notice many small characters that were carved out using fingernails on the walls of the bedroom. Most of the letters had been mixed with the blood, and they looked like they came right out of a scary movie. I really do not dare imagine the state of the person's mind when they wrote these things. This is just madness. Xiao Sun hid at the back of the group. His worldview had been shattered again and again that night. Now, nothing could surprise him anymore. While Xiao Sun and Wen Qing were both stunned by the markings on the wall, Chen Gu had already walked forward to inspect it. As he carefully cleaned away the stained blood, he started to read the words that were left behind. I have started to forget many things. A few days ago, I could still remember my name, but now there is only a number that is left in my head. I know my memory is failing me. I am forgetting more and more things, but there is one thing that I will never forget, kill the hospital director. I do not know why such a directive has been stuck in my mind, and I do not have a clue as to why I would want to do something like that. Perhaps the hospital director is the reason I am in this state. But what exactly has he done to me? Why can't I remember anything about it? The new roommate died beside my bed. When I woke up, he was already dead. There are no other people in the room. If we rule out the possibility of suicide, then the only logical explanation is that I have murdered him, but how come I have no memory of that at all? The doctors said I am seriously ill, but how come they do not conduct any treatment on me? All they did was rotate new roommates for me so that every morning I will wake up to a fresh dead body next to my bed. I have gotten used to opening my eyes to a fresh body every morning until the day my wife moved in with me. She was still as beautiful as I could remember. I asked the doctors about my wife's condition. The doctors only told me that she was sick, and they clammed up after that. I could not get them to tell me more about my wife. I tried to communicate with my wife, but she refused to utter even a word. I could see that she is very afraid. She is afraid of the environment that she has been deposited in, and she is afraid of me. But why should be afraid of me? She is the one person that I love the most in the world. Why would I actively harm her? That night I did not sleep. When the sun rose, my wife was still cowering in the corner of the room. She is still alive. I have beaten myself. I slammed repeatedly on the iron door. I wanted the doctor to move my wife to another room. But the only answer I got from the empty corridor was the echo of my own voice. What should I do? No one was there to tell me the answer. I tried various methods to keep myself awake, but it was getting more and more difficult. I forgot when I did eventually fall asleep, but when I opened my eyes, I was already sent to the other side of the door. In the deepest part of hell, the line between life and death is blurred. The hours of my consciousness became less and less. Most of the time, I have no idea what I am doing, or perhaps I am no longer myself. My body was taken over by the monster who had been hiding inside me. All the patients around me and the doctors have seen that monster before, but I am the only one who has not met him. Everyone is afraid of that monster, but I personally am desperate to meet him because I need to ask him whether my wife is still alive or not. When I am conscious, the doctors make me suffer all kinds of curses. The curses were yanked out from strangers' bodies. They died from the curse, so the curses carried their memories and despair. Being a vessel of other people's curses was no different from carrying their past. These things were nothing but pain for me, but it appeared to be some kind of nutrition for the monster inside my body. The life behind the door was spent in a haze of mindlessness and blurriness. Only a few words were left in my brain, kill the hospital director, my wife, and my patient's number. Just as I thought my life would end in this miserable way, 
I met a doctor wearing a patient's outfit. His surname was Gao, and he had a rag doll with a horrible smell following behind him. The smell that the doll gave off was no longer something that could be put into words. We are all trapped inside the 19th floor of hell. There are no friends and family in the world of black and white. Trying to converse with others in this place is something very dangerous because no one knows what will happen next. When I first saw him, honestly I felt some pity for the man because I knew that the next time I woke up, he would turn into a dead body. When I opened my eyes and woke up from my coma, I was surprised that the doctor was standing beside me. He was still alive. This was proof that my wife could still be alive as well. He seemed to be able to see into a person's heart. Before I mentioned anything, he brought up my wife voluntarily. From his lips, I found out what I did to her. My wife is already dead. She was killed by the monster inside my body. I started to hate my body. I wanted to die alongside the monster inside my body, but I was stopped by Dr. Gao. He slowly brought me back to the world of the sane. It was not my fault that my wife is dead. After all, it was the monster who killed her, not me. And the monster was planted inside my body by the hospital director, so if anyone is to blame, it is all the hospital director's fault. I could die if I want to, but that would be after we murdered the hospital director. After talking to Dr. Gao, I finally understood why that directive had always lingered in my mind, kill the hospital director. He is the culprit. This is all his fault. He must die. I started to pretend to cooperate with the hospital's treatment. With Dr. Gao's suggestion, I pretended to faint and started to act like the other version of myself. To have the doctor believe in my amateur acting, Dr. Gao suggested I murder the first doctor that entered my room. I followed his instructions. Technically, that was the first time I have killed someone. That must have sounded quite ironic. For the person whose hands were already filled with blood and could not have sinned deeper even if he tried, the first time I killed a man was to pretend to be a monster. At that time, I still did not understand that once a habit had been given the chance to grow, it would be hard to stop it from progressing in the future. The night doctor's reaction was all within Dr. Gao's prediction. It was the first time I was sent into the deepest part of hell when I was fully conscious. Opening that iron door that was painted black, I saw the monster who carried the whole hospital on its back. It moved inside the endless black fog. It had a face that was not that different from a normal human face. I did not dare look directly at it because my body was shaking non-stop. I did not want to be exposed due to fear. The doctors were talking beside them. They were saying things that I could not understand, something about only by taking on all the sin could one gain the corresponding power. Not everyone in the world was capable of taking so much sin. The hospital had been searching for that unique soul. Me, Dr. Gao, and that rag doll that reeked were all targets that they had chosen, but none of us fit the hospital's requirement. Their real purpose appeared to be building a blood-red city. That was something that they were preparing, so they needed a soul that could support and carry the sins of an entire city. I do not understand why they would want to do something like that, but I did not have much time to think. The black fog invoked the monster inside my body, and it was slowly consuming the part of myself that remained. There were many words carved out on the walls. They were jumbled up together in a maddening entry. Most of them were too old and too stained by blood to make out. Chin Good tried his best to decipher them, and the above was the best result he could achieve. I do not really quite understand what he is talking about. It is better for this kind of madman to be locked up. It is for the betterment of the society. Xiao Sun stared at the bloody words on the wall, and his back broke out in cold sweat. What if they all started as normal humans like you and me? Chinga had no affection to lose for that hospital. If they thought a person had the potential, they would use various methods to force them to go mad and then slowly initiate their treatment on them. With his back on the wall, Chin Gu combined all the content of the diaries that he had read so far, and he noticed something that was quite surprising. Dr. Gao consumed the door of the underground morgue, 
and he voluntarily chose to suffer all the sin that originated from the underground morgue. The morgue itself had no problem, but Dr. Gao made use of the Ghost Stories Society and its members to feed the morgue with sin. A person as clever as him had to know what that represents. It feels like he was actively trying to accept the sin of the entire The Ghost Stories Society. Then we look at the ghost fetus. He has rebuilt Jiu Hong apartments behind Xiong Wan's world and locked up the sins behind each building, using them to counter the black fog, forming a deserted island of humanity. This is, in a way, a precursor to the formation of a red city. Lastly, it is the hospital's way of operation. Through the records in this room, we know that patient 0005 saw the monster that carried the sin of the entire hospital in the world behind the hospital's door. It moved amid the black fog, and he exposed that the real purpose of the hospital was to create a red city. Everyone is working toward the red city in their own way. What is so attractive about the red city that compels them to do so? And to create such a city, must there be someone who steps forward to suffer the sin of the whole city, or it won't work? With this train of thought, Chinga suddenly turned to look at his hands. Based on the missions given by the black phone, I have slowly taken steps toward a goal. Now that I look back, it seems like I have already involuntarily taken on all the sins and the pasts of my ghost employees that I have met along the way. Could that be the black phone's real purpose? Is it trying to build a red city through me as well? 1099 Red and Black World All the question led back to the red city. Chen Gu himself had a deep impression of that city, but he could not understand why it appeared like everyone wanted to build a similar city in their own way. Some old questions had been answered, but that only led to the formation of a new series of questions. Chen Gu took out his phone and snapped some pictures and videos of the wall. Even though he could not tell for sure whether they could still be playable after he left the door, this was not a resource to be wasted. They had already checked all four rooms on the first floor, but the group did not find the body parts of the rag doll there. Brother, you are planning to go upstairs, are you? Have you already forgotten what happened to us in Jiu Hong Apartments Block 1? I guarantee that there are very dangerous monsters hiding up there. Xiao Sun gnashed his teeth and made a scary face to try to stop Chen Gu, but unfortunately Chen Gu was never one who could be easily persuaded. Once he had made a decision about something, he would pursue it until its very end. Just like how he had first taken over the haunted house after his parents' disappearance, even if he had to cough up his own money to maintain the place because the income was not enough to even cover the utility bills, he was not going to give up. The Dr. Skullcracker's hammer in his hand was getting heavier and heavier. Chinga felt like he could barely drag it along with him anymore. There must be something possessing me, or else this would not have happened. Green veins popped on his neck. Chinga swung a heavy fist at the air before him. He hated this kind feeling of weakened feeling a lot. Chinga, I think you should take a longer rest. I am more worried about Xiong Wan's safety than you are, but if you continue to force yourself like this, I am afraid that before we can find Xiong Wan, you will be the one to collapse first. Wen Qing had noticed how strangely Chen Gu was acting. It did not appear that he was exhausted from fatigue, but he was falling under a serious illness. His teammates were all trying to persuade Chen Gu, but the latter only shook his head. I have a very bad feeling about all this. The peace will soon be shattered. If we are unable to find enough trump cards before the tragedy arrives, we will not even be given the chance to sit at the card table. Do you understand what I am trying to say? I honestly cannot say that I do. What I can understand is that you look incredibly tired, like a child who has just attempted a marathon for the first time. Your body has reached its limits, but you still want to force yourself to finish the whole journey. Wen Qing still wanted to add something, but she was interrupted by Chen Gu with a quick wave of his hand. The failure to finish a marathon can only be considered a regret, but if we stop here, then there is a high chance we won't even have the chance to move forward anymore. Chen Gu walked out of room 0005 and entered the staircase. At this point, Chen Gu could not tell whether it was his mind playing tricks on him or if he really did catch a sniff of disinfectant in the air. 
This smell intermingled with the stench that had been following them to form a very strange and pungent smell. It made people want to cover their mouth and nose involuntarily. The black iron door inside the worlds of the other children's door also give off this smell of disinfectant. Does this mean that I am getting closer to the ghost fetus' deepest secret? Holding the banister as support, Chinga reached the second floor. This whole corridor was sealed up. All the windows were blocked out by cement, but interestingly enough, someone had drawn out a new picture of the windows using blood on top of the original windows that had been cemented. Blood represents pain and tragedy, but the window represent the outside world and hope, so what does a window painted by blood mean? The second floor corridor was extremely suffocating. It was like an enclosed space. There was not even a draft that could be felt. Walking down the corridor, Chingu studied the doors that led down the walls, and he stopped moving. The doors of the rooms on the second floor were different from the doors of the rooms on the first floor. They were no longer sickroom doors with small windows on them but many pure black iron doors. These doors were more like prison doors that were used to imprison criminals. Most doors had blood and other unknown stains lingering on them, and they had a large lock on them. They can't be opened? Chengu used the ring of keys that he found at Jinhua Apartments to give them a try. None of the keys matched. Black iron door and the smell of disinfectant in the air. These few doors should be hiding the ghost fetus last secret behind them. Resisting the tearing pain from his corneas, Chen Gu used his yin yang vision as he leaned at the gap of the first iron door and looked through it. There was complete darkness in the room, and many broken and shattered toys were littered on the ground. The toys reminded Chen Gu of the toys that he once played with when he was still a child. Chen Gu guessed the hospital probably purchased most of them based on the ghost fetus requirements and demands. All of the toys have been ruined. Not one remains intact. Looks like the ghost fetus has already understood that even if he was playing with the toys from way back when, he could no longer return to that time of innocence anymore. He was no longer anyone's shadow. He was just a child who was being pushed to the edge of his sanity. Since the door was locked, this was the only way Chen Gu could study the room. Just as he pulled back his gaze and was ready to walk toward the second door, the whole building started to shake again. The shock this time was much stronger than any of the quakes that preceded it. Kneel down. Get close to the wall. Chen Gu gripped the hammer tightly. His knees gave away underneath him. He crumbled to the ground, and his face was startlingly pale. The screaming and wailing from outside the building became more intense. The monsters that were hiding inside the black fog appeared to be attacking the buildings inside the residential area madly. More cracks appeared on the walls. Some of the black fog had already started to leak into the interior of the buildings. Ah. Wen Qing, who was not that far from Chen Gu, let out a scream. Her body appeared to be dragged along by an invisible force. Someone was trying to pull her downstairs. Chen Gu. The panicked Wen Qing called Chen Gu for help. At that moment, the shaking still had not stopped. Chen Gu had no better idea, he could only watch as Wen Qing was being dragged down the stairs. Xiao Sun, we need to go after her. Crawling on his hands and knees, Chen Gu had never been so flustered in his life. Xiao Sun and Chen Gu followed Wen Qing to the first floor, and as they turned the corner, they arrived just in time to see Wen Qing being dragged by that invisible power into room 0097. We will get into that room as well. Just as Chen Gu and Xiao Sun crossed the threshold into room 0097, a loud thud came from the floor above them. It sounded like one of the iron doors had been shoved open, and the door slammed heavily on the wall. What escaped from the room? The trio hid inside room 0097. Chen Gu stood closest to the door as he paid full attention to the corridor outside the door. A continuously banging sound came from the staircase and the sound was getting closer and closer. A few seconds later, Chen Gu saw a head that was completely mutilated pass by the gap in the door. Connected to the head was a body made from curses. 
The threads that gave off an air of misfortune were intertwined together to keep the shape of the body intact. It was radiating this horrible smell. Was it the rag doll's head that ran out from the building just now? The human head moved so fast that Chen Gu did not have the chance to see the front of its face. He only caught the glimpse of the back of the head that was covered in stitches. After the head rushed out of Jiu Hong Apartments Block 2, the building that Chen Ji's group was in shook even harder like the whole building could collapse at any moment. The rag doll's different body parts are placed inside different building to use as foundation to steady the entire residential area. So, why would the human head in this block too walk out on its own? Is it because the situation has gotten so dire that it must make its move? Chinga realized that he had greatly underestimated the people from the cursed hospital. They had a very good understanding of the ghost fetus. This time, their entry behind the door should have been preceded by thorough preparation. They had brought a lot of pressure for the ghost fetus. Looks like most of the ghost fetus' attention would be turned on to the people from the cursed hospital. This is good news for me. With his back against the wall, Chin Go slowly slid to the ground. He was currently incredibly tired. The tiredness appeared to come straight from his soul, no matter how long he tried to rest and the fatigue refused to go away. But I still cannot let my guard down. I am not in such good condition. After all, this is the world behind the ghost fetus door. Perhaps it wants to deal with both the people from the cursed hospital and me at the same time, killing two birds with one stone. The ground was shaking as if the whole building was starting to teeter on its edge. Many spidery cracks appeared on the wall as more and more black fog leaked into the building. This is not good. Since the head has left, the building is not safe from the black fog. This place is no longer safe for us to stay or explore. Chingu struggled to stand up, but he was really too tired. His muscles refused to cooperate. Lethargy and tiredness overwhelmed his mind, he felt like fainting. His body felt like it was trying to take back all the taxing efforts that Chen Gu had forced upon it in the past at once. The white paint on the wall started to peel and exposed the walls behind them that were completely covered in blood. Room 0097 was like a peeled fruit, but underneath the pretty skin was not the delicious flesh of fruit but a mess of guts and blood. Move the table and closet over here. We will hide at the corner of the wall. The earthquake safety knowledge that Chen Gu had learned in kindergarten came into use then. The trio squeezed themselves in the corner of the room that should be the most structurally stable. Later, more black fog might seep into the building, and that means the monsters inside the black fog will follow it as well. We have to be more careful of our surroundings. Xiao Sun opened his lips to ask weakly, can we only stay here passively and wait for this to pass? Why? Do you have an idea that can help us to fight back? No, I just think that it might be safer for us to return to Jin Hua Apartments Block A. That building appears to be relatively safer than this place. Don't worry, when the time is right, we will definitely return to that place. After all, my cat is still there. Chen Gu had never felt so drained in his life. Now, even talking was a taxing exercise. The quake not only did not stop, it only started to get more intense. Both Xiao Sun and Wen Qing worried that this old building would not be able to survive, and it would tumble upon itself. Chen Gu was not worried about that. The main buildings were made up from the ghost fetus memory. Unless something serious happened to the ghost fetus, these few buildings would not crumble so easily. Do not panic for now. I have a few questions that I need to clarify with the both of you at this moment. Chen Gu turned to Wen Qing. You were the first to run earlier. I saw that you appeared to be pulled by someone. It felt like Xiang Wan. Before Chen Gu finished, Wen Qing already provided him with an answer. She hugged her arms in front of her chest. When he was very young, I was leading him cross the road. Halfway through, he started to pull me back with as much force as he could muster. I stopped moving, and before I could ask him why he was doing that, a car that appeared to have gone out of control flew past the spot where I was standing earlier. 
Later, I heard from the news that the driver was drunk out of his mind when he was behind the wheel. Slowly lifting her hands, Wen Qing crossed her fingers together. The feeling reminded me of that when I was pulled along by the invisible hands earlier. He would only reach out to grab me voluntarily when the situation was at its most dangerous. The child rarely allows other adults to touch him, much less taking the initiative to reach out and grab another person's hand. In other words, this proves that Xiang Yuan has always been by our side, but we are unable to see him. But is this Xiang Yuan the same Xiang Yuan that we are looking for? Chen Ji's one sentence had completely befuddled Wen Qi. Ying and Xiao Sunday. They had no idea what Chen Gu was talking about or worried for. His physique was greatly decreasing, like someone was continuously feasting on his energy. He suspected that someone was Xiang Yuan. The thing was invisible, but he was definitely there. I am one of the nine children, but I still do not understand what I represent. Perhaps the ghost fetus wishes to take over my body. After all, it has shown many times that it has wanted to become me. Leaning against the wall, Chen Ji's body vibrated alongside the whole building. He closed his eyes, and an extremely scary thought crossed his mind. Could the ghost fetus have predicted that the people from the cursed hospital and myself would enter his door at this time? He probably predicted that we would have found the other children before entering this last door and took the power away from the children. The powers of those children were incredibly attractive to the people behind the door. After all, they represent part of the power of a demon god. Most of the patients would attempt to take the power for themselves when they were faced with the children with that power just like the monsters from the cursed hospital and Jiaming. If we'd taken all the powers for ourselves and then entered this last door at the same time, doesn't that also mean that we have helped the ghost fetus gather all his power and then bring them back to him inside his door? After killing all of us, the ghost fetus will be able to complete a perfect rebirth. Chen Gu was frightened by his own thought, but moments later, he calmed down again. The people from the cursed hospital might have killed the children to take the power for themselves, but I did not do that. I returned the children's powers back to them so that they can return to a normal life. Wiping away the cold sweat that slid down his forehead, Chin Gu did not expect his accidental acts of kindness to possibly become his saving grace behind this door. I was not greedy, so the ghost fetus was destined to be deprived of a perfect rebirth. It will be missing many important powers. There is still a chance. More cracks appeared on the wall, and the black fog in the corridor thickened. Bang! The fog gushed down the corridor, and it carried some strange noises. Chen Ge, do you hear children crying? No. When Chen Ge turned around, he saw Wen Qing standing beside him. Her hands were lifted up in the air, like someone was pulling her along. What is going on with your hands? He is here. He is just standing in front of you. Just as Wen Qing finished, her body leaned forward. The door of room 0097 was pulled open, and Wen Qing ran out. Has the woman lost her mind? Xiao Sun was still kneeling on the ground. He was confused by this turn of events. He had no idea what Wen Qing was up to. Follow her. Chen Gu gritted his teeth as he forced himself to stand up. He grabbed Xiao Sun by his shoulders. This place is probably not safe anymore. The black fog rushed into the corridor. Rows of human heads lined up together in the fog. They crawled along the wall like some kind of centipede. What kind of monsters are those? Holding each other as support, Chen Gu and Xiao Sun rushed out from the black fog and headed upstairs. The monsters were unable to leave the protection of the black fog, but they seemed to have discovered Chin Gu and Xiao Sunday. They kept wiggling their disgusting and ugly bodies in the fog. When they reached the fourth floor, Chin Ji's condition could not have been worse. It was Xiao Sun who had been carrying him up the stairs and brought him to the sixth floor where Wen Qing had gone. From the third floor onward, all the doors were the black iron door. Most of them were locked. Only the end room on the sixth floor was open. The ragdoll's head probably ran out from his room. 
Chen Ge did not give it much thought, but after he entered the room, he was stunned because the interior decoration of the room was similar to Chen Ji's bedroom that was in the attic of the haunted house from ten years ago. The head is where the memory is stored. The ghost fetus has been living in my old room? Does it not know that this is just a part of the illusion that it has created for itself? Every black iron door should be hiding the ghost fetus memory, and this last door was no exception. Chen Ge just did not expect the ghost fetus to still have such fresh memory of his own home. Lying on the familiar bed, Chen Ji's memory was fuzzy. When he was young, both his and his parents' bedrooms were situated on the top floor of the haunted house. After he moved out for school and work and when he returned to take over the business, his parents had already disappeared, and the attic of the haunted house had been transformed into a storage room. Actually, most of Chen Ji's childhood memories were related to the attic as well. More than that, it was in the attic that he had found the black phone and the first doll that he made himself. I have already forgotten this feeling, but the ghost fetus still remembers it. This is quite surprising. With this thought in mind, Chen Ge suddenly sat up. He struggled to open the other door in the room. This was the bathroom that was attached to his bedroom. With his hands on the sink, Chen Ge lifted his head to look at the mirror above the sink. Everything is similar to how I remembered it. Even this mirror and you inside the mirror have not changed. Chen Ji's hands were popping with veins. His pupils narrowed as he stared straight at the mirror before him. The surface of the mirror that was stained dirty reflected the faces of two children that looked identical to each other. But one of them had a soft countenance and a light that refused to be extinguished in his eyes, while the other had hollowed sockets, and the eyes appeared to be a vessels for all the sins that existed in the world. Chapter 1100 The first employee to wake up his mind appeared to have been struck by lightning. The layer of ice that had sealed up his memory started to crack, and flashes of images that Chen Ge thought he had forgotten floated up in his mind. Ghost Fetus Two similar faces stared at the mirror at the same time. They managed to see the other version of themselves inside each other's eyes. Chen Ji's body shook harder and harder, his whole body was going numb. He was losing control from head to toe. It was as if someone had trampled so viciously on his heart several times that simple breathing became an arduous task for him. On the blurry mirror, the child with the hollowed eyes strangled the other child by his neck. His hands that closed around the neck slowly gathered strength. The eyes that were filled with sin and despair appeared to have some other emotions flowing through them as well. They appeared like sadness and at the same time like pain. Chen Gu Both Xiao Sun and Wen Qing finally noticed the strange way Chen Gu was acting. They both rushed into the bathroom to try to support Chen Gu, but the latter's condition did not appear to get any better. Every nerve on his body was pulled taut, and every muscle in his body was shaking. The blood was roiling madly in his capillaries as many different scary and cruel images flashes across his mind. He had no memory of these images that just appeared. In other words, they left no impression on him. He would forget about them after they had left his mind. He could not recall the exact circumstances behind any of these images, but he could see clearly that there were two children inside each picture. These were the ghost fetus memories, or rather, Chen Ge and the ghost fetus shared memories. A mirror. As he gritted his teeth, Chen Ji's mind was a huge blank. He could not control his body at all. It was as if he had lost control of his body at that very moment. The body no longer belonged to him. The hands that gripped the edge of the sink slowly let go. Chen Ji's body tipped dangerously backward. He looked at the faces of the two children in the mirror and the very last image surfaced in his mind. In the dark city, three red doors were pushed open at the same time. Pa! The mirror shattered into smithereens, and the pieces cut Chen Ji's cheeks. The mirror flew everywhere as Chen Ji's body landed heavily to the ground. He slowly returned to normal. The mirror on the wall had been shattered, and the two children's faces were no longer visible on the surface of the blurry mirror anymore. 
Chen Gu. Putting down the wooden chair she was holding, after Wen Qing shattered the mirror, she squatted down beside Chen Gu. Are you feeling better? All I can say is that I am still alive. Chen Gu was lying on the ground. Weakened was no longer the correct word to describe his condition. He could now sense quite clearly that someone was trying to take over his body. I am also one of the nine chosen children by the ghost fetus. The thing that the ghost fetus wants from me should be my physical body. When he was helping the other children, he did not feel a sensation as strong as this. But now that it was his turn, he finally understood how painful and helpless this feeling of having something so crucial to your existence forcibly taken away from you was. The building was still quivering, and strange noises kept echoing around the residential area. The black fog had rolled up to the top floor. The situation had reached the most dangerous hour. Let me help you up. Xiao Sun carried Chen Gu to the bed. Wen Qing went over to help Chen Gu pick up the backpack that he had dropped on the ground, but just as she was about to touch the backpack, her body was pulled back any and invisible and dragged away from the backpack. Both Xiao Sun and Chen Gu saw this rather clearly. What's inside your bag? Xiao Sun tried to grab the backpack. He was just trying to help Chen Gu by returning the backpack to him, but as his hand touched the backpack, trails of fresh blood climbed onto his arms like they were ready to consume his body and soul. Stop what you're doing. Do not act rashly. Chen Gu used the last ounce of energy he had in his body to scream. Give the bag to me. Xiao Sun was startled and scared. Of course, he let go of the backpack and did not dare get near it anymore. He quickly moved the backpack and Dr. Skullcracker's hammer to Chen Ji's side. Brother, I think your bag is bleeding. Xiao Sun did not dare ask too many questions. He stood quietly and obediently beside the bed. His hands gripped the headboard to prevent himself from falling. There were forces fighting inside the residential area. Something appeared to slam into the building repeatedly. The shaking was so hard that if the people inside the building did not hold on to something, they would fall easily. How come I feel like this place is going to collapse at any moment, and why haven't either of you said anything about it? Xiao Sun looked at Wen Qing, whose face was pale like a sheet of paper, and Chen Gu, who was collapsed like a dead man on the bed. Who would have thought that he would one day become the leader of this group? Looks like I will have to do something, or we will all die. Chen Gu ignored Xiao Sunday. He used all the energy that he had to place his hand on the backpack. When the tip of his finger touched the backpack, his heart also slowly calmed down. A shade of red curled around his arm. Chen Gu could feel the energy of his body recovering, but at the same time, his body temperature continued to drop. One of the red specters is helping me? The ghost fetus wanted to take over Chen Ji's body. Chen Gu alone would not be able to stop that. He was too weak to fight against the ghost fetus, but the equation would not be the same if his employees were added into the mix. Even though the red specters were still limited by the rules behind the door so that they could not unleash their full potential, the ghost fetus was not at its peak. Its body was split and hidden in many different places. While he needed to maintain the stability behind the door, he had to deal with the intrusion of the other outsiders. He slowly regained control of his body and his senses. Chinga realized that as more cracks appeared on the building, the limitation of the world behind the door on his employees became weaker and weaker. There were two sides to a coin. After losing the ragdoll's head, the black fog started to seep into Jiu Hong Apartments Block 2. But at the same time, without the suppression from the ragdoll's head, the restriction on Chin Ji's employees also was weakening by the minute. His hand reached into the backpack. Chin Gu pressed on the play button on the recorder. The tape turned, but the sound of the static did not come. He then reached for the blood-soaked comic. He flipped through the pages. When he reached the page where Xiaobu was, he got the response that he wanted. Blood vessels reached out to curl around his hand. The page pictured the sight of a dancing and flitting blood spirit. The picture that was supposed to be so scary was surprisingly heartwarming. 
It is Xiaobu who is helping me. Xiaobu was incredibly strong but she still managed to help Chin Gu without fully breaking through the limitation placed on her by the rules of the world behind the door. This had surprised Chin Gu somewhat. My parents once made a deal with Xiaobu to have her become my shadow. Is that because they had noticed some kind of special power in Xiaobu? Based on Chin Ji's parents' plan, it should be Xiaobu accompanying Chin Gu at this moment, but things very often did not go according to plan. No one would have expected the appearance of Zhang Ya. Putting away the comic, Chin Gu turned to inspect the other objects inside the backpack. Zhang Ya's bedtime story was still the same. The ballpoint pen and the other small objects had not changed either. Wait, it appears like one thing is missing. There was no change to Chin Ji's expression as his hand continued to reach deeper into the backpack. At the innermost part of the backpack, Chin Ji's hand found the pair of red high heels. The heels were sticky and wet like they had just been taken out from a pool of blood water. The red high heels appeared to be have almost broken through the limitation placed on her by the rules behind the door already. Resisting the excitement in his heart, Chin Gu did not utter a word. He maintained the same posture and did not even take an extra glance into the backpack. The red high heels were hidden underneath all the other objects. She was working her way to break down the barrier around her silently like she was trying to do while avoiding the intrusive gaze of a certain someone. The ghost fetus main persona was hidden behind Xiang Wan's door. In other words, this world behind the door was shared between Xiang Wan and the ghost fetus. With the influence of a demon god, the restriction placed on the other red specters was incredibly high but one person was the sole exception. The red high heels had consumed all the curses that had been left behind in the ghost fetus previous doors. In terms of manipulation and understanding of curses, the red high heels was the closest existence to the ghost fetus, and she could be considered the red specter that knew how the ghost fetus operated best. Perhaps she had discovered the presence of the ghost fetus, so she did not want to expose herself. The red high heels hid herself at the deepest part of the backpack. Chin Gu understood her intention immediately. Internally, he was rather shocked, but his expression did not betray that. This human and ghost duo did not need to communicate in words to complete a perfect exchange of mind. Taking a slow breath, Chin Gu leaned against the wall, and he started to consider the situation that he was in. After seeing the child earlier, many memories that did not belong to Chin Gu crowded his mind. Most of the images had flashed in the blink of an eye. He could not capture a close look, much less take a more detailed look at them. However, the very last image did leave behind a very deep impression on Chin Gu. Why would these three blood doors keep appearing in my memory? Chen Gu made some calculations in his mind. There was a door at Jiang Yuan Apartments. That was probably the first door to appear in the whole of Jiaojiang. The door was probably pushed open by Chin Gu when he was very young, so that was the first door. The second door was the black iron door that was pushed open by the ghost fetus at the cursed hospital. It radiated the heavy cocktail of disinfectant, so it should be inside the cursed hospital. The ghost fetus was once Chin Ji's shadow, so the door that it opened could technically be counted as one that was opened by Chin Gu as well. The third door was directly related to Chin Gu, and that was the door inside the bathroom at his haunted house. These three doors had always been following Chin Gu. The door that appeared the most normal could very well be the scariest one. After all, it had once given Dr. Gao the fright of his life. The quivering of the building became more obvious, but Chen Gu and Wen Qing did not appear to notice it at all. They were both caught up in their own thoughts. Only Xiao Sun was anxious, like an ant on top of a boiling pan. This tenant behind the door was ironically acting most like a normal person. Should we consider leaving this place? When there is an earthquake, we should be hiding outside in an open space. I have not heard of advice that tells us to move higher up the building before. Seeing no one had given him any response, Xiao Sun sidled up to Wen Qing and asked, Are you sure it's wise for us to keep on hiding here? Wen Qing did not answer him immediately. 
she instead glanced at Chen Gu on the bed. We will wait for him to recover slightly first. It is too dangerous to leave this place now. Xiao Sun still had something else to add, but at that moment, the iron door from the living room suddenly gave off a strange sound. The sound was very hard to describe. It sounded like a very large centipede had just crawled over it. The consistent footfalls landed on the metallic door, and the sound was enough to make one's head go numb. Stay far away from the door. Chen Gu now had trouble even breathing. Before his employees awakened, the best solution was to stay inside the room. The sound that came from the front door became clearer and more intense. Both Xiao Sun and Wen Qing moved away from it. No one dared speak inside the room. It became incredibly quiet. Everyone held their breath. The rustling sound kept moving around the iron door until it stopped right outside the iron door like it had finally decided on something. It appears to have discovered us. Xiao Sun held his hand over his mouth. His eyes were overflowing with fear. The unknown was always the scariest. A thin layer of black fog leaked from the gaps into the room. It was extremely chaotic outside the building, but the building corridor was curiously quiet. Has it left? Xiao Sun held the wall and was about to head toward the living room when the doorknob started to violent shake. Bang! 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 Something kept hammering itself against the black iron door. A large amount of black fog was leaking into the room. The windows on the top floor are all sealed up behind a wall of cement. This whole floor is fully enclosed. The only exit is the living room door. Chin Ji's mind was spinning wildly. The conclusion was that they were currently stuck inside this room. Chen Gu. What should we do now? Don't just ask me for answers. I am already in this state. What else do you expect me to do? Chen Gu said with a bitter smile on his face, but his eyes were scarily calm. He held the backpack, and his hands were holding the red high heels inside the back. The red high heels inside the bag was covered in blood, and they dyed Chen Ji's hand red, but the man did not seem to mind it at all. In fact, upon closer inspection, one would realize that the black pattern on the red high heels was crawling onto Chen Ji's body. The black treads were not harming him, they were looking for something inside his body. The backpack blocked all of this from view. No one inside the room realized what Chen Gu was doing. The doorknob kept wiggling as the thing slammed continuously into the door. The rustling sound became more and more obvious. Half a minute later, the black iron door was knocked out of shape. The gap between the door and the frame became larger as a result. Black fog spread inside the room. Chen Gu, Wen Qing, and Xiao Sun helplessly watched as the iron door was pried open slowly. The gaping hole revealed faces that were covered in scars. They were connected together like a large centipede. They were all squeezed into the gap as they tried their best to enter the room. The door and the windows are all blocked. This is the end. This is the end. Xiao Sun threw himself into motion at the most crucial moment. He moved everything that he could grab to block the door. Why don't the two of you think of something to do? He moved all the furniture within reach to block the door. Xiao Sun tried his best, but at the end of the day, he did not have the experience and mental stability that Chen Gu possessed. When he encountered the human heads at close distance, his legs started to shake, and his strength left his body. The rustling noise came again. This time, Xiao Sun clearly saw that the sound originated from the human heads. Their orifices had black threads that dangled out of them. It was these threads that bound them together, and similarly, they used these threads to crawl on the ceiling and the wall. If the defense cannot be held, I need both you and Wen Qing to go hide in the bedroom. When the monster starts to attack me, the two you will run away from the living room door. Chen Gu wanted to use himself as bait. At the same time, he wanted to use this opportunity to ascertain something. No. Wen Qing and Xiao Sun said at the same time. 
neither was willing to abandon Chen Ge and run away on their own. Just follow my instructions, or we are all going to die. Just as Chen Ge said that, the closet that blocked the door was toppled over, and the black iron door was cracked open. Get out of the way. When Qing and Xiao Sun retreated to the side. The monster that was made from multiple human heads crawled into the room and wiggled on the ceiling. Go. Now. Black fog rolled into the living room. The way out was revealed to them. Neither Wen Qing nor Xiao Sun moved. But the next moment, Wen Qing was dragged along. The invisible force practically pulled Wen Qing out into the corridor. Xiao Sun, look after her. I cannot run anymore. Do not let me die for no reason. Chen Gu shouted at the top of his lungs. He was trying to pull the monster's attention to himself. Xiao Sun very desperately wanted to stay to help Chen Gu, but when he saw the monster in person, his legs became wet noodles. Just the sight of the thing caused him to lose his breath. He teetered backward, and his instinct pushed him away from the monster. Go. What are you waiting for? After Xiao Sun and Wen Qing left, Chen Gu sighed in relief. He sat up on the edge of the bed as he lifted his head to look up at the strange monster. But his lips were saying things that were completely unrelated to the monster. After Wen Qing left, the power that the red high heels fear has disappeared. The invisible child that no one can see, is it the ghost fetus or Xiang Wan? Or have they combined into one? Can they not be separated from one another before the ghost fetus finds a new body? Can support us, completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for come in and love the sharing story.